yeah. this week. What it means is that uh, what I'm really treat. So we now shift the so is the peculiarity of the election the relationship we're to a last Saturday. What is happening? So and then uh, naturally we are not supposed to be here this today. month. But in a this of month end on Friday. God bless us. March Hallelujah. end on Friday. We call of the so, election. Uh, this next week now, according to them, Friday they will have election. March let's hope so. on Friday. So so that is when once there is election next week. What it means is that what I'm currently treat. So we we'll now shift the so is the peculiarity of the election the the relationship we shop to the last Saturday. What is happening? Month. So and then when I'm telling you the timetable of this month. But in no this is month to end on Friday. God bless us. March Hallelujah. end on Friday. We call the so, election. Uh, this next week now, according to them, Friday they will have election. March let's hope so. End on Friday. So so that is when once there is election. Of so and then I'm telling you the timetable of this, this month. But in a this month, month to end on Friday. Let's us. March and on Friday. Because yeah. the so, so, election this next week now, according to them, on Friday they will have election. March let's hope so. on Friday. So so that is when once there is election. So and then I'm telling you the timetable of this month. But in a this month to end on Friday. Let's us. March Hallelujah. and on Friday. We call of the election. This next week now, according to them, Friday. They will have election. March, let's hope so. On Friday. So, so that is when once there is election. So and then I'm telling you the timetable of this month. But in a month to end on Friday. Let's us. March Hallelujah. and on Friday. We call of the election. This next week now, according to them, Friday. They will have election. March, let's hope so. On Friday. So, so that is when once there is election. So and then I'm telling you the timetable of this month. But in a month to end on Friday. Let's us. The people God send it to know the message, so it's not as if we are just waking up and say, mm, Let's do broken today, mm, let's do whatever, mm, let's do something tomorrow. It's because God continues to give us messages, and then the message He gives us is not as if mm, they are doing in, um, the Lord Shepherd in the CFC, let's do Shepherd Blood. Then they are doing no, 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 because we don't have the same audience. Praise God! So it's the it's the work of, of the pastor to know what he's supposed to feed. Take, for instance, how many of you have taken care of chickens before? We are taking care of chickens, all these broilers they eat. Because the broiler they are giving somebody in the other house, the food they are giving somebody in the other house, maybe, maybe your own broilers to shit. 
So you won't give them the same thing. The same broiler. In fact, they may be sold the same price. So the peculiarity of insight is not that what is trending, hey, what is happening, is based on, and that is why even our reach that we share, is not just, hey, let's share one reach today. Hey, it's like, I was just, it's just like there's a stir in my spirit that this, this is the message that should, should go around this week. So the stir in a number of people say, ah, this message, ah, this is powerful, this is whatever, this is whatever. So the ability to know what to feed people at the time is what makes you a shepherd. Praise God, do make you a pastor. So this broken that God gave to us as a message, I'm too certain it's in time and on time. Trying to bless us. I'm the meeting show. I've seen it. Glory to God. In passing, God actually gave me a message for, for my people. So, ah, I think I was discussing with my wife during our Wednesday prayer. God already gave us a word for insight. And then God also gave a word for Nigeria. So, I do not post it on Facebook. You go, the message is not for Facebook family. They have a shepherd over them. Praise God. Facebook people, everybody have a church they attend. But don't forget, I said I saw a vision that God showed me that I saw young people with cars. You remember that? And then I was telling my wife, I said one of the prophets I fear their prophetic utterance is Isaiah and Micah. Those guys literally wrote the life of Jesus. Because when I say Micah, now all of you are cartooning Micah. You will not be, who is that one? Did you know that ah, glory to God. If you have the word of God, you have God. Did you know that in, Bel- in, in, in Matthew 2, let's go through Matthew 2, because I was about giving us this Matthew 14 for broken. That's when God reminded me of that prophecy. In Matthew 2, from verse 1, the Bible says, certain mag- magis, it says, after Jesus was born, in where? In Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Bethlehem. Yes, next verse, let's be fast. We are going to verse 5. He asks, where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star in the east and have come to worship him. Yes, next verse. He said, when Herod, take note, don't be in this. Let's just digest this together. He said, when Herod had this, he was disturbed and all Jerusalem with him. Next verse, you see, this next verse is my concern. He now said, and when he had called together all the people's chief, he didn't call spiritual people. Wait. <laughs> oh, I fear the prophet of old. Those guys, fear them too. You know what <laughs> I pray for someone. Every angry prophecy over you begin to channel you to them. Yeah. Listen. Micah. Oh, God. Oh, glory to God. If you read Luke accounts, do you know why Jesus went to Bethlehem? Do you know, hope you know Jesus' parents don't stay in Bethlehem? Wait. Hope you know they don't stay in Bethlehem. But Micah, by prophecy, said that Jesus will be born in Bethlehem. All of a sudden, there was a staring in the Roman heart that let's do censor. Everybody go back to your home. Jesus was not even born in an hospital. He was born in a hymn. That is how hot that prophecy is. Ah, I make bold to say. See, I make bold to say to you. Every hanging prophecy over your life, God will begin to cause a staring. And take notes. Please don't join the people that will be saying anything, anyhow, about this election or whatever. Don't forget, what, from what our prayer, Isaiah 45, that we are praying, we say that the counsel of God will stand. And his purposes will prevail. So you should not be a party. See, do you just relax? How many of you saw my? I wrote it on my side. I say you just vote and go and relax. Let God begin to unfold the every other thing that is necessary. Because we have prayed, and the counsel of God will prevail. And after the election, God spoke to me while I was studying my Bible. He said, "There is uh, okay. I think on Wednesday I still put under status. I say blessing. Nigeria is blessed." 
that they are arising of Cyrus and Bethlehem. He's probably, he's, you won't, wait, wait, if you are confused, you won't understand my status. I know what I was saying, actually. There is a rising of Cyrus. Now, let me tell you for that. This is that of Micah. Micah just woke, Micah just said that they will burn Jesus in Bethlehem. All of a sudden, this guy was in Galilee. <laughs> Joseph was in Galilee. All of a sudden, a government just come on board and say, I want to start counting everybody. Everybody go back to your house. It was the censor. If you read Luke, if Pastor of you should be able to look for that. It was the censor that sent them back to Bethlehem. It was not as if they were staying in Bethlehem. Yet, Micah prophecy says that there is going to be a king, a shepherd of God's people that will be born in Bethlehem. So when the magic came and said that they were looking for, can you see this? A, that a censor should be taken of the entire Roman world. Yes, next verse. Let's go. Let's go, Pastor Me. This was the first censor, blah, blah, blah. Just let's go to where they travel. And everyone went to, can you see that? And everyone went to his own town to register. Ah, they are only far. There are stirrings in the spirit. Listen to me. The Bible says in the book of, listen. The Bible says in the book of Proverbs, Proverbs 23, verse 1. The Bible says, he said the heart of kings is with the Lord. He said he directs it like a water course wherever it pleases. Listen, there are kings now on board that God will begin to direct their heart to catch up with the prophecy that he has given for you. Wait. It takes just one policy to make you a millionaire. One. One. Just one thing. Just somebody sitting on a throne can just say something and your life change. We're in that era. Because I don't know. Me, I'm not even interested in who becomes. We have played my part. I vote. My concern is that it doesn't matter which king is on the throne. There is a staring. There is a staring to catch up with prophecy. God has said it. Started, it king, God directed the heart of kings. Let me now help you. Hope you know also that the time that Isaiah gave the prophecy in, in Genesis in Isaiah 45, Cyrus, there was no Cyrus. When Isaiah mentioned the name Cyrus, there was, no, there was nobody with that name. Isaiah 41. He said, this is what the Lord says to his anointed, to Cyrus. So it was not as if Cyrus was a king dead. Because the Isaiah has not started. When Isaiah was prophet, there was no Isaiah. Isaiah ended his, his, his priesthood under Ezekiah. Uh -uh, the evil are looking at me now. It was the son of Joseph, of Josiah, Joachim, that led the men to the Isaiah. These people you who are looking at me by you. I don't like you too. But don't worry. Because, you know, what did I tell you people that did? I said there is study, right? And there is reading. This one, I actually have been studying the book of Matthew recently. And I'm happy to announce to you that I'm now in chapter 2. <laughs> <laughs> Yet, in the past seven days, I finished the New Testament in listening. But in study, I just enter Matthew 2. <laughs> but let me show you Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 1, verse 1. And then you are going to carry me to Matthew chapter 1. So that we we'll study this thing together. So that the reason why I'm telling you this is because after the prophetic word was released, I discovered that I need to tell you people some things. So that you will not join people to say anything anyhow on, online. I owe you to you because God gave the word for insight. I say God gave the word for insight. In this same... Okay. Now look at this. He said, of Isaiah, son, 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 of whatever, during the reign of who? That is a king, right? Number one. And who? 
and and Ezekiah was the last king. Now let's go to to um, verse eleven, one eleven. Let's see. Take note of these kings. Oh, let's see before the Ezai. Let's see before the Ezai. Oh, before the Ezai. Take note of these kings. Mm-mm. I think Matthew one eleven. He will learn see by Pastor Sami. Give me. Oh, perfect. You see, and Josiah, the father of Jokaniah and his brothers, the time of the... Now, go to verse 10. Go to verse 10. So, you see, perfect. Ezekiah, the father of Manasseh, a generation. Manasseh, the father of Ammon. Ammon, the father of Josiah. So, the time... Now, continue to verse 11. Ezra to where? Ezra to Babylon. Now, Daniel, when Daniel, do you hope you know that the Ezra was sponsored by Nebuchadnezzar? Nebuchadnezzar was king. After Nebuchadnezzar became king, Bethesdashazar, his son, also became king. Before Dairos became king, before Cyrus became king, Elijah, Elijah uh, Isaiah was long gone. Yet, by prophecy, Isaiah was mentioning the name of a king. That is not even, he's not even a Christian. He mentioned the name of Cyrus. He says, Cyrus, the Lord's anointed. And true to it, Igaba Vina. If you read Zechariah, the Bible told us that I oh, oh. rejoice. You see, Nigeria is in a prophetic. See, you see, you see, you see, this is the first time I'm saying anything now. If I didn't say you won't hold my leg, I say that I should not go. My wife is here. She will, the way she will slap you. So, I'm not under pressure to say anything. If I'm under pressure, I'll have put it on Facebook. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to prove any point. But me, I know the way God speaks to me. So me, you see, thank, thank God. That's why I didn't even tell anybody on Facebook. That's when you're trying to prove points. Now, you can't come and hold my leg. That, hey, we are this one. But by scripture, that was where I saw that God told me, God specifically said, He said, I'm anointing Cyrus. And that was where he showed me that Cyrus, when his, Isaiah was giving that prophecy, he did not even know, there was, no, some, there was nobody with the name Cyrus. Cyrus, Cyrus, no law, Kaumale in Daniel. Unu law, Kaumale, Mbato Kaumale, Uzi, back in and the Bible says that Daniel was there to the, to the reign, to the first year of Cyrus. When Cyrus became king, in the second year of Cyrus' reign, that was when he gave the order. Now, let me quickly help you with that scripture, Zechariah chapter 1, verse 17, that we always quote, that my city through prosperity, so let me link it now so that you understand, that my city through prosperity shall spread abroad. It was during the reign of Cyrus. Why? Because God already, already anointed Cyrus. Ah, yeah. Oh, Ghana. The Bible says that the riches in the secret place, the verse 2 of Isaiah 45, he said, The riches in dark places shall be your. It was to Cyrus, or so not to God's people. So the riches that was to Cyrus, Cyrus now signed. It was because, oh, it was because the temple will be, will be built again. That time they have not broken down the temple. Oh, you know, it was Nebuchadnezzar that destroyed the temple. The temple was still intact. Yet God already sent a prophecy ahead that a certain Cyrus is co- going to come and God will anoint him and he's going to be so rich, but it will be for the sake of Jacob. Ah. You people are looking at me. It's because this is not my teaching. It's in your time, man. This is not my teaching. That's why I'm trying to be in this. But let's read this Isaiah. Yes. He said, I will give you the treasures. This is Cyrus. So. See, we all read it together now. He said, we are reading to verse 8, I think. He said, I will give you the treasures of darkness. Riches store in secret places. So when God told me that he's anointing Cyrus again, I already knew what he was talking about. That a prosperity wait, a revival is about to be battered. That we will run on the wings of revival of, of, of prosperity. But Cyrus have to first come on board to make sure God's people. Huh? Oh God! 
In Cyrus, <laughs> we have to first come on board to make sure God's people are heavily rich. So the Bible says that what? So that you may know that I am the Lord, the God of Israel. Who summons you by name? Yes, next verse. Then for the sake of Jacob, why is Cyrus coming on board? For the sake of Jacob. So I'm making sure to tell you that the Cyrus that will be anointed over the nations, especially over this nation, will be for the sake of Jacob. Ah. If you know the strategy God is using, you will start rejoicing. The Cyrus that is... See, wait. Hope you know that prophecy can be... Can, impurity can enter into prophecy if you have listened to somebody else. This thing I'm saying, I have not, I don't even, I have not listened to one person say anything about Nigeria prophecy or not. I was in my study. on my own. When God began to unravel that a Cyrus is going to be anointed over the nations and a revival is about to be battered and that the Cyrus will be for the sake of Jacob. So, Whoever come on board is going to be be for the sake of Jacob. Cyrus is not the king of is not the king of Israel. Cyrus was the king of Persia. Yet the reason why God is anointing him and flooding him with prosperity is for Jacob, because after Nebuchadnezzar destroyed the temple. The Bible told us that Cyrus gave a decree. If you are if you're a reader of the Bible, if you have read Ezra, Ezra and Nehemiah very well. Cyrus, in especially Ezra, Cyrus was the one that gave a decree that it's from the treasury of Passion that they are going to sponsor the rebuilding of the kingdom, of the temple. So I want guys, I want to learn it with good, plenty good, to go and rebuild the temple. So, be at rest. A revival is going to be battered. But the Cyrus that will be in charge of this nation will be for the sake of Jacob. And Jacob is the church, for those that don't understand the parable. The administration will favor Jacob. Do you know none of the irony? Even me, I don't know the Cyrus. That's what I'm saying, wherever. The reason I see God told me, I say, son, his name is. But there's a backing of scripture that the heart of kings belong to the Lord. So I just need you to position yourself. Money is coming. I'm telling you. Because sometimes God confuses them. Ah, how many of you are in duty code of the blessed? The main goat from hope. Whenever the policy is changed, is it this code of the bless? Yes, now. The main goat up in um, Genesis 31. That we're talking about Jacob. That is the main goat up that always come. They change the policy, he changes wages ten times, but there's always a main goat up. A Cyrus is coming on board. That will favor the cause of the church. And you'll be a part. Amen. Stay alive. Oh. Stay alive. Tell your neighbor, stay alive. Stay alive. Stay alive. Stay alive. Stay alive. So at the end of this teaching, you will know one of the reasons why you must even stay alive. Because that's one of the aim of this teaching. So do we get that now? So Bethlehem, Mika was the one that told them that Mika already gave a prophecy that Jesus was going to be born in Bethlehem. So when those guys came together and they were looking for where the Christ will be. The Roman Empire already positioned themselves for prophecy to send them back to Bethlehem. They have not even gotten to one thing settled down in Bethlehem. Where did Jesus don't want? So to them, they are doing census. To heaven, prophecies are being fulfilled. I say to them, they are doing census. To heaven, prophecies are being fulfilled. That is how events will begin to unfold in your life. In the name of Jesus. You won't have been marking time and events. Oh, you didn't get that. 
you will just be marking time and events in the name of Jesus. Now, let's go back to our broken. I think wherever is, that is for, all of us have gotten it for insight. So, we should rejoice and vote your candidate, but there is a Cyrus that will be anointed. Yeah. There is a Cyrus that will be anointed. All right. Glory to God. Matthew chapter 14, verse 19. Broken is what we are considering. Today, I just want to lay the foundation so we can fly. Glory to God. Can I just pray in the Holy Ghost? Few? Many? Glory to God. For in Jesus' mighty name, I will pray. All right, can we read this together? And he directed the people to sit down on the... Taking the five loaves and the two fish and looking up to heaven, he gave thanks and did what? And broke the loaves. Then he gave them to the disciples and the disciples gave them to the people. Let me start on this note. I wrote something here. I said God does not serve unbroken vessels to a generation. <laughs> God does not serve unbroken vessels to a generation. The Bible says that Jesus in the church, what? First the what? Apostles? Yes, the yes, the yes, the no, it's not pastors first, so because pastors and teachers are together. Evangelists, yes. And for what? He said to prepare God's people for so that the body of Christ may be. So the Bible is saying that these guys ate and they were satisfied. This was part of the package God was bringing on board. That the vessels is preparing, the broken vessels is preparing. Hmm. The Bible said they ate and they were satisfied. They ate and they were satisfied. Look at what now happened. He said, and the disciples pick up 12 basketfuls of broken pieces. Ane, fikai. Eh. Come to Jesus unbroken, he will break you. They gave Jesus just five loaves of unbroken breads. By the time Jesus finished with the Five loaves of unbroken bread that have satisfied 5,000 men. The Bible says that Jesus made sure there was extra, extra broken pieces and his 12 baskets. Do you, do, you, do you know what 12 baskets are? 12, five loaves, 12 baskets of broken pieces. Come to Jesus unbroken. You won't live the same. If truly it is the Jesus of the Bible you came to. That is why I will not read our hymn. Because I need to read the scripture to read our hymn. Now, let, give me Matthew 25, 25. Ma, no, this is even consistent. Let's, before Matthew 25, 25, let's go to Matthew chapter 15, verse 30, 36. Matthew, Matthew 15, 36. Matthew 15, 36. Perfect. Can we read this together? Then he took the seven loaves and the fish. And when he had given, he broke and gave them. And they in turn. So it's broken vessels that God served to a generation. You are wondering, God, use me, God, use me, God, use me. If you are God, we use yourself. Yeah. If you are God, and then you were another person. Will you have used yourself? Jesus did not reject unbroken breads, but he made sure they did not leave him unbroken. So you can come to God the way you are, but you won't live the way you came. The essence of coming to Jesus is that it's evident to her that you can be satisfying. Aya. The men come to you with problem and they can't be satisfied after they left you because there is a dispensation of power by the brokenness that comes from your spirit. So the Bible says that they gave Jesus unbroken bread, consistent with scripture. 
and Jesus broke those bread. Now, let me tell you what the bread is. So that I will not say, hey, it's bread, oh, it's bread, oh. That is why we are going to read. So, it's consistent. The first one was five bread. Five loaves, right? Are we on the same page? Five loaves of bread, right? The second set of bread was seven loaves of bread. And in these seven loaves, the Bible said there was also, yes, let's read verse 37, sir. There was also um, abundance. In tongue giving to people, yes, sir. Verse 37, Abikos 37, Lord of He said, they all ate and were what? The same result happened for every brokenness. Every broken vessel, they satisfy. He said, they all ate and were satisfied. He said, after all the disciples speak, how many baskets full again, sir? Seven baskets fulls of broken pieces that were left over. Your life become meaningful. Your life become a testament to others. Once you are broken, you begin to compare broken people. Once you are broken, you begin to initiate brokenness in others. They brought seven loaves. They left with seven baskets. A basket can represent a generation. A basket can represent a church. A basket can represent a group. So you come to Jesus as an individual and then he sends the nation back. <laughs> you come to Jesus as a person, he sends a family back. You come to Jesus as a person, he sends a church. But it's not just one church. Seven baskets. Seven baskets. Seven baskets. Of broken pieces, seven. The initial one, 12 baskets of broken pieces. Now, before we, I read our hymn again, I need us to not see this part. This one involved Jesus. Matthew 26, 26, sir. Matthew 26, 26. Matthew 26, 26. Are we getting it? No, are we getting it now? Don't worry. You will be blessed today. Let me, I'm the one telling you. Matthew 26, 26. Oh, I. Faramenake, Fandi Sanehe. Je the Bible says, when they were eating, Jesus took bread and gave thanks and broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is me. Even Jesus could not be served unbroken. Ayafa. Jesus said, I am me, 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 me. Now, maybe this. Even me, I did break myself. Men, I talk. So, that carried me back to my, what I said. God will not serve unbroken vessels to a generation. Jesus was broken and was served to us. You can't be used of God if you are not broken. You can't get anywhere. So, we are going to go through the process of brokenness. Jesus broke himself and gave to his disciples. Let's read this scripture again together. He said, why they were... So that means that they were not eating the bread. Why they were eating? Jesus took what? Why they were eating? Jesus took what? Gave what? And... And... Saying, take and eat. This is, this is my body. Ah. <sighs> There's a part where he now says, do this in remembrance of me. If you take bread, which is your body, and break it, we are remembering Jesus. When you are in this broken state, you are remembering Jesus. Jesus said, honor me this way. Honor me. Honor me. Stay in this state. Stay in this. Just honor me. Remember. Just honor me. So every remembrance of Jesus you do in your state of brokenness, Send a signal to the heavens. 
And what always happens is satisfaction. Satisfactory. It's satisfaction. You cannot satisfy a generation if you are not broken. You can't. You can't fit it. You can't be eaten. You won't be enough. Ah. You won't be enough. If you are not broken, you won't be enough. You'll be making noise. You'll be a noise maker. You will not be a voice. There's a difference between being a voice and just being a noise maker and just making sound. They ask John, they say, who are you? He say, I am a voice. And the reason why he's a voice is because he's broken. My body is your sanctuary. My body is your sanctuary. Purify My body is your sanctuary. You see, this teaching is going to be in two parts. I don't want to jump ahead of myself. There's a part I'm going to take tomorrow. But I want to show us a scripture. Why we know that the body is... It, it, uh, Jesus took his body and broke it. Paul took his body and broke it. And then Paul also admonished us to do the same. Ah, uh, okay. When you check 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 27. 1 Corinthians 9, 27. Paul said, I beat my body and I make it my slave. That after I've done everything to save others, I myself will not be a castaway. Other translations say, I put my body under. I'm driving somewhere. That's why I'm bringing all the scriptures. Now, when you now check Romans chapter 12, verse 1. Romans 12, 1. The Bible says what? He said, present your what? Who is doing the presentation? Who, who, who? You, you are the one presenting. He said, therefore, I urge you, brothers, in view of God's mercy, to offer, to offer your as living. He said what? Holy I'm pleasing to God. This is your spiritual art of worship. The peak of love, according to Jesus, is that a man give his life. He said, the peak of love, I think that should be John 15, 13. He said, greater love has no man than this, that a man give his life for the sake of his friend. So brokenness, Jesus took his body, broke it. Broke it. Paul took his body and broke it. Paul now said, I wish they have the, the pigeon translation. Adebeguna. carry na body. Adebeguna in fear of God mercy. Make na. Okay, let me read it. Okay, don't worry. This is my own translation. Adebeguna in fear of God mercy. Make na carry na body. Make an akari and call her. Come give God. This one. Na. Make an akari and come. Make on the holy. I'm pleasing. Ain't it? Ah, yeah. Holy, pleasing, acceptable. He said, This is your spiritual act of worship. No. And I did a video. I said, God must first accept you before he accepts your offering. If you are not a broken vessel, you can't be acceptable. Every other thing, let me help you. If you are not a broken vessel, you can't be acceptable. Any other thing you do is religion. Any other thing. Any other thing. If you like, be sleeping in church. Wash the church. You say, hey, this church is too dirty. Wash it. Brokenness is the first rule of use. <laughs> Brokenness. 
It's the first rule of use because if God does not see you, you can't see your sacrifice. <laughs> if God does not see you, you can't see your sacrifice. So the aim now, now let me now give us the aim of this study. The aim of, to, of this teaching weekend story, study is that brokenness is the key to usefulness and abundance. Earth merit and heaven reward. I come again. Brokenness is the key to usefulness and abundance. Earth merit and heaven reward. Brokenness is the key to usefulness and abundance. Earth merit and heaven reward. If you have written that, you cannot look up. What well brought about this? I was studying my Bible, but the account I was studying was Mark, Mark's account. Mark 6, 41. I say in the kingdom. Why? Because John 12, John 12, 24. The Bible said, Jesus said, he said, except a corn of wheat fall to the ground and die. I think he gave you one translation. He said it is single. He said it remains single. He said, but if he fall to the earth and die, then will he bring forth many more? So God spoke to me because I was concerned. I can, why was Jesus breaking this? He gave things, he broke it. He gave things, he broke it. God said the secret, the secret to abundance in the kingdom is brokenness. Brokenness. So now, let's read Ecclesiastes. Because what I'm doing today is set the foundation for what we'll do tomorrow and also finish today's course and fly into tomorrow's own. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 13. Ecclesiastes 12, 13. Ecclesiastes 12, 13. Are we getting it? Look up. Are we getting it now? Is it simple enough? Are we getting it? Is it simple enough? All right. He said, here is my final conclusion. Fear who? He said, fear God. And what? For this is the old duty of... <laughs> ah, yeah. And that is why I said, no, I love that translation that he gave me. It's okay. That's why I said that our aim is that brokenness is the first key of, to usefulness and abundance. Then there is a comma, earth merit and heaven's reward. If you are only being used on earth and you enjoy abundance here yeah, alone, and you did not fulfill this guy. Because don't take, take note of I say it's only broken vessels that God served to a generation. So if you are useful on earth and you don't get a reward in heaven, your brokenness is wasteful. Because there's a way you can say, ah, what can I do to build a fame for myself? And say brokenness, brokenness, I, I go there broken. And then you are broken, 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 and broken for to be used alone. Take note, take note of the balance. To be used of God alone. And God is actually looking for vessels. God will use it. And then towards the latter part of your life, especially when you have passed the baton to the next person, because that is the essence of this study. When you have passed the baton to the next person, you now miss heaven. Ah, say not you. Let me show you something. Luke, Luke 12, Luke 12, uh, Luke 16.25, Luke 16.25. Let me carry us back to the story of, 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 um, of, of, um, the rich man Lazarus. Can we read this together, please? What is our aim again? No, read the aim to, back to me again together. Let's read it together. Yes, the aim. And, wait, no, let's balance it. When you are talking about usefulness, are you talking about in heaven? When you're talking about abundance, are you talking about in heaven? That is earth merit. But if you are useful on earth, qualify your usefulness on earth to the heavens. There is heaven reward. 
Some of you, wait, oh, some of you hope you know that some of you will not have crown in heaven. But not you. The person will not come. There are people that will not have crown. That is what will make heaven beautiful. By the time some of us, Taban Geadewa, seven. Tabakan Loma, I can say, no, I don't like this one. I don't like this one today. I, I won't wear this one. So when we are showing up in the throne of heaven, empty head, laying bewa. Because there are crowns that the Bible mentioned. Ama, affair. <laughs> Do you know that there is crown for love? I think that is in Timothy. That you love God. Oh, oh, okay. When we did what is love, I was supposed to read that to us, but time did not permit me. He said that, let me look for that in Timothy. I think that should be in Timothy. He said there is a crown that he has set apart for those that love him. I think that's, that one is called the crown of life or something like that. There is a crown. Then there are other crowns for people who suffer. So crown, yeah, I said the crown is orishi rishi. So there is at merit, there is heaven's reward. So if you are just broken for earth use, you are just broken to enjoy abundance on earth, and you did not consider heaven, ah, lay no. That is what will carry us to. Oh, perfect. Thank you, Jerry. I was saying Timothy. He said, Blessed is the man who persevere under trial because when he has stood the test, he said he will receive the crown of life. Yeah, crown of life. That is the word. He said he will receive the crown of life that God has promised to those who love him. I was supposed to read this during, but time did not permit us to do that. There is crown of life. We say there are four cardinal things we place love on. When we read that, what is love? We say number one is what? The love of. Uh -uh. They didn't come, Abby. The love of God are for us. And by us, I mean the word, right? And I say that one is also classified. That God, there is the love of God are for sinners, right? All of us started as sinners. But we are no longer sinners for us. And then the love he has for his children. And as we are now bringing your unfair advantage on board. Because hey, I have an upgraded version of that unfair advantage. Okay, person is like, oh God, every day by upgraded version. But when I have one last version. Do you know, for the first time I checked the meaning of stream. Stream means moving waters. Emma, Emma, Aya. So what God, Ele, Varakeno. See, Okay. Do you, okay. Oh, our house is our house is in Gama. But if as a righteous person we travel and we spend longer time where we go to, that oh you know we don't experience the same season with the white and whatever. So if I travel to a place where they are not in rainy season and I need to plant, I can't plant. But because because there was no rain. You can't move rain. Rain, rain is uh, geographical. But stream is not. You move the stream. Ah, that was why in the year of famine, the Bible told us that Isaac sowed in the land and reaped. Yes, the Philistines, they could not. Because that guy is a moving stream. In the move water. So stream is moving water. So that was when we said, okay, there's an advantage to a believer. Then we need not stop there. We not say there is a love you have for God. Right? There is a love you have for God. We now also say that there is love you have for and there is love men have for but we didn't do those two parts. Right? Don't worry. I'll upgrade the curriculum. We'll do it later when God permits. But what brought us to this place is that there is love. There is a crown of glory. Right? There is a crown of life that God keeps in store for those that so the essence of brokenness is that you are not only useful on earth, you also get reward in heaven. So you are working with the consciousness. Now, give me Luke, uh, Luke 16 and Luke 16, 25 that I mentioned earlier. Luke 16, 25, sir. Luke 16, 25. The Bible says, Abraham said, son. Now, I want to create the balance. I want to, oh, my, higher. Can you just pray in the Holy Ghost? Eva <laughs> Rama Ah, Faraminandos. For in Jesus' mighty name, I will pray. The essence of brokenness is locked up here. Please look up. Give me the heavy game. Brokenness is. Bro, brokenness is what? Okay. 
earth, merit, and heaven. He's not having one at the expense of another. Ah. If the rich man, if the rich man, if the rich man was able, don't forget, I say brokenness, the key to brokenness in the kingdom, the key to abundance and multiplicity in the kingdom is brokenness. And that abundance is on earth, right? But there's also another key which is heaven's reward. Are we getting it? If Abraham, if the rich man had had a complete and balanced brokenness, there won't be need for Lazarus in the story. Ah, don't leave me. I come again. If the rich man had lived a balanced life and everything he did, he did it with balance, with eight merit and every reward, there won't be need for Lazarus in the story. What kill of Lazarus? But that, so that is not the intention of God. It's not that you have every earth merit and the every reward. I want walk out. So one queen. So Lazarus, the rich man had earth reward. Lazarus has heaven's merit, heaven's reward. The rich man has earth merit. Lazarus had what? Heaven's reward. That is not the intention of God. No, 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 no. That is not the intention of God. Because let me tell you. Part of the things that have to do with brokenness is that you will leave people and people will leave you. Because Peter, let me look for that scripture. Peter said that we have left all things and follow you. He said, What is it? Was hey, Mary, Mary, hey, Mary, Mary, Mary. Just imagine Jesus saying Mary. He said that in this world, you have hundredfold. What did they now say they have? He said, and in the world to come eternal life. That is the intention of God. Paul Peter said, we have left all and follow you. What is it to us now? He said, ah, my brother, make I tell you. For this that way you did, you will get upon us. In the world to come, as Pastor Sami, look at that. Who is working with Pastor Sami? Oh, perfect. He said, I tell you the truth, Jesus said to them, no one who has left home or wife or brother, and let's read together now, we tired, who has left, no one who has left home or wife or brothers or parents or children for the sake of the kingdom of God. Yes. Next verse. We fail to receive many times as much in this age. And what? And in the year to come, eternal life. That is the intention of God. Don't be broken and useful on earth. And take all the abundance in the earth and then in heaven you miss. That is not the intention of this brokenness. No, 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 no. That is not the intention. So, assuming the rich man had lived, because in this world, the Bible says the rich man have his good things. He said Lazarus is bad things. Let me also balance this. The aim is not so that you can have bad things on earth. That you are broken, you, now have, you are now broke. You did not complete the equation. That is not wisdom. We will leave you in that one. <laughs> we are going to leave you. The essence of brokenness is not so you can be broke. Jesus showed us brokenness and they were all satisfied. Jesus broke the bread, they were all satisfied. And there was abundance. The Bible said there were 12 baskets full. Oh. The Bible said there were 12 baskets full. In another time, the Bible says there were 7 baskets full. So if you are truly broken, my brother, you should be full. If you are truly broken, there should be fullness. Because Jesus said, no one leave father, leave mother, leave home, leave sister. And we not in this world receive as many. And in the air to come eternal life. So the study of our brokenness is not so it can be broken heart and then be hopeful in heaven. Because men have been drilled to me that the only way you can be broken on heart is don't identify with earthly things. Don't be broken. Me, I'm broken. Take the money. Ele. Me, me, I'm broken. This is broken. This is, this is mammon. Onkana mammon. Anakivo. No! I'll show you a better dimension. 
Why pick either of them when you can have both? Assuming it's Paul that wrote that place that we read in Luke 18. They will say, it's Paul writing. It's Paul writing. It's Paul writing. But Jesus said, I'll show you something higher. That there's a way you can... Take me back to that, sir. From verse 29. Jesus said that there's a way you can live home. Okay. Peter said to them, we have left all. We are to follow you. Because that is the essence of this brokenness. Is that you live all, yet all, all is not leaving you. Ah. Is that you live all, yet all is not leaving you. If, oh, Farame, that is the key to abundance in the kingdom. I have, I have to say no to money severally, yet money keeps following me. Ah, Mevo. I don't like people that love money. Because the Bible says the love of money is the root. It's not evil. Because people used to be mistaken though. You see, the Bible now also said that if a tree be cut, if the root is still on the ground, it still have hope. So that means that that guy's sinfulness is climax. It's going to destroy you. Apostle Man said something I love. He said, if the Bible says that the companions of fools are destroyed, he said, what will happen with the fool himself? You know, just by the with the guy, you will be destroyed. What will now happen to the guy himself? Destruction. He is not in situation, Lobato. So the answer is not that you will be broke and you will not have reward on earth. Let me help you. Every time you are broke, that you gave all, God already also releases all. Ah. Every time you are broken, that you gave all, God also releases all. But religion will not allow you to collect all. I say religion will not allow you to collect all. Because the Bible tells us, take me back, sir, very quickly. The Bible tells us that, no, verse 20, just be taking me from verse 29, sir. The Bible says, I tell you the truth. Who is telling you the truth? We Jesus lie. Why is he not telling us the truth? Jesus will not lie naturally. And yet he's still telling us the truth. So that, this is what it means. It's like tautology. It's like, I tell you the truth, I tell you the truth. Yeah, that's what Jesus is saying here. He said, anywhere you see, I tell you the, the truth. Jesus is actually telling them the truth. Jesus is emphasizing the truth that me and no good lie naturally. But this one, not me, they tell you. Because this guy came on board in 37, uh, 38, that we have left all low. Ah, Oga, Atimoji, Fio, Lune, Kini, the words do I like? Because don't forget, the contest was eternal life. They were not saying, say, oh, so the only hope we have now is just to make heaven. That is saying, Katen, so no. Yeah, no, no, I'll tell you the truth. Peter, and of course, Jesus will have to tell Peter the truth. <laughs> Before Peter called into one corner. Because Peter is always there, he in law corner. I think the writer of the song he used to read Peter's story. So, one corner, yes. <laughs> so, in law corner, he will have called Jesus to one corner. Because all we know it was Peter that he asked Jesus, that, eh? How many times my brother said against me if I forgive him? Eh, hey, that down say, <laughs> but thank God for all these questions of Peter. Just like one video that I was making around, that one man was asking them that you would not give us refreshment. If you know the place, no problem. I don't, I, well, okay, you are the one, that, you, are, you know you are the one. The people that don't know it, thank you, Jerry. You are the spiritual people. You are broken. <laughs> you are the broken people. The guy was asking, ah, we have been here since morning, even water, they didn't give us. If you still did not know the, the joke, God bless you. No, Pastor Victor, you don't know it, go out. No, you don't see that. It was a concluded election, actually. When they were taking that, the man raised up his observation. And they have, even water they have not given them. No, that, naturally that is bad. That is wickedness. So, uh, and the other people, they still ate the food, though, because they are giving them food too. They ate the food. And yet they want more money. So thank God for Peter that was asking them this question. Even though we wouldn't have known. What is more? But no, brokenness means just be broken, be poor and broke. But Jesus said, if you read that story, it was the story of that rich man, right? If you read the story from the beginning. So the, Peter was like, ah, Baba, can you open it? Okay, ah, let's read it. Pastor, I'm going to look at the activity. My name is Jesus in the question. And he left. And then Peter, that was when Peter now asked that, ah, I want to left everything. Can you open it? Okay. Jesus looked at him and said, 
how hard uh, is from that you should go and give all this. No, that man, the man was the one that came to ask Jesus' question. I think that's from verse 18 or there, about. He came to ask Jesus' question. No, verse 18, I think. Either 18 or 17. He came to ask Jesus' question, and then Jesus was now asking him, what are the laws, something, something, something. Aha. Uh-huh. Oh, God bless you, verse 18. Yeah. He said, a certain, re- a certain ruler asked him, good teacher, take note of what I said. I said, if the rich man had balanced his life, we won't need Lazarus in that story. We won't need Lazarus. Kill a few months of Lazarus, I will still one on earth. And when everyone knows about him, you see now, Lazarus will make heaven. We won't need Lazarus in that story. But the equation was half half. So the emphasis is get, it, get the balance. Because how can Lazar, how can Abraham be telling the, the rich man that son? How can he be calling somebody that is in the air son? Because Lazar, hey, Mele, hey, go and read the Bible. Abraham was thinking rich. So Abraham had a son in the rich man and had a son in Lazarus, unbalanced sons. But you to devil, Lazarus, but to devil, bosom on Fisi. Kai, oh, 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 represent that. Abraham had riches as rich as anything could be, and yet he is in heaven. That is why he could call the rich guy son. So that is the balance, and that's why when God was looking for a template, he didn't look for the rich man as a template, he looked for last, he looked for Abraham. Because as touching the heaven reward in day, as touching the earth Mary in day. Me, the son of God through Jesus, the son of God through Jesus, as touching its reward, I do. I do. My account, I don't open dollar, I don't open the account to send anything, no. I mean, I go still make heaven. If you get to heaven, you didn't see me, you, you are in the wrong heaven. <laughs> no, I'm not telling you. If for any mistake you get to heaven, I think me and my wife were discussing yesterday when we were going, going home. Look up. I want to beg you in the name of God. You see, please don't go to hell. You, you see, there are some faces of people. I'm just begging you. I just want you to realize. No, I'm just passionate for you. Now look up. You, can you imagine the face of Osama Bilandi? Those guys, they are already chairman. They want to throw down one to my to my join one. Now that is not all. Imagine the face of Nigerian politicians. That 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 refuse to be born again before they die, and when level ability, and when anybody, some of you are in room with one one on serious person for just one semester. It was like hell. Just imagine how hell will look like when that same person is now junior compared to the other senior members. That hell and ability. Hell is not a good place to go to. Apart from that, the faces you'll be seeing there. And do you know something? You recognize your face. He said, Ah, Oga, you to make a. He said, no, Where are you supposed to say, Mad? He did for the. Now, the irony of the whole thing is some people have died by the hands of these politicians. If any of the politicians at the point of death repent, and the one that die, die as a sinner, he go to see the politician forever. I'm the one telling you. Although, now, let's now imagine. It. Hope you know that when we get to heaven, this is a joke anyway. When we get to heaven, if I see some of Nigerian politicians in Ijo Koti one, in law, what bench me? In your excuse me, I'll law, Ejo. Me, she Ijo Koti, bye bye. Bye bye. I don't want this close me. Everybody will see for me. Me move to Ijo Koti. But of course, in heaven, my heart will be so pure. I will have not forgotten about all the things they do. <laughs> but are we getting it? It isn't simple enough. Pass me, will you tell it? Am I your time to fish when? Did I step to that side? I didn't go to that place. So. I sure it's not from that side. It's not from here. 
All right, let's read a bit about something. It isn't simple enough. Are we getting it? Wait, are we getting it? What is our hymn? Brokenness? To usefulness where? Yes. And and I was reward. So assuming Lazarus was a serious Christian too, we won't need a rich man. No, assuming Lazarus was a, he was a serious Christian. Assuming he was a balanced Christian. I think that is the right word. We won't need a rich man in that story. Because all we know that it was not only that Lazarus was poor. He was also sick. But when you could utilize the esoteria, you know what see? Do you know why I said that? Give me, we'll come back to this Luke 18, sir. We'll come back to Luke 18, 18. Give me Luke 16, 25 again. Let's read something that, that, that Abraham said. So don't let be broke. Don't let be broken and be broke. Or don't be a broke, broken. The car to increase it. Don't be a broke, brokenness. <laughs> You're a broke, brokenness. No, 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 no. Don't do that to yourself. Mike Mudo said something I love. He said, for you to study Jesus very well and make wise of your life, he said, you must study the person of Jesus and the principles of Jesus. When you are broke to go to heaven, you are studying the person of Jesus. But when you are broke with eight merit, you are studying the principle of Jesus. There are principles Jesus gave. There are rules he gave for you to live on earth. The first thing the Bible showed us Jesus did was he broke himself. Matthew 26, 26. The Bible said, and while they were eating, Jesus took the bread and broke it. He said, and he gave it to the disciples. And said, eat, this is my body. There is a part that says, do this in remembrance of me. When you are also broken, you are remembering Jesus. When you are broken, you are remembering Jesus. And I said that when it comes to brokenness, God cannot do it for you. Paul said, I beat my body and make myself. Jesus said, I broke my body, I give you. And Paul said, I be a beggar in view of God's mercy. He said, offer yourself as living sacrifice, holy, pleasing, acceptable unto the Lord, which is your reasonable art of worship. I beg you in the name of, in the name of God, or in the view of God's mercy, that you offer. Who is doing the offering? Who is doing the offering? You are the one doing the offering. Sir? Oh, now not sit and pitch me. Ah! God bless them. Oh, go, oh, go. Come and hug me. Ah, I'm going to use this pigeon. After I finish reading, just go to pigeon nest. Thank you. He said, who brought this pigeon? Come on now. Oh, you type it. Huh. Okay, let's say reverse something. Let's look for a way of get. I thought there's the translation. Okay, my brothers and sisters, go. God, they're good, so I beg. Okay, okay, yeah. Okay, you type it from the... Ah, God bless you. God, they're good, so I beg. As soon as they are alive, make una they offer una body. Jam, a sacrifice. Make una they do waiting, he talk, and waiting go make belle sweet. Allah, eh! Hey. Now, let me help you, let me help you. When you are broken with eight merit, belay this with God. <laughs> belay this with God. He said, hey, that is my son. And that's why even Abraham could call the rich man son. He said, son, ah, why you no come to heaven? Ah, ah. The guy was son with eight merit. But with every reward in no day. In face, no show. In shoe, no shine. Mm. Ah, not me. <laughs> not me. 
So Abraham, but Abraham replied, I explained this pigeon. I love their good. I did look for this pigeon. This did Baba things. Baba things, good, good things. He said, but Abraham replied, son, who is Abraham calling son here? The rich man, he said, you are broken. On, then take note. I say, according to God's system, that brokenness is the one that triggers multiplicity, right? And abundance. Are we on the same page? So he's calling him son. You engage the principle of Jesus, but you did not meet the person of Jesus. So he says, son, Remember that in your lifetime you receive your good things, and the Bible says in James 1, James 1 17, if I'm not incorrect, he said, All good and perfect gift come from above, from the Father of all light, with whom there is no variableness nor shadow of turning. So the Bible is saying that he received good things, and good things come from above. I said, Good things come from above. I said, What? Yes, thank you, sir. Let's go back to this thing. And he said, why Lazarus? Verse uh, 1625, sir. He said, why Lazarus receive what? That is not the intention of God. That is not the intention of God. Everything you saw Lazarus undergo, it was a batting. On earth. On earth, it was batting. He said, why Lazarus receive battings? In heaven, they are saying that Lazarus receive battings. So God wants to receive battings. Let me ask you, what are the battings Lazarus received? Number one. Sickness. But that is not what would people know. Oh, hope you know that people did not even know Lazarus was sick. So that should not be number one. Poverty. Because I don't even know how somebody will come out with a salmon using Lazarus. <laughs> I'm telling you. Why? Why? Because so it did not represent us well. Not me. I said, God will not give to a generation any vessel that is not broken. Why? The Bible says when they brought the bread to Jesus, and I say you can come the way you are, but God will not allow you to go the way you are. When they brought all bread to Jesus, Jesus broke the bread. The people that gave Jesus were the disciples. Why would Jesus ask them to bring the bread? They gave Jesus bread, but Jesus gave them something else in return. Because the Bible says, look up to everyone and give thanks. And they broke it and gave it to the disciples. The disciples in turn gave it to the people. So you may come to God with an intention of satisfying people, of feeding people. Not until you come to God and God have koinonia with you and break you, break you and break you until you are broken, but not broke. Then he will send you back to a generation to be used. And the Bible says, when they ate it, they were satisfied. There was nobody that came back to complain that the stomach upset. Ah. No stomach upset. And the Bible says, after that, they pack 12 basket full. I say, you can come as an individual, but when God wants to send you, he will send you as a nation. Twelve basket full. So a, a basket may represent a church. A basket may represent a family. A basket may represent a nation. But they came as a whole. When, he, when the basket was being gathered, it was broken. It was broken. Ah, Pastor Stanley carried out there. He said, twelve basket of broken pieces. Broken. Broken pieces, not the whole big pieces. Twelve basket. Because the people ate and they were all satisfied. Ah, I offer myself. I will be broken. 18, 18. Ah, do we need to go to 18, 18 again because of time? Look, 18, 18 that we are reading the other time. I don't think we have the time. I think I've stressed that enough. Praise God. So, Ecclesiastes 12, 13 that we read the last time. But are we getting it? Are we getting blessed? What are we considering today? Broken. Mm-mm, it's not broken as well. Broken is the teaching series. Broken. So now let's move. Let's fly. This teaching is going to be break into two according to Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 13. Ecclesiastes 12, 13 says, Fear God, right? He said, This is the summary of the whole law of man. He said, Fear God and obey his commandments. He said, This is the whole essence. This is the summary of the life of man. So at the end of your life, if you do not fear God 
and you do not obey his commandments, you don't have a life. At the end of your life, when you look at the end of your life, you do not fear God, you do not obey his commandments, you don't have a life. So it's from this we are going to split our brokenness into two. The fear God part, I attach it to the mystery of death. That one we won't do it today, we'll do it tomorrow. The mystery of death. Fear God. The mystery of death. Why do you obey his commandment part? I, I call it obedience and victory over the spirit of death. That is what I want us to do today. And I don't know why, sincerely. According to my, to my writing, is the mystery of death that is the first thing, which is what I'm supposed to do today. But while I was praying, God said no. He said this victory over the spirit of death should be done today. I don't know, but I'm certain it's for someone. Maybe the person will not come tomorrow. They need to hear it. He said, no. Because if you check my writing here, I have the mystery, the mystery of death, which is fear God, and then obedience and victory over the spirit of death. But God said, no, start with victory over the spirit of death and move to the spirit of the mystery of death tomorrow. So it's under the mystery of death we'll be doing seeds and consecration. That's when we'll go deeper into the mystery of brokenness. Are we on the same page? All right. Obedience. Can we pray in the Holy Ghost just a few minutes? Just pray, friends. Just pray. In Jesus' mighty name, uh, we pray. If you listen to all these things I'm teaching you, and you do them, I'm telling you the truth. <laughs> Inevitably, your life will produce results. I'm the one telling you. You see, when I gave my life to Christ, let me help you. When I gave my life to Christ, the only thing, this scripture, this Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 13, I read, that was the scripture I I used to give my life. I, I knew when I gave my life to Christ. So I know that the whole essence of my life is obedience. So in, I started praying that. See, I still pray it up to now. There's no day that passed I will not pray. I say, Father, anytime I'm not in your way, don't allow me to have peace. Anytime I'm not obeying you, don't allow me to have peace. Because that is the only way God can communicate to me. All of a sudden, I just don't have peace. Because one of the languages God speaks is peace. Especially if you have been obeying him. Once you are not in obedience, your peace will go. How many of us are in that? Your peace will go. So me, I convert that into prayer. The Father, once I'm not in obedience, my peace should leave me. Pastor Shekun, you are welcome. Let's celebrate Pastor Shekun. I say, Father, once I'm not in obedience, my peace should go. So that thing has been a major help to me in my Christian life. And that's why I could easily obey God. I'm telling you, because I won't have peace. And once I don't have peace, what do I want to do? It doesn't matter what it is. Is it money? Is it whatever? Whatsoever. Once I'm not in obedience, Marako Nesi. Now, let me help you. Including good things. I will want to do good things. Take, for instance, some of you that attend CLC, you should know this. You will understand this I'm saying. While I just joined CLC, me, ah, I so see the Lord. And then all of a sudden, I'm a media person also. I discovered that the two, when they expanded the, when they opened up the thing, it was facing like this for when they opened it up. I discovered that the TV, the two TVs that they were using when they were just like 500 capacity, the same TV they are now using when it's like 3,000 capacity. So there were places where TV was vacant, that there were no TVs. And immediately in my heart, I was like, I'll buy two TVs for the church. Is that not a good thing? I said, that was, in fact, that one was on the Gucci. Once I say away, it's already done. You don't understand. Because it's not as if I'm going to trust God for the money. He just transfer the money. So, I was driving out of church. I just entered out of church like that. I just added my spirit, no. Uh-uh. God said to me, this is God said to me, he said, there is somebody whose lifting is tied to that TV. 
If you do it, it's just jara. He said, leave it for the person to do it. But if the person does not do it, the jara will come to you. The next Sunday, they announce that somebody brought TV. The next, you know what I'm The next Sunday, it was not far. The next Sunday, somebody already brought TV. So, so that was God speaking to me. So, something good I want to do, God said no. Now, recently, there's somebody I wanted to be, I wanted to send him money for, too. That I fear this person should need money. God said no. God said, in fact, every time I send money to the person, I, my peace will just fly away. Ah, what is happening here? I said, when God said no. He said, don't tamper with people's season. Don't lift what I'm not lifting. Now, listen. It's not as if the person is in disobedience. I did a podcast that I have not posted yet, but I will say it here. That is the essence of this story. I say, anytime you steal the storm, there are two things happening. Either you are in disobedience or you are with God. If you are with God in the storm, relax. If you are in disobedience, nobody can fight for you against God. Jonah was thinking he was running away from God. The storm that arise was because he was in disobedience. For Paul, the storm think he was against him. In Matthew, in, in Acts of Apostles 27 from verse 23 to 25, the Bible said, Paul said, he said, the angel of the Lord, whose I am and whom I serve, is with me. He said, and he has said unto me, he said, I have given you all the life of those that stay with you. He said, nothing will be lost except the property. He said, and I have faith in God that it will happen just as he has told me. The same storm coming for the sheep, but one person, God, was on his side. The other person was in disobedience. So every time storm arise, find your position. Are you in disobedience or are you in obedience? So God said, don't tamper with this person's season. And I understand what that means. Because Pastor Bayo, my spiritual father, he said that, he said the same thing to me after God began to lift me. He said, every time he make attempt to send money to me, God keeps saying, don't tamper with his processing. Don't tamper with his lifting. And I thank God he obeyed. I thank God he's positioned himself to obey. Because just imagine, if he had given me maybe one million, I would be a fish farmer now. Because it's far, farming I would have done. I would have positioned myself enough to receive what God will have for me to dispense the mystery of God to a generation without any hindrance. But he said, anytime you make an attempt, God keeps saying, hey, don't tamper with, don't tamper with my making with him. Don't tamper with my processes with him. Just leave him. Leave him. Don't tamper with my processes with him. And true to it, me and somebody went to Abuja. I packaged 3,000, 5,000, I can't remember, to give Pastor Bio. He prayed for me. He came to, he was on a lot in the hotel. He came to the same hotel and gave the other brother money. That's why I know that it was true. That it was not just trying to say because I was lifted. He gave the other brother money. Me, I was the one giving him money and he did that. He did not give me one kobo. He did not give me. And I was not angry. He did not give me. Just look at the brother and say, ah, whatever, ah, whatever. He just count the money. Ping, 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 ping. And gave the brother and gave me God bless you. And hey, I found it. Oh, I want to show you a mystery. There is a God bless you. Did you know that the Bible tells us that when, hey, wait, 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 wait. Ah, oh, I want to jump ahead of myself. I don't want to do that. Let me help you. Look at it. Look at me, brother. Did you know, sir? That Abram, Abram, Abram was not barren. Ah. Oh, God, oh, God. Oh. Ah. Abram was not barren. It was because every other thing Abram was proceeding, was producing, the blessing was not supposed to be on them. The blessing was supposed to be in partnership with Sarah. Ah. Abram has several other children. Who, hey, fear Abram. When Sarah died, Abraham went ahead and married Keturah. Abraham had five children by the hand of Keturah. But the Bible says when Abraham wanted to die, he gave gifts to all the children of his concubine and gave the blessing to Isaac. What is gift? I think that should be Genesis 26, if I'm not incorrect, from verse 1. Genesis 26. 
Genesis 26, sir. Uh, hey, perfect. 25, okay, perfect. Give me verse 1 so that they can see how many children Abraham had. After the death of Sarah. So Abraham was not barren. No, no. Let me help you. Some of the reasons why you think you are not fruitful is not as if, if you go to other feet, you won't be fruitful. But because I'm getting ahead of myself. Don't let me do that. But let me just show you this. He said, Abraham took another wife whose name was she bought him Kinnikan, 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 like Zakaba. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you will not, not be born in children. So the same Abraham that it took him 25 years before he and Sarah could produce a baby, at his old age, as good as dead, Babasi shoot. Mm, Babasi shoot the shot. And he did not born one child. You don't understand? You don't understand? Do you know? How many years was Abraham live? How many years does he have to live more? He did not born one child. After Sarah has gone, long gone. So some of the things that are happening in your life is because the process arm of it is not completed yet. So Abraham was not barren. Let me help you. Some of the least new call, please. Some of the seasons you are passing through is not because you are not fruitful. Ah. Oh. Do you know that Isaac was 20 something years old already when this man went to go and marry another wife? And yet, the Bible was telling, because the, when you're reading, the Bible was telling that Abraham was as good as dead. As good as dead as it was, he was not in his prime. Yet, he produced five children. Uh -uh. As good as dead, because that's what Proverbs tell, uh, Romans tell us. Romans said ah, he was as good as dead. As good as dead as he was. When the promise came, the Bible told us after the promise has come and is on board and the guy is doing well, he's growing older and older and older and older. Because we know that he has almost want to go and sacrifice Isaac in Genesis 22. This is Genesis 25. Do you know how many years in between Genesis 22 and Genesis 25? That even said I die. And yet, Baba Sibona, five children, no mistake. Five. And the wife did not play away much. By his hand. And yet it was as good as dead. There are some things that is just part of the process. It's not as if you are not good. It's not as if the heavens are against you. It's just that you must... Ah, when the guy stepped out of his marital home, once he met a, a guy, who produced him, sharp, sharp. Once. So while I was studying this scripture, God told me, he said the problem of Abraham was not as if he was not productive. His process was, I was taking him through time to come in terms with the promise. So the only person, and oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. God said to say to somebody in a relationship, because this is, I saw this in the light of relationship, that there is a permissive will of God, but there is the will of God. What it means, oh, glory to God. I have two examples. Ah, thank you, Jesus. You may not, it may not be you now, but you may need it later. Any person, go, go, the person God have the covenant with was Sarah. Sarah. It is the womb of Sarah that the covenant was battered with. God said to say to someone that your assignment will be cut short, take notes, will be shortchanged if you miss his will for you. Wait, wait. Wait. That's why we say brokenness. In the brokenness, who did he say we live? He said he leave home, right? He leave parents. You may have to leave your own way for the will of God. That is how you are broken. And if you leave all, do what I say all will do. All will follow you. But if you chase all, all will leave. The same thing with Joseph and Mary. The same story with Joseph and Mary. If Joseph did not marry Mary, see, oh wait, hope you know that the blessing was on Joseph, not on Mary. And that is the issue some people have. Then God will have looked for someone in the system. But Joseph also knew the will of God because the Bible says he was a righteous man. I think that is Genesis, um, Matthew 1, 20, 21, if I'm not incorrect. 
that he was a righteous man. So he knew the will of God. Even when he wanted to leave Mary, the Bible said the angel of God appeared to him immediately. I said, hey, don't leave this, don't leave this woman. So I am able to say that the same way God has speaking to you is the way we speak to you when you want to marry too. It's not a cloud that will be gathering from heaven and say, tu, 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 ma, son, 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 son. Hey, hey, hey. So, the reason why the promise was delayed, was looking like it was delayed, was because the partnership. Abraham was not an unfruitful woman, man. Sarah was not an unfruitful woman. But there is a promise in between. There is a process in between. There are three seasons. I've summarized the three now. The previous one I gave us four seasons, right? I've summarized the three now. There are three seasons in a man's life. Three. And I'm going to do that on that timing. There are three seasons in a man's life. Three of them. The first season is called the season of isolation. The second season is called the season of training. The last season is called the season of rest. Now, I will summarize in this way. The first season of isolation is called the season of promise. The second season, which is the season of training, is called the season of process. The last season, which is the season of rest, is called the season of fulfillment of promises. So the gap between when you had the promise and when the promise was fulfilled is called process. And I said something. I said you will determine how long that one will take. <laughs> you see that one in between is over to you. God will give you the promise and watch over his word. Why? Because the Bible told us that when God was speaking to Abraham in Genesis, I think Genesis, ah, I can't remember that Genesis now. God said that your children are going to, I think that Genesis 15, don't look for it. God said that your children are going to serve other nations for 400 years. Yet, it took Israel 430 years. It was 400 years that was in the agenda of God. So you see that season of training, it depends on you. That is the season of process. So it did not take God 25 years to give Abraham son, uh, a son. It took Abraham 25 years to align. Because he was giving birth to other, he was giving, he was, so by the 25th year after God said, ah, but wait, he give birth to him. He can't try it. He can't try it. He can't try it. God laid the man on his own. I said, bring him. Come and offer him for me. By the time Abraham had finished that 25 years, he knew what it means to be patient. And that's what the Bible says in the book of James 1. He said, patience. He said, your trial will develop patience. He said, when patience has finished his work, then will you be surely mature? Ah, thank God, see now. He said, perseverance must finish his work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. So in that process, God will not, not forget. It's part of brokenness. I say God will not serve an unbroken vessel to a generation. It's only broken vessels he serves out. So in the time of that process, when you have the promise that you are going to be a multimedia, you can truncate that promise in the face of process. You can truncate the whole promise. And that's why it appears like, ah, this person told us that God is sending to the end of the earth, yet the guy is still in the village. And he died in the village. Because let me help you. Let me help you. Men can fail in aligning with the promise of God, but the prophecy will still stand. If Noah, wait, wait. If Noah refused to build an ark for God, an ark will still be built anyway. So it's in that face of the promise, that face of the process, that process face, that is where many people fail. He's not taking God. Ah, when did I tell you that God was telling me about kingdom wealth transfer? Everybody echo it. 2010. I said since 2010, God has been telling me kingdom wealth transfer. And the only thing that was coming to my mind is, I would just sit down at home. So you just come and say, are you jelly? I say, yes. He said, 25 million. I'm joking. I'm not joking. That what I've been on my mind. No, until 2017. Ah. Between 2017 and 20, between 2010 and 2017, how many years? Seven years. I did not do anything about that prophecy. 2017, and I began to pick up books. I said, ah, God said there's massive wealth transfer. And I began to read books. In two years, the heavens open. Management means it is man's age. So when God, the Bible said God did not cause rain to fall on earth because there was no man to manage. 
So your promises will not come not until you have passed through the routine of an ability of God's brokenness and your ability to manage so that you are in charge. So when God gives you the promise, promise as a very new, there is a season which is the process. And you will not qualify yourself into that process. On the wings of the process, once the heavens receive a signal that you are set, then they begin to rain down abundantly. I will show you a scripture. I've already read the scripture. I'll read it again. Exodus 23. Exodus 23, 29 and 30. Exodus 23, 29 and 30. Are we getting it? Is it simple enough? Is somebody getting this? Can you just pray in the Holy Ghost? For in Jesus' mighty name I will pray. Look up. How many seasons are in the man's life? The first one. Isolation. It's in the season of isolation you receive promises. When you are with God, intimacy. God begins to tell you, Pastor Sonny, I will send you to the end of the earth. You shall not be small. You shall be a mighty evangelist. You shall receive healing. That is the promise. That is the promise. Then you begin to position yourself to meet the people that have something similar to what God said you are going to have. You begin to read book. You begin to position yourself. You begin to consecrate yourself for your calling. I used to be a preacher. I don't preach in point. Uh -uh. Those have known me that know me that. That's why I can preach for six hours. Because there's no focus. I can be preaching. You know what I'm But now I preach in point. Why? Because I know the calling. I know the assignment. I have to check people that have something similar. I say, they don't preach like this. Oh. That's how we can come up with reels. In 30 seconds. In one minute. I can say every time. In, before, you have to read this in one hour to get the 30 minutes, 30 seconds, minute. Because uh, I say, John chapter 2, hold it there now. I'm coming. No, the level 2, hold it there now. At the end, we hold everything. Then you begin to take the consecration. You begin to drop the things you need to drop. And begin to pick the one. I'm happy doing what I'm doing now. I told somebody that there is a strategy. We can't spend this kind of amount. There is a strategy God gave us for the ministry. You people have been saying it. Maybe you we heard that I've been saying it. That you will let her tell somebody that I was in that meeting. That mama wants to give video has reached close to 2,005 persons. And yet, I don't think we're up to 20 in this place. The strategies are different. Less than 20 persons attend the meeting. Yet, it's blessed 30 seconds. I can't even imagine the kind of nations it has reached. 30 seconds. You told me that people are asking for the audio file. 30 seconds. We bought this camera since last year. Up to now, we have not done live stream. And I don't think we'll do any anytime soon. Because the instruction God gave us are different. That's why I say, hey, document the videos. God said to me, document those videos. We are just documenting, piling up. We are still going to buy 4 gig of hard drive just to store the videos. We have a YouTube channel. We have not post cough on it. Cough. Nobody have cough like beep. There is a strategy God released for you, for your generation. I'm not in it. We are my own People are asking, ah, we live stream. Ah, if we didn't live stream the program, we can faint. Faint. Faint now. We will wake you. There is a strategy. The only thing I need to know is what did God want us to do. That's why we started with, let's talk about it. Ah, thank God. That's one of the, thank God, they are not changing. Let's talk about it. In submission, let's talk about it. I think we are in that meeting. Let's talk about it. This meeting we did. It's because at that level, we just have the promise. We are still trying to get the process. What do you want, God? Let's talk about it. If you don't, let's talk about it. Remove it. If you'd like, say, hey, they didn't talk about it. It did not work. Thank you. God bless you. We are still in process. Well, whatever. Once I got the signal of what God wants us to do, our pillars, if you like, say that you are in the third heaven, God will blow trumpet in your ear that we should do concert. I will support you if God permits. You want to do concert, but not me. You won't see me there. We did three big boards for digital media training. Three big boards. Oh, Marco. Three big boards. Because let me help you. The peculiarity of your assignment, let me help you. 
The peculiarity of your assignment is that you are doing what God sent you to do. And at his best. The digital media we are doing, you can't imagine how much we are going to spend on for for the two weeks that they are going to be doing training and it's free. Because I knew that if God told Apostle Sema or whoever is doing conference to do conference, they can spend millions to do conference because God told them to do it. If God is telling me to train men in digital world, I should also be able to spend millions without feeling guilty. So that when I get to heaven, say, what do you do? You say, you say spirituality, faith, finance, and family life. Finance, what how do you do with finance? Say, we didn't empower people because people will talk about us that we do be bold with, with, uh, with training people. Hele. One of the reasons, let me help you. One of the ways you can go far in life is to first remove the factor of what people say. If that factor is there, you will not do anything in this life. What will people say? Oh, you are, hey, the second one that looks like what will people say is you are looking for people that will validate you. Hey, Moko, I'm the last person. See, sincerely, I am the last person looking for validation. If I validate you, you are putting you under pressure. Why? Why is this person doing like this? I don't need the validation of man. Once I check the heavenlies and I know that there is peace here, that, that's what God wants us to do. I'm back cozy. Be flying with red eyes. Let it be blinking God. God, 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 God. And say anything. It's zero. To work. Process. So, I say iso- season of isolation, right? At that phase, what do you receive? Did a season of what? At that phase, is the season of what? Process. Is it, this is one of the most difficult process. The most difficult... Everything you do, nobody will want to identify with you. At that phase of process. Ah! That phase like this. Almost everything you are doing for free. You almost be begging people to listen to you. Why? Because that is the season of training. The season of training. The season of isolation, you are receiving promises. Isolation. You are just God, God is just telling you, I'm going to take you to the hands of the heads. Then you begin to look. The people going to the ends of the head, how did they dress? The people going to the end of the head, how did they behave? The people going to the end of the head, what did they listen to? The people going to the end of the head, is their Yoruba like that? Is their English like that of Yoruba? Is the people going to the end of the head, how do they do whatever? You begin to sharpen your hammer. You begin to train yourself. You begin to position yourself for the promise. You begin to get set for the promise. So that any day when the promise arrives and God asks for Isaac, you still offer him. Ah. You still offer him any day, any time, because you have gone through the process. You have gone through the process of knowing how it means not to have anything. So is it when God has blessed with abundance? I don't think there's anything God can ask that point to now and say he wants, including the house. That God can point to now and say, son, I need the A with honor. We wear how do we And treasure is saying, about three bedroom flat. Our parents. I see. If God said, don't pick a pin, sincerely, I'll just wear my clothes. If God said, the car drop it too, I'll just, because, don't forget I said. The essence of our brokenness is that, is the key to usefulness and abundance. Eight merit. So, I should not have eight merit and miss heaven. I'm going to be a rich man. That is, that is not correct. So the reason why we have both Lazarus and the rich man in that equation is because the two of them did not do something balance. They didn't balance things. If, if the rich man had Lazarus, Evans reward in mind, who need Lazarus in that story? If Lazarus have the, the rich man's earth reward, earth merit in mind, who need the rich man in that story? Who won't? Then the season of rest. That is where reward begins to pump in. That is when the, the promise, in fact, that is when the promise is not being fulfilled. So, the season of isolation, we say you was, that is when you receive the, the promise. The season of training, that is when you, you go through. The season of rest, that is when you have the fulfillment of the promise. Praise God. Are we on the same page? Are we getting it? Is it simple enough? 
Okay, give me John and then we are going to pray on that. Give me, you are going to give me John now. So tomorrow we'll continue. Um, okay, yes. Give me John chapter 2 from verse uh, 1. John 2. So this one now we are considering what? Obedience and what? So the one I told you on that season. We are considering obedience. I said we, are, we break brokenness into two, right? We said what? The fear of God and what? Mm -mm. The fear of God, false flash. What is the fear of God? Or the mystery of? And then we say what? The second one, what? Obey his commandment, which is obedience and over. Victory over the spirit of death. Okay, perfect. We got it. So now, on that victory over the spirit of death, I was supposed to discuss three things. I was supposed to discuss number one, obedience, but I have not started, I have not discussed obedience. On that, after obedience, I was supposed to discuss time and seasons, which I already did here. Time and seasons. That was where I talk about the season of isolation, the season of, of uh, training, and then the season of rest. Do we get that? And under the season of rest, I said what? The season of rest, and that under the season of training, which is the season of process, I said, I wrote something here. I said, this is the connecting factor between the promise and its fulfillment. It is called process. I said, the longevity of this season is dependent on you and your process of growth. I come again. The longevity of this season, of this season of training, is dependent on you and your process of growth. So you can stay in the season of training till you die. <laughs> you can just stay there. You are just training. You are just in the wilderness. Trial. Because the Bible says in the book of Luke chapter 1 verse 80, it said the child remained in the desert and was strong in spirit, which is process. It said until the time of his appearance. So when God received a signal, the Bible says until the time of his appearance to Israel. That is the season of rest. So, as soon as he was in the desert, was he strong in spirit? Was he strong in spirit? Was he strong in spirit? When his spirit was robust enough, God sent him forth. But if he did not was strong enough in spirit, he will stay in the desert. He will remain there and he won't appear. Not you. Please, in this season, nobody may validate you. Nobody may say anything to you. Nobody may even know you. They will even call you. Do you know, I've entered places now. Before, I've entered places that they did hey, at the back. In fact, now even I carry to the front of places, it's like I'll be sitting on the edge till the meeting finish. I can't sit down. Because the intention is not that I want to be sitting in front of anywhere. I've been to meetings, sir, sir, with somebody, with another person. Me, at the, it at the back I was sitting. The person was in the front. Yet now I will go to the same places. I just knew it was a process. I, somebody sent me a message now, when I went to Voto. On, before this meeting starts, and send me a message on Facebook. I'm like, why you the one? Happy day to you. Why are you the one I saw at, at the police station? She obviously be like, ah, is he the one? Is he not the one? I've, you know, I've seen his people somewhere. Is it not this person? And we're friends on Facebook. And yet she didn't even know me. Then she's not sending me a message. Like, I, I saw you on the, I saw you in the pulling unit. Because I went there with nose marks. I was on no nose marks in the pulling unit. When I finished, they me say escape. No. He said, Why are you not the one I saw in the pulling unit? Whatever. Because now I can just be in shop right or something. I say, I know you. I know you. I say, okay. Ah, why are you not the one that brought the willows? I say, oh, oh yeah. Okay. Then I'm not one. In fact, anywhere I go now, self, it's like everybody know me. That is not the intention. It's just a signal that a season is appearing. It's just a signal, it's a feedback that a season is coming. Jesus, have you not read the story of Jesus? Jesus will tell them that, don't tell anybody. Who. Do you know why? It's because Jesus could not enter a city. What he merges with everywhere. So he could not enter. So he's not a celebrity lifestyle is that you are solving problem. And let me quickly help you. What, if you are running from it, you are the one saying that God should not lift you. Because from scripture, the first thing God sent abroad before you go and start solving problems is your fame. God begins to send your fame abroad. 
Send your fame abroad. People begin to say, do you, uh, do you know Pastor Jerry? He say, who is that? He say, you don't know Pastor Jerry? Ah, uh, you don't know Pastor Jerry? How come? They are everywhere, Pastor Jerry, Pastor Jerry. Then all of a sudden, you just get I say, I'm Pastor Jerry. Say, eh? You don't know my friend told me about? Ah, you don't look like it. I say, I, I, they used to tell me like that too. So fame, God begin to send your fame abroad. Don't say no at that level. It just means that a rest is coming. But you'll be foolish for God to see beckon on a, pro, on a process and you say, I'm in rest. I'm in rest too. That's what happened to Abraham. Abraham was so broken that when God asked for Isaac, it was not a challenge. <laughs> 25 years. God took 25 years to take Abraham to that face. 25 years. So during your times, your downtimes, your process, is because God is training you for a global face. Where when men come and say, hey, compromise, you love and say, just let me die. I know where God brought me from. Ah, I know where God brought me from. God did not just bring me to limelight from, from not going through the process. I went through the process. I don't want to go back to that life again. But if God asks for it, God take it. So you can ask it, take all of me. All of me. You have my everything. Take all of me. All of me, Lord. You have my everything. Take all of me. All of me, Lord. You have my everything. You have my everything. I give my everything. You have my everything. I give my everything. So take all of me. All of me, Lord. You have my everything. Take all of me. All of me, Lord. Can we just turn that to prayer for the next few minutes we have left? Friends, pray. 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 That God take all your everything. Then I'm going to take the last part to teach on knowing when to die. Friends, you can pray better. In just a few minutes you have left, you have to pray that. And then I'll take the last few minutes to communicate, know you went to die. Broke, broken, 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 broken. That you are broken. Friends, you can pray that better. Is that the best you are going? Mike Mudo says something. He said, God will not ask you for what you want to give. He will ask you for what you want to keep. God will ask you for what you want to keep. Is that the best you are praying, friends? Thank you, Jesus. For in Jesus' mighty name I will pray. You can't finish the prayer here. I'm certain about that. You can't. Ah, thank you, Jesus. Hmm. So, under obedience and victory over the spirit of death, I said there are three things we wanted to discuss, right? The first one is obedience. The second one is time and seasons, which I already communicated already, right? So under time and season, we say there are three seasons in a man's life, right? The season of what? Isolation, which is what? When you receive the... The season of what? 
which is what process and who determines that there's there are two things i say in that place that i need you to take note of please i said this is the connecting factor between the promise and its its, its fulfillment it is called process is the connecting factor between the promise and its fulfillment and then i said the longevity of this season is dependent on you and your growth process that's when we checked them um, look uh, the video that exodus 20 23 29 and 30 right okay in that place that was when god was saying that i will not give you this the city in the at once the less the white animals come and devour you so this one is testing your capacity that season is going to test your capacity give me now exodus 23 23 29 that season is testing your capacity, is testing what you can take, what you can't take. He said, well, I will not drive them out in a single year because the land will become desolate and what and wild animals too numerous for you. So it, once you have not grow, grown to a season where you can fight, you see there's a there's problem. You see you are small. In this season, you are small. I'm waiting for you to grow. Now look at the next verse, 30. In answer, 30 now says what? He said, little by little, I will drive them out before you until you have increased enough. When God gave you a promise, he went, he's waiting for you to increase. And I'm telling you, you are the one that will determine this phase. You are the one that will determine this phase in your life. This season. The, the longevity of this season, you will determine it. So in 20, 2020, God said, there's kingdom wealth transfer. I did not do anything. I was just praying. And I said that somebody just called me. I said, are you Jerry? I said, I'm the one. No. You see, 25 million. Take. 2017, I began to engage. I began to position myself for that word God said. I began to read books. I read um, Pathway to Wet. I was all reading books, you know, the, the Law of Prosperity. I was reading all those books, getting instruction, positioning myself. God began to give me instruction about spending. This is how you spend this money when it comes. This is how you spend this. And that's why it's not only difficult for me to spend money because I already received instruction of how the monies are going to be spent. It's easier. So me and my wife say, okay, this is what God said we are going to do about this. Okay, this is what he said. This is what he said. Oh, this is what he said. The money did not show. There was no money. And yet, we already have received instruction. Why? That is the phase of process. Training. We are positioning ourselves for when the money will come. So God told you that are going to, he will kill you. Because the Bible says the prosperity of kids, the prosperity of fools will destroy them. A fool is somebody that is morally deficient. According to the scripture. It is simple enough. Everything God has said concerning you, we, it will come to fruition. Hallelujah. Now, this means, can you pray in the Holy Ghost just a few minutes? So we can take this one as quickly as we can. For in Jesus' mighty name, I will pray. So we said there is obedience. That obedience will take it tomorrow. Time is not by our side. We we'll had it to because it actually goes with the fear of God. So that's why I want obedience to flow in that direction. So we have under the second part, which is obedience and victory over the spirit of death. We have um, we have obedience. We have time and seasons, and then we have knowing when to die. And that's why I say I'm surprised that this is. I'm actually supposed to teach the mystery of death <laughs> before I come to this knowing when to die. But God said I should take this class today. It will bless you. This is scripture, actually, everything is scripture. All of us are looking at the scripture together. That ah, because. All of us are supposed to know when to die. All of us. Okay, let's start. John chapter 13, verse 1. So I'm going to give us biblical characters that knew, uh, that knew when they die. All. In the Bible, all of us will read, read this together. So I'm going to read the story of Jesus, Peter, Paul, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Moses, and David. Ah, that was David. Ah. That of David interests me a lot. So we end on that of David. It's going to be very fast. There's no too much to in this. 
Genesis, um, John 13, 1. The next scripture is, um, okay, let me just give the scripture. For Jesus' own, um, John 13, 1, John 7, 30, and John 8, 30. So, I can be faster. I don't want us to exceed seven here. John 13, 1, John 7, 30, John 8, 20. For Peter's own, Second Peter chapter, so people can be writing it down. So when we get there, it's just Second Peter chapter one verse thirteen to fifteen. So we are just going to be reading those scriptures when we get there. I come again. Jesus, knowing when to die. Jesus as a case study. John thirteen one, John seven thirty, John eight twenty. Peter, Second Peter one thirteen to fifteen. Paul, Second Timothy chapter four verse six. Abraham, Genesis chapter 24, verse 1. And then Genesis 25, verse 1 to, to 6. Isaac, Genesis 27, verse 1 to, to verse 1 and 2. Jacob, Genesis 49. Moses, Deuteronomy. Yes. Deuteronomy 32, 48 to 52. Deuteronomy 32, 48 to 52. David, 1 Kings chapter 2, verse 1 and 2, and the Acts of Apostles 13, 36. That's where we end. All right, let's begin. Can we read Jesus, right? All right, let's go. He said, it was just before the Passover feast, Jesus knew that the time, to, the time had come for him to... Are we to... Let's read now. It was what? Let's read together. It was just time... It was just before the Passover feast. Jesus knew that the time had come for him to what? Jesus did what? Jesus knew that the time had come for him to leave this world. Knowing when to die. Because brokenness actually also implies death. And that's why I said we have to do the mystery of death. Ah, we have to do that. But part of it is also, part of the things we also need to know is to know when to die physically. When you are broken, you will know. You will know when to die. Ah, you will know. So Jesus knew. What, how did Jesus knew? Because there were attempts on his life to kill him. That was what John 7.30 and John 8.20 is saying. John 7.30 now. John 7.30, sir. John 7.30. Can we read this together? At this they tried to seize who? But no one lay a hand on him because time had not yet so they were making attempts on Jesus' life. Look at this now. They were making attempts on his life, but the Bible says no one could lay a hand on him. No one could lay a hand on him because his time has not come. I pray for you. You will not die prematurely. Amen. Let me start for that scripture that says, I shall not die but live to declare the works of the Lord. I've seen it in that scripture. Because that is my uncle's scripture, but I didn't, I didn't document it here. I shall not die but live. I think that is the first thing we need to take note of. But I pray for you in the name of Jesus. You won't die untimely. Yeah. Ah. See, long life is dying when you are supposed to die. Oh, be not Jesus live long. <laughs> because the time frame they gave him was the time he was supposed to die. Yeah. Have we gotten that? Oh, perfect. Can we read this together? Are we not? But and we what the Lord does. Give me this in KJV. And that is where I came up with witnesses don't die. How can the fire of God come down from heaven in Job? Witnesses don't die. Once there is no witness, the case is over. And yet the Bible says in the book of Acts of Apostles 14 verse 17, he said God has not left himself without a witness. In Hebrews, the Bible says God bearing witness with them. So, God himself was bearing witness by their hand with signs and wonders that follow according to the will of God. So, the Bible is saying that we shall not die, nevertheless, he shall not let himself without a witness. Yes, okay, yes, according to the will of God, yes. Now, take me to that psalm. Thank you, sir. Ah, let's celebrate, Pastor Sammy. Let's celebrate, Pastor Sammy. He said, I will not what, but, and we proclaim what the Lord has done. 
And we proclaim. So that means you are a witness. See, let me help you. You will not die in process. Ah, you didn't get that. You will not die in process. Do you know there will never be an Abraham story if he didn't born Isaac? He gave back to Ishmael quite all right. Ah, your effort will not be wasted. Amen. See, the purpose why you came to the head must stand. That's why brokenness, that's why will you put usefulness in it. Brokenness is the key to usefulness and abundance, earth merit, and heaven's reward. That's why we end with, with David's story. I shall not die. I don't know about you. I shall not die. Listen to me, Psalma. Everything God tells you that you are going to be and do, please stay alive to do it. But one of the key you will need is obedience. Once you are in disobedience, the first person that is against you is God. And that is why you will see that people come, you, are, you do not know when the person is in disobedience, but you knew when they told you the promise. Ah. You did not know when the person entered disobedience, but you were there when he told you the promise. And that's why you cannot come and say, Ah, Sebi said that God will take him to the end of the earth. Ah, ah, he died at the age of 12. Wait. When people are in disobedience, they don't tell you. Hope you know that it is the people of the outside world. Our Lama, Pejuna, was against God. People were seeing him as prophet. Ah. When Jonah was thrown into the belly of this fish, even though because he repents, he will have, he will have gone, and they will not say, mm? "Jonah, ah, ah, Jonah, ah, 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 mm? not me." Do, because sometimes you are too sympathetic with people that even your brain enter. That nobody, no, anybody can die now. That a seemingly righteous person die untimely. You are not in the equation, you, you are not in heaven when they were giving him time limit for what he will do. So maybe he was supposed to do that thing in, in 10 years. He started when the process was already in nine years, in the ninth year. So he just used one year to come and show up and disappear. And I say, ah, the guy is promising. And that's why me, you, you understand. I say, my mother said something. He said, there is nothing that beats a man that knows what to do next. Nothing beats a man that knows what to do next. So you should also know the seasons you are in. If you are in the season of isolation, if you are in the season of fulfillment, when you have finished your assignment, kill every man, say that, kill and walk Long life is living your days. But there is another clause that God can add yes to your yes. Another person that also knew when he was supposed to die was Ezekiah. Ezekiah was not a prophet, yet God sent the prophet to go and tell him. He said, put your house in order. For you will soon die. And Ezekiel engaged another mystery, which is the mystery of sacrifice. He said, I sacrifice all to build your house. I put this in place. I put him. He said, go and say, go and tell him. But don't only go and tell him. Go and tell him that I'm going to confirm it with a sign. And I'm going to add 15 more years to his years. If you are broken enough and you have God's ear, Years can be added to your years. Because you will know. It's not as if you die accidentally and say, Hey, Omo Tukui say, I have no shock. Then you now appear in heaven because you say, No. You will know. Then you will know. Okay, let me ask you a question. What does it cost God to tell you that, son, you are coming home? Just imagine that I just carry you home. I say, Omo Tukui say, Omo Tukui say, Omo Tukui say, he said that the defense not like this. He said, God, I need the defense more, but only. Just imagine that that is how God is doing to you. Because the Bible told us in Acts of Apostles 13 to 36, the Bible says, and after David had finished serving the purpose of God for his generation, he was not. That is how you will die. Amen. When you are finished, and I told us, I said, just imagine that my is Muro. Say, mm, when I clock 60, I'll start writing books. 
Mm, just imagine. That my spirit just say, mm, Timbati was 60. Ah, that spirit of leadership, in Kokoko, you know. Timba was 70. Mm. He was arrested with uh, a change. What is the last book he wrote? Be fearing for a change or something like that. Pastor said, me in my Roman. Huh? Passing it on. Passing it on. Passing it on. Let me help you. 2007, if I'm not incorrect, somebody came to me in my local church. 2007. And said that he saw that I died. Now, you see, when you tell people things, always remember. Because the guy later went and was telling the story up and down later on. Well, don't even allow us going to that story. But he said that he saw he, that I died. That when they opened the thing, that it was me that was there. <laughs> and I was laughing. You see, I've seen many things in this life. Do you know why I was laughing? Because I was in the retreat 2000 and no, I think it's 2000 no, I think it's 2010 he told me that. But I was in redemption camp 2000 and is it 2008 or 2007 or thereabouts. When God told me the person whose mantle I will work under. And at that time, the person, the person is still alive. So that you all of you will know that, ah, Pastor Jerry, I've been studying ministry. Wait. You are not in ministry. me are you that do ministry. God already gave me a template. And he says that the anointing on this person. So that's why I say when people are, when candles are blowing off, it's because another candle is lighting another. You will not understand what this I'm saying. No problem. No problem. We will understand later. I said that the person that will hand over to me is still alive. He said, I will not go to everyone and say, Most I come in full and dead. Because I know the song, Most I go and empty and dead. I can't die. The person that they say I will, that the, is, um, is not my thought. It was God that told me. He said, This person, once he die, you know you, your ministry will start. Hope you know that a number of persons are dying in the body. That is when the younger that is why the younger generation are having voices. But just imagine the year that I'm talking about. That was when God told me. Another one that God told me was Pastor Bayo. I didn't say that when Pastor Bayo died, because how many how would he why will he die? Another person was Pastor Bayo. I was in Kunende, I was standing behind. God said, if you honor this guy. That one was 2010. I can't forget that one. 2010. He said, if you honor this guy, any result you have, you will have it. And there was scriptural backup. 2010. I gave my life to the guy. 2006. 2010. Huh? Look at that. Now that was four years. And yet, they did, nobody taught me about spiritual father. Nobody. It was God that told me, submit to this guy. Anything I give him, I will give you. I was telling about some yesterday now. I said, even me, I shall know I will be rich. What I will do, I don't know. But as soon as I saw Pastor Bayer was rich, I was so confident. Because I wasn't the one that told myself. It was God that told me that anything I did for him, I will do for you. And then when I saw that's why any breakthrough is happening, I'm always joyous. I'm happy. As he went to Canada, I was like, oh, I said, take Canada in the next place. But I know my husband is in this city, don't fear. But if the portals of Canada are open to him, nobody can deny my visa. It's, with the, it's, it's God that said, there's no me. So if for any reason I apply to Canada to go and just relax with a the lion, they can't say no. Because I already have a witness in that city. So when Pastor was rich, I was so joyous. Ah, when he was buying car, push button, I was so happy. So they will ask you, what do you do? I say, I don't know what I'll do, but I'll have money. <laughs> I don't know. My wife said that I'll have money. Why? Because God told me. So when the person told me, I did not opt it tomorrow. I have not prayed about the, the dream he had. Uh, as far as I know, I said, well, which I can't even remember the year. I opt it tomorrow. I have not prayed. In fact, I did not. I, I think this person, I think maybe it was just here now. You know, if I'm afraid, I'll say, Pastor because he's, once I have prayer, his prayer partner, Pastor he's praying you. 
Don't eat. Oh. You, I know you know how to do marathon. Please, seven days. Oh. Please, oh, go seven days. Oh. Monday. Why? Do you know why I'm teaching you this? If you don't have a purpose, you are qualified to die. But if God has given you a promise, my friend, he said, I shall not die but live to declare what the Lord has done. What has God done for you that you are dying? Uh-uh. What, what have you declared? Ah, the Igboni village, Kotoa Kan City, Kotoa Kan Mission, Oh, little Lord, go back where I here. You can't go anywhere. You are not going anywhere. I'm telling you now, you are not going anywhere. We have not had what the Lord has done for you. Where are you going? He said, I shall not die, but live to declare what the Lord has done. And the Bible says that De- David, after he has served the purpose of God, he has served, you have not even served poor, you don't talk about poor or you don't want to die. Why? So, this has been my confidence for years. The man is still alive, kicking. He never died. Where are they go? Where are they go? I say, where are they go? Ah. You won't come to the academy, you won't know. No. Ah, I must go to where I know. I don't know about you, but me, I can't die. But live to declare what the Lord has done. They will not declare on my behalf. Now, me go share my testimony myself. I will tell people what the Lord has done. They came at Jesus to seize him. The Bible said nobody could lay a hand on him. Because it was not his time. I know when to die. And that's why I started with that Jesus' song. So I even say, hey, Jesus knew when to die. Even Jesus that came to die, he knew when to die. He didn't know when to die anyhow. Oh, you know the assignment of Jesus was to die. Ah. The assignment of Jesus was to come to the earth to die. So even Jesus that was to come and die, which was his purpose, he didn't just die any day. He didn't just die anyhow. He still knew when to die. I'm stressing this too much, right? The other part too is there like that. Let's go to Peter's own. Second Peter 1, 13, and 14, 13 to 15. And don't allow us to leave this. Because he's still saying the same thing. Nobody could lay a hand on him. That's why I give us the scriptures ahead. Yes, he said, I think it is right to refresh your memory as long as I live in the, in the tent of this body. Yes. He said, because I know that I will soon set it apart. As me, this very scripture end, would I not say, no, he's just saying that he should die anytime soon. Mm-mm. He said, as our Lord Jesus Christ has made it clear to me. Jesus literally told him, he, take another translation. Ah, I think there's one translation I wrote down. Oh, is it MSG? Ah, MSG, by one to my family, say story in the Bible to the long and pass or something. Uh, <laughs> he said, even as our Lord Jesus Christ has shown me. You understand? Peter, this is Peter. So Peter, <laughs> Peter said, but the Lord, the Lord Jesus Christ, he <laughs> bola and that is the part I'm looking for. Where, which part? Where is it? Okay. I know that I'm to die soon. The master has made that quite clear to me. Yes, MSG. He said, I know Peter, Peter, Peter. Peter that they beheld, they, they did, they crucified him outside like Jesus. Soon. He was being informed. Jesus came and tell him that you will soon die. Put your house in order. So he, in, verse four, in verse 13, he was not telling them that before I die, before I check out of this tent, I want to tell you people some things. Because the reason why I'm saying is because I will soon die, as the master has told me. As he has made it clear to me. He don't show me, say, son, your time is up. Which kind of fellowship are you having with God that God cannot tell you crucial things that involve your life? I don't even understand. That you wake up, you pray in the Holy Ghost that day, and left home and die on that trailer. Not me. We kind of fellowship is that? And that's why, please, this teaching is very crucial. It all boils down to obedience. Because there was one thing, oh God, I just wish there's time. Oh. There's something I said under obedience. I said the first thing to do in obeying God is to sharpen your hearing. 
I said, because if you miss the hearings of God, there will, there's going to be a challenge when God is sending warnings to you. Because the warnings God will communicate, He will communicate in your spirit. Are we getting it? Let's go to Paul. Um, Paul. Second, um, Second Timothy chapter 4, verse 16. Are we getting this thing? Is it simple? That obedience part, Edwema means class in Lola. If you can, if I don't, I can't promise you that I will give you the tape. But Emma me say, yes, let me fast. Oh God. Oh Jesus. Message is in Basso. Second Timothy, you know. I said, be imagining that you are Hollandia you on your phone. Second Timothy, chapter 4, verse 16. Now. Is it Pastor, is Pastor is not there again? Ah. Four six now. Nah? Four six. You didn't put it in schedule before. It does disappear. Four six. Ah, oh, oh. All right, can we read this together? He said, For I am already being poured out like a. And the time has come for me to. Yeah? This is Paul talking. Even Paul knew. And that's why he now said, I fought the fight. I finished the course. Ah! You, lay, lay. you won't die prematurely. Yeah. Give me that part where he said, I, f- I fought the fight. I finished the clinical. Now I'm ready to go and collect the crown of some, something. It should still be this for now. I have fought the good fight of faith. I have finished the course. Yes. He said, I have fought the good fight of I have finished the race. I have kept the face. Look at what he says is in store for him. Next verse. He said, now there is in store for me the crown of righteousness. I showed us the crown of life the other time now. So, he said, the crown of righteousness with the Lord, the righteous judge, we award to me on that day, and not only to me, but also to all who have longed for his appearing. I have, see, me, I will finish the course. I will finish my race. I will finish my course. Marty finished by extra time. Also, what? Don't know when to die. Yo. That is one of your duties as a believer, knowing when to die. Because say brokenness have to do with death. That doesn't mean you should die anyhow. That's why I say I'm going to teach on the mystery of death. But when it comes to physical death, Sister Wanda, don't die on that trailer. See that man. Know when to die. Don't show course with the news. Know when to die. So you should not be afraid of the your, your driver is driving. Let him drive. Let him drive. That doesn't mean your driver should be reckless and say, drive, I'll finish my course. No. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. But spirit don't die. Don't just have everyone's reward or only eight merits you can have both our time will not permit us to read further but let's read that of moses moses the jeremy 32 48 the jeremy 32 48 time has gone and that person i wanted us to read was david but time has gone you see on that same day the lord told moses yes look at it the lord told moses he said go up into the range of this, 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 Lord. Yes, next verse. He said, there on the mountain that you will climb, you will die. Eh? See one that he prays that, ah. <laughs> that is the relationship you can have with God. The story is endless. It's long. God said, go to that mountain. Go and die there. So that means that there is also a format to die. You can choose it. Ah, oh. Do you know if they cut the head of Jesus, Jesus died wrongly. He was supposed to die on tree. Those are the prophecies that were given concerning him. I say you will not die anyhow. Yeah. You will not die by the hand of sickness. Yeah. Plain cannot kill you. Yeah. There's confession I used to do every morning. The Bible says in the book of Proverbs, Proverbs 10 verse 16, he said the wealth of the righteous bring them life. I say I can't die by the hand of my car. No, they dragged me out of the car. 
I bought it with my money. I can't die by the hand of the car. I can't die by the hand of my car, my house. The, the house cannot collapse on me. You can't catch fire. Why? The Bible said, the, why? Because the Bible said, the wages of the righteous bring them life. Everything that I buy with my money only bring me life. I can't book a plane and the plane will crash. It's my money that is part of it. It's life is supposed to bring to me. Uh, show me that proverb. He said, the wages of the righteous bring them life. My income bring me life. I can't buy something that will kill me. I can't. I can't buy food, no matter how poisonous it is. I can't buy food and I'll die by, the, by, the, by eating the food. Because my income is supposed to bring me life. No, I can't die. I will live. I will see what God has done. Now, out of Apostle 13, 36, as we are all standing, so we, give, so we can go. 13, 36. So we have under broken, we have two main subtitles. Number one, the fear of the Lord, the mystery of death, right? Number two, obedience and victory over the spirit of death, which is what? Obeying his commandments, right? He said, for when James Jeremiah had served God's purpose for his generation. Ah, when James Jeremiah had served the purpose of God for his generation. Then he was not. Then I fall asleep. Can you pray in the name of Jesus that you're not down timely? I say pray for yourself. It's not me you're praying for. I will not die on timely. Uh -uh, friends, you can do this better. I don't know who this is for, but please go over those scriptures again. Untimely death cannot be your lot. Thank you, Jesus. For in Jesus' mighty name have we prayed. So sorry we had to shoot a bit above time. God is our multiplied strength in Jesus' name. So we'll meet tomorrow again. Let's take our confession. There are some prayers you can go and complete at home. But I know, I know that we have done justice to what God put in my spirit for us to do. Praise God. Please don't die. Oh. Say, I shall not die. Right, let's start with that. I shall not die. But live. To proclaim what the Lord has done. Hey, that scripture is powerful. I said not that. But live. See, if you don't have confession, you can be choosing that as confession. Psalm 118 verse uh, 17, right? And um, Acts of Apostles 13, 36. Another one also confesses Deuteronomy 34 verse 7. He say, and uh, the answer of James Jeremiah, we were stronger and stronger. He say, the answer of James Jeremiah was stronger and stronger, and yet, yet our eyes are not dim. No, it's a natural force abated. So that scripture, I confess it. Because there was one man, Isaac, the Bible says his own eyes was dim when he wanted to die. That's why he, didn't, he couldn't differentiate between Esau and Isaac and Jacob. So praise God. I have the spirit of wisdom and revelation. I know God better. I'm not kept in the dark in any area of my life. But I've been delivered from the kingdom of darkness and translated by light. And translated by light. Into the kingdom of God's dear son. The eyes of understanding has been enlightened. I'm reinforced and strengthened with might by the Holy Ghost in my inner man. My understanding can be darkened. My understanding can be darkened. I'm delivered from error. I'm delivered from terror. The sun cannot mean by day. The moon cannot mean by night. My coming in and my going out is blessed. My coming here, am I going out? Is blessed. Now, I'm forevermore. Therefore, my spirit, soul, and body is preserved, equipped, prepared, and empowered for revival. Until you come up our Lord Jesus Christ. Can you go up with a shout of praise? God is our multiplied strength in Jesus' name. See you tomorrow, 4 p.m. Let's try and invite people too. God bless us.
1 Corinthians 9, 27 says, I beat my body and I make it my slave. I need you to really practicalize that. Now, can you beat your body in the name of Jesus? We are taking broken. So beat your body and say, I make it my slave. I beat my body, I make it my slave. That after I've done everything to save others, or after I've er enjoyed the merit of the hurt, that I will not miss heaven. In the name of Jesus. Broken, broken. I beat my body, I make it my slave. I beat my body and I put it under. I beat my body and I put it under. Abara kefene kesunai. Jebra ko sote melende soneske. Thank you, Jesus. For in Jesus' mighty name have we pray. Ephesians 1 17, the Bible says that we have the spirit of wisdom and revelation. I want to pray in the name of Jesus the Father. Give us the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of you today. The spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of you. In the name of Jesus. The spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of you. That we will know you better. You can do that better, friends. That the eyes of understanding is enlightened. That you know the hope to which he has called you. The riches of your glory and inheritance as a Christian. Let me bring the hand head. Pray, friends. You can pray better. Pray, pray, pray. For in Jesus' mighty name, I will pray. For in Jesus' mighty name, I will pray. Hallelujah. Um, Pastor Sammy, remind me after the meeting that we need to walk on the rug. Just remind me, after the meeting, that we need to walk on the rug. Hallelujah. Praise God. How have it been? Mr. Shegun, you are welcome again. So nice seeing you again. Auntie Joyce, how now? How is, um, is your daughter? Yeah. Star something. How is checking point? So nice seeing you again. Glory to God. You can have a seat, man. Wow. How many of us are enjoying the teaching that we started yesterday already? The, today, the, no, today, I will not use the of today to be telling you about yesterday's meeting. No, no. I discovered I made a mistake doing what is love. I used it to try and explain everything that we did. So today, just connect with the spirit, flash back to tomorrow, yesterday, and fly. And then the teachings are, are separated in such a way that if you didn't attend yesterday's one, the only thing you will miss is you will miss the meeting. But you'll be able to learn today and continue like that. Obio, ah, ah, how now? How is that supposed to be? It should be fine, Abi. Okay. Glory. It. Okay, it's not the one. Okay, you said it's not the one. You got supposed to be, was it? Okay, sorry. Glory to God. Wow. Okay, for the purpose of this, let's just read our anchor scripture so that they will pick it from there. Our anchor scripture, that is Matthew chapter 19, verse ah, 14, verse 19 and 20. And then um, Matthew 15, 36 and 17. And then Matthew 26, 26. And then Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 13. So, very quickly now, fast for me. Let's be fast. Uh, okay. The Bible says that in uh, Matthew 14, verse 19 and 20, the Bible says Jesus took the bread. <laughs> Let's pray for Pastor Sammy. <laughs> All right, praise God. The Bible says, and he directed the people to what? To sit down on the grass, taking the five loaves and the two fish, and looking up. Who said fishes? It's not fishes, though. Can't take two fishes. 
If we all of us did agriculture now, if they are the same species, no matter how many they are, it's fish. As me, you now take titus and then shark. That is two fishes. They are not the same species. But if they are the same species, no matter, even if they are one million, it's fish. They will get it. So that's why you say he took two fish. It's correct. Hallelujah. So, and two fish. And looking up to heaven, he gave thanks and did what? And broke the loaves. And broke the loaves. We are taking, we are doing broken, right? He said, then he gave them to the disciples, and the disciples gave them to the people. So yesterday we established that God will never deliver an unbroken vessel to a generation. Jesus wanted to feed people, and they gave him bread, and Jesus broke the bread. It was after the bread was broken that he delivered it to his disciples, and then his disciples in turn delivered it to the people. And then we connected that with Ephesians, right? Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11, right? We said what? We said what? That God has given, God has planted in the church first the apostles, yes, then the what? The prophets, then the evangelists, and then teachers and pastors. We said to prepare the body of Christ, right? To prepare the saints, right? We said to prepare God's people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up, may be built up, rather. So we said being built up there is satisfied. Because the Bible tells us in verse 20 of that same scripture that we read of, of Matthew 14, that what? He said, and they gave it to you, and they ate, and they were satisfied. So we said God is delivering apostles, um, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers to prepare God's people. Hallelujah. To prepare God's people. So God will never deliver an unbroken vessel to a generation. And then the aim of our teaching was that what? was that brokenness is the key to what? To usefulness and abundance. Eight merit and everyone's reward. Praise God. So we now went to um, Matthew 26, 26, where we show Jesus, right? The Bible says Jesus. He said, why they were eating? Jesus took the bread. Matthew 26, 26. He said, Jesus took the bread and broke it. And gave it to his disciples and said unto them, Take and eat, this is my body. So, including Jesus, could not be delivered to a generation without being broken. He now went further and said, Okay, do this in remembrance of me. I said, The only way you can remember Jesus is when you are also broken. So, when he said, Do this in remembrance of me, is that you are also broken. So, and I said that you can come to God unbroken, but you can't remain the same. The bread they gave Jesus came unbroken. After he spent some time with Jesus, it was broken. And then it was delivered to the disciples. We in turn delivered it to the people. And the Bible says, after that encounter in Matthew 14, the Bible says that they gathered 12 baskets full. It was an individual bread that came, five loaves, right? We, say, we saw it now, five loaves of bread. But when they were gathering, they were not gathering loaves, they were gathering baskets. So I say you can come to God as a person. But when God is sending you back, he sends you back as a nation. He can send you back as a church. He can send you back as a family. So they know your family that, oh, the Umar, right? The Umar family, oh, those guys are brilliant. Jesus, you can literally talk Jesus through them. So one person, which is, the, uh, which is daddy, was the one that went to Jesus. But when he was coming back, he released a family. You can see that man. Just like um, the Oedipos are doing now. Take for instance now, um, Revival Flame, what's the name of that? Revival Flame, right? Pastor Isaac. Pastor Isaac, um, Oedipo, I love what he's coming up with. I love the dimension God is using from. He's not, he's, you don't understand. Obviously, maybe he told his dad that God has a calling for him. He left the U.S. and came back to, 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 to Nigeria. And then he's not leverage. oh God, I love what Bishop Oedipo is doing. Listen to me. See, every man is sent as a basket full. So the guy I've seen that his father has been sent as a basket food for, 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 for prosperity and, and, and faith. But he is coming as a revival flame. It will not be a mistake if Bishop not decide to cage him to be preaching the message of faith. 
Now, have you seen those, 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 the picture of those, those crusades, those, those revivers? Let me help you. You see. One reason why you be like, ah, the man died, the ministry died, is because the ministry is tied to the man. If you check the body of Christ, there have not been successful transition, especially if the parents want the children to continue what they started. Because each man is sent to a basket full. Each man is sent to a generation. Once your generation is gone with that message, another generation will not come. And that's why it appears like the body of Christ, they will gather plenty of people today, and then after some time, they want to look for another person to follow, and then they will gather every ministry. Let me, let me help you. Every ministry, especially the ones that are visionaries, the ones that are founders. I'm not talking about Orthodox churches. Though. Orthodox churches, Equa, for example, let the best pastor die. Equa will still be told Equa. I don't know if you get it. But take, for instance, churches, ministries that are coming up now. If the founder die, that ministry will end. It's not prophecy, it's just the peculiarity. Just imagine all the people you are looking at, all, all the men of God, all, just imagine all the men of God in Nigeria that you know. Let me quickly help you. Once the founder of that ministry die, the assignment is sent to the generation end. Men will now begin to look for another person. All people will know, wait. All people will know that there's somebody that has taken, taken over from, um, what is the name of this man? This evangelist, Christ to all nation. Riyad Bonki. If not, because, if not so, that some of you know the man, if I ask you to take over from Riyad Bonki, you won't know. But Christ for all nation is still moving on because it's a vision. But the peculiarity, the dimension of which, by which Briad Bonke is dispensing that thing, he has gone with him. Obi know that the name Bonke is an household name. Many of us, did not, even though we call study, we do not even know that there is anything called Christ for nation. But once they bonk him, ball, ah, everybody, including the villagers, they know that an evangelist is coming. So, the peculiarity of each basket is not the same. And the reason why I'm saying this is because I established yesterday, I said it is the peculiarity of your assignments that determine the consecration of your brokenness. The peculiarity of your assignment is the one that God will use to wire you for your own brokenness. So, the baskets, the broken baskets are 12 basket but they are not the same brokenness inside so the peculiarity of the assignment is the way they were being broken inside so if i'm broken to a generation god may say son till you die you will not drink coke and then i give back to a son that love coke his name is aka coke the peculiarity of his own assignment might be in the twelfth basket. Why am I in the first? So if I'm trying to cage my son to be broken in the line of my assignment, he will not fulfill purpose. And yet he will struggle to fit in into my shoe. Why? Because his own consecration is in the twelfth basket. The twelfth basket might be that they should be doing dreadlock. So because I'm doing skin, I say, my son, this is the theology of Jesus Christ. You can't be drinking red love. You must not drink Coke. As soon as I said that, the doctor said, oh, Coke. As soon as you said, oh, it was Coke that was, that was in the hair. Are we getting it? So the brokenness were not classified into 12 baskets, each with its own uniqueness. So you can come as an individual, just five loaves, came as an individual loaf, but by the time Jesus was breaking it and giving it to the disciples, the Bible said when he was arranging the broken pieces, when, when they were done, they packed 12 broken baskets. So you can come as an individual. Pastor, uh, two persons, you are welcome, sir. You can come as an individual, but when God is breaking you, you will go back as a nation, as a family, as a church, and then as a community, even as a town, as a city, as a continent, as a nation. 
Because I don't want to do the mass. Five loaves, 12 basket full. So we say, we said yesterday that brokenness is the key to usefulness and abundance. So, and I said in this kingdom, there is no, Miss Debbie, you are welcome. I say in this kingdom, there is no system, there is no structure of multiplicity and growth without brokenness. The secret to increase is to be broken. That was what Jesus engaged. He broke it and gave it to them. The Ecclesiastes, which is where we now divided the class into two, right? Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 13. And I said it. I said that when I gave my life to Christ, I found this scripture early. The Bible says that the whole work of man is summarized into two. Fear the Lord and obey his commandments. So I knew that the summary of my Christian journey is to... my life to Christ, I knew what it means to be born again. It just means you don't have a life. It means that anything that God wants is what you want. It means that anything that God says is what you, what you say. So early in life, I already knew it. So all the things I've ever told you, all the story I've ever told you that God said I should live here, I left. God said I should do this, I live. Because I knew that there is no peace outside it. So it was easy for me. When you don't have peace, how will you sleep? When you don't have peace, you can't make any decision. When you don't have peace, you can't move. So I knew early that the best way me and God will be on the same page is to obey him. Anything he says. And I said the first key to obeying God is that you must be able to hear God. So, but we didn't do that obedience. To, today we'll do it. We were supposed to do that obedience yesterday, but we couldn't, right? That was when we now did timing and seasons. And then we did what? Knowing when to die. Because anything that has to do with broken, brokenness has to do with death. For you to be broken, you must die. But when you want to die, there is the first part of the death. And then for the physical death, I say it's, it's not correct that, that you, 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 you die without knowing. It's not scriptural. That you just left your house that day. All of a sudden, you just saw yourself in heaven. The next minute. It's not correct. Because just imagine, let me help you. Just imagine that Isaac, Isaac, now I'm going to explain to you. Because you must understand this thing. We started with duty code of the blessed since last year, right? How many of you are in that, in that teaching? Duty code of the blessed, we started since last year. There is the blessing that must be, and that is what I'm trying to explain this to you. Because I told you in 2007 or thereabout, that somebody saw me and said that he saw that I died, right? What did I tell him? I said, it's not possible. Why? Because even the person that will pass the blessing down to me is still alive. Just imagine that Isaac died without passing the blessing over to Jacob. Mm. Okay, we are thinking about it together. Right? Abraham had the blessing. Abraham could not die without passing it to Isaac. Isaac knew that he was about to die. He would not call his son and say, let me also pass the blessing over to you. Because when Isaac, when Abraham wanted to die, he gave gifts to the sons of his concubine and gave the blessing to Isaac. How you will know, let me explain. How you will know what I'm talking about is when Isaac gave the blessing to Jacob, Esau came back and said he should bless him too. He said, I have given it to him. Hardly. So that means the blessing was almost like, it's like a baton that somebody passed over to another. He said, I have given the blessing to your brother and truly his blessing. He said, anybody that cursed him will be cursed. Anybody that blessed him will be blessed. Anybody that blessed him will be blessed. He now went further. He now said, he now, he now said, please, is there no anything left of the blessing that you can give me? He said, I've given you everything to your brother. 27 verse 40. He said, so you will live by the sword and serve your brother. He said, but when you grow restless, you shall break off the yoke from off his neck. So Esau was, because what did he mean that it has finished? Ah, it's not just words. That is why I'm telling you that if I say you are blessed, I'm telling you I mean what I'm saying. I don't use the word God bless you anyhow. I cannot say, ah, God, thank you. 
God. But in during my birthday, or you send a message to me, or you do anything, if I send God bless you, it's okay. See, don't go and roll. Because I know what it means to say God bless. I don't use it anyhow. I don't say God bless you to a drunkard. He will be blessed drinking. No, I'm telling you. So I saw this revelation early that blessing can finish. Uh, Pastor Me helped me look at that. So he wept to him. Who was it then that wanted the game and brought it to me? I ate it just before you came and I blessed him. And indeed, he will be blessed. Wait. Let me, let me chip in this now. This is where the mystery of giving gifts to men of God comes about. Because you see, sometimes when I read the scripture, I'm just waiting. How will you say that your son, you want to pass blessing to him? You now ask your son to go and hunt and bring gifts so that your heart can marry and bless him. Your, your son, no. Can't you just say, God bless you? Because there is something that prepares the blessing, it's coming from the heart. There is a God bless you that I can give you from my mouth. That even me, I know it won't do anything. But any blessing that comes from the heart, aleko, mafrakeno. Because he says something, he says so that my heart can marry and I can bless you. It's merriness that allows the propensity of the blessing to come out. So when you give gifts, when you serve men of God, there, there is a brokenness in their heart and say, ah, oh, she Mambo. Mambo. You are blessed. Mark it. That is the only thing I always want to hear from men of God. It's enough for me. That is why my wife has always said it and I love it. When you want to honor people, please make sure that you are not honoring them in your way. You are honoring them in the way they will see that you are honoring them. There are honors you give people that is dishonor. They may say they are blessing you, but they are weeping in their hearts. It won't bring anything. I'm the one telling you. So that's why when we want to invite people, we go and study how their churches, how their members react, how they communicate with them, what they understand as honor. Because you can be doing it in your own way and it's dishonor to them. So take for instance now, we discover that, may take for instance, more brought um, past Apostumuiwa. Me, I attend CRC too, so I understand. So that's why when I was doing the training, I told every person that I volunteers, I said, if they point to you, what should you do? Stand, because that is the way we saw it in their church. Why another man, if you are standing, you say you are distracted, distracted me, sit down, sit down. Ah, why are you standing? Sit down, sit down. It happened during 72 hours of retreat. Um, pastor doing. If you stand, you say, ah, what are you? sit down. Ah, you know, you say, sit down. So, all no is not that we all know that somebody stands, so they are standing up for someone. Doesn't mean that another person will also stand up for him. Pastor doing home, he's, he's not just make sure you are listening to what he's saying. And when you crack jokes, laugh. Yes. When you crack jokes, laugh. If you need that for Pastor Doing, you say stand up. But you don't know, stop like that. So honors are perceived differently. So you understand what the person love by honor. Ah, see the way a lion is even listening to that. Ah, that's my dad. <laughs> yes, so a lion. Eh? When you want to honor. That you honor people and you are certain that the honor is fat. Let me help you. You don't need much to honor people. You just need the right heart. When the people see your heart, do you know that some people have given me higher money and some people have given me 15 era? And sincerely, that 15 era was honorable than the other one. From my heart, I said, Ah, yeah, God bless you. And that is all, sincerely. Once God bless you, it's okay. Hallelujah. So let's continue, sir. Let's continue. We'll cover time. He said, when Esau heard his father's words, he burst out with a loud and bitter cry and said to his father, bless me, bless me to my father. Can you see this? He's not just, in, mm, hey. I'm telling you. He said, bless me to my father. Look at what he saw. What did I say? He said, boy, he said, your brother had deceitfully your brother came deceitfully and took your blessing. What is that? What kind of English is that? You just said God bless you. And you are telling us that they, have took, they took it. Next. 
He said, eh, eh, this is the Allah. He said, in the name, whatever, whatever. He said, he took my bad right, and now he is taking my blessing. Wait. Ah, this is the I want. Oh, God. I'm already ahead of myself. Did you know that? J Jacob. Ah. Should I? Okay. I want to see how we. When, when, <laughs> oh God. You see, in this story, the chief of this story for me is Rebecca. Let me look up for that place. I think that's Genesis 26. The Bible says that when Rebecca was pregnant, it took her a while before she became pregnant. When she was pregnant, when she became pregnant eventually, the Bible said the children were justly in her womb. And then the Bible says she went to inquire of the Lord. I, wait, wait. I want to tell you something. That she went to inquire of the Lord and God told her that there are, there are two nations in your womb. He said one will be stronger than the other. He said, and the older will serve the younger. Wait. In this place, when I was studying this scripture, God communicated to me. He said most times, you start looking for the physical inside of the spiritual. Did you know that in the womb, when they wanted to come out, Jacob wanted to come out first. And yet, a prophecy went ahead. It's from the womb, the guy wanted to come out first. He still went ahead and still went to and fight for the birthright to become the first child. That was not the intention. The intention is that the last born so even the bad right now, take note. Him taking the bad right did not make him, did not give him the blessing. No. It was his own desire. But the prophecy that went ahead of him is that the younger must serve. Is the older that will serve the younger. So if truly that he took the bad right and the bad right was his, he will have served his Ha. So most times, you focus on the wrong things. Yet, in the agenda of God, the strategy of God is that the older must serve the younger. So most times, you focus on pursuing the wrong things at the expense of the right ones. It does not matter. Let people be running ahead. I'm telling you, let them go ahead. The prophecy of God over your life will still come to fruition. Except if it's not God. So, have we gotten that part? Oh, thank you. He said, the Lord said to her, the Lord said to her, two nations are in your womb. The two peoples from within you will be separated. One person will be stronger than the other. And the older will serve the younger. And yet, when, he, when they wanted to give her to them, let me look at, the Bible says that Jacob was still struggling to come out first. In fact, he was holding the leg of Esau. Uh -uh. Give it to that, that scripture. He was holding the leg of Esau. He said the force came and was whatever. Next verse. Next verse. He said after this, his brother came out with his hand grabbing Esau's ear. In the womb, in the womb, he was holding the leg. That, eh? he, 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 as he, he was still dragging the leg. Stop holding the wrong leg. When the guy came out, that was still his pursuit. His pursuit was that he still wanted to be, become the first son. But his mother, that is why I say Rebecca should be feared. It was the mother that was monitoring and taking care of. Do you know that if the mother was, the mother guided that prophecy and was watching for the right thing. All the time he was giving red oil, red whatever, but porridge, it doesn't concern the mother. The mother was watching the father. Not to give the blessing to the older. And that is why I told you that when Esau was talking, he said, first he took my birthright. He said, next, he has taken my blessing. So that means that it was not because of the bad right, the blessing was given to him. So the bad right was different, the blessing was different. But the, what the Bible was now stressing is that Esau despised his bad right. That one too is not correct. That he despised his bad right for food is not also correct. But that somebody else is chasing the bad right is not also correct. Because the prophecy that went ahead was that the older must serve the younger. If truly the position was changed, Esau will have been served by Jacob. But the mother was monitoring the real blessing. He knew that that thing that guy collected was tough. 
The mother was watching till when the blessing will be passed on. As soon as she heard that they called Esau to be blessed, immediately she positioned herself and called Jacob. As he has quoted to, the prophecy that was really ahead of you is that you will be the younger. The bad right told by her, I need it. <laughs> I need the bad right. Mabo. Now, go to your father. Do this. Do that. And then there was a time, Esau said, hey, Jacob said, if my father noticed, if he calls me, say, hey, don't bother. Let the curse come on me. Just do what I asked you to say because I went to inquire of the Lord. And the Lord told me that the younger and yet from the womb, Jacob wanted to be the older. From the womb. So severally, you are pursuing mirage. If God has spoken and said, son, sit down, study, become a pastor, and you want to become a pilot, because you saw the vision that God will give you a plane, it doesn't take God less than two seconds to make you a pilot owner. Stop pursuing the wind. All those gymnastics Jacob did, he did not need it. Because he was not supposed to be the first one. The blessing was supposed to go to the younger son. And yet, all those things, all those deceits, the only thing, because even if he didn't do that, his mother would have still ensured that the blessing came to him. Why? Because God already told her that there are two nations in your womb that will be separated. One will serve the older. And the older will serve the younger. It's the best time to pray. Pray for yourself that in the name of Jesus, you will stop chasing the wind. The Bible says in the book of Luke, Luke chapter 10, verse 41, if I'm not incorrect. He said, matter, matter, you are upset and disturbed about many things. He said, one thing is needed. Ah, we are going to pray that scripture. Friends, wait, this is not the scripture where, this is not the meeting actually, where you sit down and be praying some prayer. Look at this. 1041. It's a matter, matter, the Lord answer. You are worried and upset about many things. Yes. He said one thing, but only one thing is needed. Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken from her. Can you stand up now and pray for yourself oh, after this? The Father, I refuse to chase after the wind in the name of Jesus. Friends, you can pray this prayer better. This meeting is not organized, so you can be joking around. No, 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 no. You can do that better. You can be better about that. You can be better. You can be that better. You can pray better. That in the name of Jesus, in my pursuit, I won't chase the wind. In my pursuit of God, I won't chase too many things. I will chase what is better. Is that the best you are praying, friends? Arapokote la mina hande farnish. Baria kelo para minando fe. Ai kelo mbo suna fera. Shabara balala bando bololo bos. Ake tembo lokoti manavina haya. Ai kelo suna kelo para minandos. I pray, Lord, that we chase what is important. He said, matter, matter. You are worried and upset about many things. He said, what thing is needed? Mary, Jeremiah, James has chosen that thing and it will not be taken away from him. I have chosen one thing that is better. He said, This is one thing I ask in Psalm. The Psalm is said, One thing I ask, and this is what I seek. He said, I will drain the eyes of the Lord all the days of my life. He said, One thing I ask of the Lord, and this is what I seek. I think that should be Psalm 27, if I'm not incorrect. Yeah. One thing I've, I have desire, one thing I have desire of the Lord, that will I seek after. That I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to bestow the beauty of the Lord, and to inquire in his temple. That I seek one thing, one thing, one thing. You can do it better. First, you can do it beating your body also. Beating your body. My body, you will not be worried about many things. You will not desire what is not necessary. You will not desire what is not needed. 
I put you under and I pray that in the name of Jesus, one thing I ask of the Lord, one thing I desire of the Lord, that is what I seek, that I will dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life and inquire of him in his sanctuary. In the name of Jesus. You can do it better, best friends. You can pray better. Thank you, Jesus. For in Jesus' mighty name, I will pray. Let's have our seat. Are we getting it? Take all of me, all of me, Lord. You have my everything. Take all of me, all of me, Lord. You have my everything. Take all of me, all of me, Lord. I pray for you. You won't chase after the wind. Amen. You didn't get it. Ah, that after you have done everything, the report now came that ah, he said, "Who's it, Lucio?" Ah, <laughs> there's somewhere in Bible, Matthew seven, Matthew seven twenty one, Matthew seven twenty one. He said, "Not all that tell unto me, Lord, Lord, we enter into the kingdom of God." He said, "But all that dwell the will of my Father in heaven." Next verse, sir. He now says, next verse, next verse. He said, many will say to me that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name? And he said, who sent you? <laughs> who sent you? Did we not prophesy in your name? And in your name drive out demons and perform many miracles. Yes, sir. He said, then I will tell them plainly. I never knew you, even from me. You evil doer. So chasing the wind, he's prophesying a batting, no? Is casting out devils a battle? Right but there's a way you can be doing what he did not send you. And do you know what it means to be a prophet? Don't forget, I say for every calling there is a consecration. For you to be able to prophesy, you must have taken the consecration of a prophet. And yet he said, I did not send you. Because you are supposed to be in the second basket. You, oh, oh, for the seventh basket. For every basket, there is a consecration that comes with it. So for every calling, for every assignment, I'm telling you the truth. You will take the consecration for it. Take, for instance, you want to be a, a biochemist and they give you medicine. Ah, you finish reading medicine, you now discover that that is not what you need. You have wasted seven years, sir. You now come back again and take another consecration for biochemistry. So your assignment, that's why you must know your assignment early. Because for everything you claim you want to become, it's just like going to school. You must be satisfied for it. And there is a consecration. Take, for instance, that one is even similar. That is the science class. You are supposed to be a medical doctor. You are in art and performing class. So you are going to take the consecration of, of what they do in art class. Here. Government, Abby. Am I correct? So I'm going to say something that is not correct. Eh? Is it government? Government, literature. Yes, I remember. You're going to be taking government, literature. I wonder if you say accounting. But I don't think they do that, eh? Is the commerce people okay? Ah, too good. Oh, so you are going to go and be taking government literature in English. What else? Government, God, okay. Religious, eh? you are going to go and take religious. Which course is religious? Okay, you are going to go and be taking CRS, Chem Yoruba, aha, Yoruba, French, aha. One thing back. I will say, no pay, you are going to want me to all the kind of courses. For a medical doctor. That is how it means for the consecration of your basket. There is a training you must undergo. So the drilling, or take for instance, you are supposed to be a soldier. You are going to want to take the, the training of boys brigade. Boys Brigade, Boys Brigade. You're going to want to take in Boys Brigade training. Where you just do frog job, you say do frog job. They not carry you to war. You not say, it's Boys Brigade though. It's Boys Brigade, we just hold sword, imaginary sword. <laughs> that doesn't work. No. The rigor of your training determines your, the, the ministry you are calling to, the assignment you are calling to. So these guys, they were busy wasting their time prophesying. 
they took the consecration of a prophet. These other guys, they were casting my devil. They took the consecration of a deliverer, a deliverance minister. Yet, when they show up, they say, Talo Ronche. Ah, not me. Talo Ronche. So, anything you desire that is not in the design of God, you will pay the price for it, but you will not be qualified for, for, for what God asks you to do. So, these guys say, We prophesy in your name now. Ah. Uh, then I will tell them plainly, I never knew you. will let you away from me. Uh, you, you, you look, go back now. Look at what the Bible calls evil doers. Evil doers, wait. A, an evil doer is not somebody that is doing bad. An evil doer is somebody that is doing what God did not send him. So that's why he say in my, they will they will come, they will say it in my name. You know what I'm saying? They will do many things. Because in, he said, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name? And in your name, drive out demons and perform many, no small miracles, many miracles. And they say, eh? Hey, me, 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 me. Do you know what it means to be a miracle worker, to be an early evangelist? Do you know the consecration that comes with that? Take, take for instance, Benny Hinn, um, Pastor Chris Oyakilome. I don't want to go into details, but if you know what I'm talking about, you will know what I'm talking about. Their consecration is that they don't have time for any person. Any person, they don't have time. They are always in the Holy of Holies. Always. Why? Because the purity of an alien evangelist, no be yell. No be yell. It's a consecration. Alien evangelist, are you joking? Your own training is different. Yet these guys were consecrated for that thing. But God said, Talon Ranger, he made a money. He will look to a clear way. Only Judas. Judas. Evan Wakai. He won't be like Judas. They all shall like Judas. You see. Ah, Osha. Kilo did one log back consecration on evangelist. Talon Ranger. We are. If I had a money, Ben Lua. We are. Move. Eat a more. So most times, when you are pressing, oh, you don't understand what we are saying, Abby. Okay, you do not understand Yoruba. You don't understand Yoruba too. Just laugh. It's funny. <laughs> Are you for real? You don't understand Yoruba? Angasi. Don't worry, we'll marry you to Pastor Sami. Pastor Sami, I've given you a wife. Stand up. Let's celebrate them. It's okay. Next week, Saturday, we'll do the wedding. If, no, who is saying election? Let them come on Saturday. Now. Who said that? Who said election? Go out. If you like, come next week Saturday. Me, I'll still be sleeping at home. <laughs> Wait, oh, it's not prophetic, it's a joke. Oh. <laughs> okay, so that will balance things now. Let me quickly say it's a joke. Oh. All right, praise God. Before Pastor Samuel, I'll collect our number. <laughs> All right, praise God. But it's true. If I, but no, we'll see later. No, 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 no worry, no worry. We'll see later. Keep it. Don't allow them to no. If God says anything, we'll pray. If she's already seeing um, bro dancing, we'll disconnect in the spirit. It's a joke too. This one now. <laughs> this one is also a joke. All right, praise God. What brought us here? Okay, I think we are, we are done with this part, right? Where we are praying that God should allow us to focus on the right things, right? So that, no. I still need you to pray one prayer. That in the name of Jesus, every day of your life, starting from now, you will know what, uh, what is always important in your life. Mike Mudo says something. He says that there's nothing as good as a man knowing what to do next. Pray that in the name of Jesus, you know the consecration that is peculiar to your assignment and calling in the name of Jesus. So that you can seek it early. So that you can pursue it early. This time he said, one thing I desire of the Lord, this is what I seek. So that you can also know your eyes can be single. Uh, friends, pray this better, but I'm telling you, pray it. You will need this any day, any time in your life later on. So that you won't have invested in the energy and timing in the wrong things. For in Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Okay, you understand this prayer better. Pastor Sammy, let's, let's give them um, Galatians chapter 1. Galatians chapter 1, verse ah, 14, if I'm not incorrect. Galatians 1 14. I want to show you something so you understand what I'm saying. I've always said it. I said, no matter how fast you run in the wrong direction, you can never get to a destination. If you like, be fast, no matter how fast you run in, a, run in the wrong direction, you can never reach your destination. The only solution is to go back, turn back. So look at this, our brother. 
He said, I was advancing. This is Paul. Oh. He said, to him it was advancement. And for you to advance, my brother, you will put work to it. I say, for you to advance, you will put work to it. Hope you know that it was when he was advancing, he was, he only Paul was going to Damascus to go and, to, only Paul was going to Damascus to go and persecute the church. Only him. Only him. He just go and collect. He said, chief priest, hey, you me permission. So he, that was how he was advancing. This guy was working. His energy was not here. But he alone only energy is evil when he loaded. Yeah, guy in Movelo. That is why the Bible says that they wanted, they gave prophets that Paul, you are going to die. Say, hey, die. I don't even only want to die. And you know that they were going to put in chains. Say, chain. I don't even want to be put in chain. I want to die. Let them kill me. When I got Paul, I saw the man upon whose gidu belong. He said he'll be bound in, in Jerusalem. He said they pass with him. He said, I'm not Jerusalem. I'm not Jerusalem. He said, I'm not Jerusalem. He said, I'm not Jerusalem. I don't only want to be bound in Jerusalem. Contact me. I'm ready. That was how advancing this guy was. In fact, the Bible says he was bearing witness when they were killing Stephen. He was one that made sure that so you don't know He confirmed the death. So they were dropping all the people that were going to one throw stone. They dropped clothes in, with him. Have people ever dropped clothes with you? Do you know the difficulty of sorting the clothes back and giving them? All the people that went, they dropped the clothes at the feet. The Bible says at the feet of a certain man also. So they drop the clothes. One can phone it. Say, "Mo worry. You are ah, who can be one mark here? Okay, moti mo, moti mo identification. My phone tag it here. So he was the one holding the clothes to confirm that this guy must die. That is how advancing he was. So the Bible says that what? Thank you, Pastor Sami. Let's go back to Galatians. Let's celebrate Pastor Sami again. <laughs> of a certain man, yes. He said, "I was advancing in Judaism beyond many Jews of my own age." So cool that you will know. That this, this guy was, he was, a, he was advancing. He was advancing more than all of them. But the Bible says, and was extremely zealous for the tradition of my father. Are you joking? So this guy was doing things in innocence. And if you ask him, that, are you advancing? Say, advancing, you know, we joke, at the advance. But he was advancing in the wrong course. He was advancing in the right, wrong direction. But he was putting his energy to it. That's why I say you should pray. Because anything you chose as a vision now, you, it will take your time, your energy, and your resources. After five years, that's when you now discover that, hey, I'm not even supposed to be a pastor. Hey, Talepe is slim. Huh? Now, ah, I'm not supposed to be a pastor. Can you say me? Waste time, waste energy, waste resources. Not you. I want you to pray. The Father, please show me early where I'm supposed to invest my energy, my time, so I can pick that one thing. I won't be advancing in the nonsense. You can pray it better, friends. That there is clarity, there is precision for me. I will not be advancing in the nonsense. That we pick up the right things at the right time so that my energy will be conserved. My time will be conserved. That you are not moved by what you love, by what, by what, but by what God, but, but, by, but by what heaven sent you to do. Thank you, Jesus. For in Jesus' mighty name, I will pray. Are we getting this thing? Is it simple enough? All right, so I think we have tried for the people that didn't come yesterday. I said that I was not going to explain to them, but now I want to move in. No problem. So we did a obedience and victory over the spirit, ah, and victory over the spirit of death, right? And in victory over the spirit of hell, we say you should know when you die, right? So today, let's quickly go to the mystery of death. It's going to be a long read. But you can document it down. Can you just pray in the Holy Ghost? Just a few minutes, pray in the Holy Ghost. The mystery of death. Pray in the Holy Ghost. That the eyes of understanding will be enlightened. In the name of Jesus. Maroki Tefelosa. Jesus, for in Jesus, mighty name, I will pray. You see, these teachings, <laughs> me, I'm too certain that you are going to be blessed. Uh, no, I'm certain that one is sure for me. And I'm telling you. So, the mystery of death. Ah, this is one of the longest topic I'm going to take in a little time. I 
I break the mystery of death into two. But we are going to do the reading, and then I'm going to start. I break the mystery of death into two, into two arms. I said seeds, seeds, like seeds. Uh, what is seed in Yoruba? It is so seeds. And then the second one is consecration. Seeds and consecration. I'm going to read these scriptures for us. Okay, we have done seed before, Abi. That's what I'm telling you. And we have done seed before. Because when I, when I document this, that's when I remember that, ah, see, that is a seed. Dele. We have done seeds. But don't, those of you that have not done it, don't worry. That's why you're here. Seed is so. Death. Don't worry. How many of you saw they are Greek? You are the Greek people now? Okay, she didn't come. Uh, ah, plan of larger and Greek. What is the difference? You are Greek, Jerry. <laughs> have your sister. Romans. So, from the mystery of death, we're going to read Romans. Romans is the one that will set the course for our discourse. So, Romans chapter 6, verse, from ve chapter 6, first, check me your welcome, sir. Romans chapter 6 to chapter 8, that is what we're going to read. But we're going to inevitably read Romans chapter 6, the whole chapter. And then we are going to read Romans chapter 7 from verse 15. And then we are going to read Romans chapter 8 from verse 1, 1 to 13. Are we getting it? So it's just for it to set foundation for what we want to do. So please, Pastor Sammy, make sure your hand is with NIV and Living Bible and Message. Because those are the scriptures I'm going to need when we are going through. But can we, are we ready? Are we good to go? Are we ready to read? Now let's go. Romans chapter 6 from verse 1. Let's quickly read it. NIV, sir. Romans chapter 6. Can we read together? One, two, three, go. Yes, next verse, sir. The thing is long, go. Let's continue, Pastor Sami. By no means. We wait. We did what? Die to sin. How can we live in it any longer? And that's why I said the mystery of death, right? That's what we want to look at. Yes, continue, sir. He said, oh, don't you know that all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death. Wait. Alpha. <laughs> Emma Kepele. The mystery of death. In fact, I will have called it the importance of death. Instead of the mystery of death. I prefer that. In fact, put the mystery first slash the importance of death. Without death, there can't be life. Once something did not stop to exist, another one not start. So death is the one that introduced life. They say T or Gedebaku. Ah, Okay, you arrive one or yeah. Ale. E T or Gedebaku, we go do it. Half your more rapo abi. But Jesus or Gede is not for more rapo. Is the Ogbe debaku aloku awan motoku? So Jesus did not die to replace. Jesus died and came alive too and brought many sons alive. And don't worry, it's a long way through. the dead through the glory of the father we too may live a new wait a new life so that's why i say that without death there can be life so it was the death of jesus that introduced life to us but there are two kinds of death <laughs> just as there are two kinds of resurrection There is a part of resurrection that we are mistaken for resurrection, which is not resurrection. If any person dies and comes back to life, the person did not resurrect. The person came back to life. But it's a kind of resurrection. Am I saying something? Because the person will still die again. That was what happened when Lazarus died. 
Jesus said, I'm going to bring your brother back to life. The other people were thinking of resurrection. Martha and Mary were saying, ah, we know he will rise again. Ah, the resurrection of the dead, he will rise again. Jesus was like, mm, I am the resurrection and the life. I am going to introduce life to him now so that he can come alive. But there's another one called resurrection. That's what Jesus said now. The people are looking at me. Jesus answered now, I am what? The resurrection and the life. So when somebody comes back to life, the person is not resurrected. But in our English, the person was resurrected. <laughs> because the person will still die again. But after a man is resurrected, the man cannot die again. That's what Jesus did. Jesus did not only come back to life. Jesus was resurrected. Every person that Jesus brought back to life, they died again. All of them. But if he resurrected them, once he born death back, death cannot kill them again. So the Bible is saying that our baptism into the death of Christ introduced something to us called life. In fact, if you now read Romans, Romans 8, I, I think we may not have the time to truly read through this or through. But let me show you something in Romans 8. Ah, no. Let's say we we'll stop at verse 4 of this one. But okay, Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Okay, thank you, sir. We already stopped in verse 4 of this Romans 6, Abby. Let me now carry us to Romans 12, Romans 8 from verse 1. Give me in KJV. We're going to read verse 1 in KJV and continue the remaining part in NIV. Because then we'll now go to Romans 7, verse 15. That one is the one that we, I will use to explain why truly we die and came back to life. Are we on the same page? All right, sir. He said, There is therefore now no what? To them which are in. Wait. Romans 6 that we read said, In Christ Jesus means that we were buried into his, into his death, right? Uh-uh. Oh, please. I need, see, this is the part where I need... This, you can't understand anything I will say if you don't understand the scriptures I'm trying to read to us. As me, it's what I will have to say all of us to read Romans. And then we will now come back. But now, I need just need you to follow me. Please, don't think about Aku, Ewa, Agbado, now, in a different or. Just concentrate your attention on this, please. Hallelujah. Are we on the same page? So can we read this together? For we did what? And we're buried with... By, and just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glorious power of the Father, now we also may live new lives. Ah, no, NIV, we have a new life, NIV. What are we doing, NLT? Pastor, I say I'm living Bible. I'm living Living Bible is a living Bible. The living Bible. This one is NLT, but I don't, I did not ask for this now. I be, how did we get here now? Ah. Uh-huh. It's not NLT I asked to give you. There's something called Living Bible there. It's not NLT. New Living Translation is not the same as the Living Bible. But I didn't even ask for it now. Means uh, in wet. You are welcome, man. That is missing wet. If you need wet, meet her. All right. You're welcome, man. All right, now let's go. He said, we therefore, that part, just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, he said, we too live a new, a new. All right, now give me 8 verse 1. KJV, sir, very quickly. 8 verse 1. Perfect. Can we read this together? He said, there is therefore now no to them which are in. So that in Christ Jesus, you are inside what? Is death. Are we on the same page? When you give your life to Christ, you die. Ah. That's why I say it's one of the longest teachings that I want to summarize. Because there are too many things that have jumped now that we are flying to this, the importance of death. But I want to assume that, how many of you did full inheritance? When we did the teaching on full inheritance, how many people are there? Ah. Please, I see what you want to do. Father, give us understanding. 
heighten our understanding, Lord. Okay. I want to, I will just believe that we understand it. Don't worry, you will understand. Just hang anywhere. Anywhere you don't understand, just hang there. You will still understand this. Now let's go. Who walk not after thee, but after thee. All right, yes. NIV, sir. Perfect. Thank you, sir. He said, because through Christ Jesus, the law of the spirit of the law of the spirit of set me free from the law of and Okay, next verse. Sir. He said, For what the law was powerless to do, in that it was weakened by the sinful nature, God did by sending his own son in the likeness of the sinful nature to be a sin offering. Ah, we're supposed to be reading together. Why am I the one only one reading? Yes, let's go. So he condemned what? Sin in sinful. Yes. He said, In order that the righteous requirement of the law might be fully met in. Who did not live according to the sinful nature, but according to the... He said, those who live according to the sinful nature have their minds set on what? Take note of that. Those who live according to the sinful nature have their heart set where? Okay. But those who live in accordance with the Spirit have their minds set on what? Yes. He said, the mind of sinful nature is dead. He said, but the mind controlled by the Spirit is life and... Yes, next verse. He said, the sinful mind is hostile to God. He does not submit to God's law. None can he do so. Stop. Go back. Give me this in Living Bible. And then we'll go to NLT. Then we'll go to message. If you have message or passion. Yes, sir. Living Bible. The Living Bible. Shortcut. Now, can we read this together? Because the old sinful nature within us is against, he never did obey God, and it never will. Give us in NIV again. You, you will see where obedience is coming to the play now, so that all of us will balance. He said, The sinful mind is hostile to, he does not submit to God, none can he do so. Pray in the Holy Ghost. These, things, these are deep stuffs. Pray in the Holy Ghost, friends. For in Jesus' mighty name, I will pray. Oh. Give me 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter. <laughs> there are plenty of scriptures we need to use to explain this. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Hope we still know where we are in Romans chapter 6, verse 4, right? He said that our baptism into Christ gave us new life. The Bible now says that in Romans chapter 8, verse 1, it says there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in, that is those that are baptized into Christ Jesus, they had a new life. But the sinful nature is still available, right? So now let's read this. He said, therefore, if anyone is in, can you see in, in, in inside? So this in, what is the concept of this in? That is you are baptized into, into his death, right? Okay. He said, he is a new, the old as, the new as. Now, let me carry me back to Romans now, so that we can now balance that. Romans chapter 8 now. Romans 8 verse 5 that we stop, where we stop. He said, the sinful mind is hostile to, he does not submit to God, nor can it do so. Okay, okay, I think I know what I'll do. We are now going to read Romans 7 verse 15 now, 15 to 25. So that I will use it to, to say what I want to say. Because, but then I think, I suppose we should have understood plenty of things there. Can we read this together? Now, Pastor Ed, please stop here, Pastor Sami. Just put this in schedule. And carry me back to Romans chapter 8, verse 5 again. I need you to see something. He said, the mind of the sinful, he says, the sinful mind is hostile to, he said, he does not submit to, living Bible saying, he does not obey God. He said, neither can he do so. 
So he said, he does not submit to God's law, none can it do so. He does not submit to God's law, nor can he, not as if he, he doesn't want to. He cannot do it. So, okay, let's hold that one. The sinful mind cannot submit to God's law, right? Do you all agree with that? According to scripture. So, even if he wants to, he can't. That is why an unbeliever, no matter what, he can't. If an unbeliever sin, nothing is telling him he's a sin. An unbeliever, when he sin, nothing is telling him he's a sin. An unbroken person, when he sin, nothing is telling him he's a sin. He can go and kiss the wife over and over again. I say wife. The boyfriend over and over again. He can go and sleep with the boyfriend over and over again. Because even when he wants to stop, he cannot. So the Bible is saying the sinful nature, he said the old sinful nature within us is against God. It never did obey God's law and it never will. It never will, it can't. And I be saying it, it does not submit to God. Now never will we can't even do so. Now let's show uh, let me show you something about Paul. Paul wrote this while he was also governed by the sinful nature. So that you will now understand. Because if you don't understand this concept of death, you will never even understand brokenness that I'm talking about. All right, let's go. Um, okay, 8 verse 7, Ravi. Okay, let's go to Romans um, 7 verse 15 now. We're going to read to 25. It's a long read. It's a long read. Okay, can we read this together? He said, I do not understand what I do. Don't forget. Romans 8, 7 already tells us that this guy that is governed by sinful nature is hostile to God. He said he never did obey God's law. Neither can he do so. This man is not telling us about his own nature. He said, I do not understand what I do. For what I want to do, I do not do. He said, but what I ate, I do. How many of us were in this state before? At the time in our life. If you have not been there before, that means you were born again from the womb. Alright, let's continue. He said, and if I do what I do not want to do, I agree that the law is good. Let's go on. As it is, it is no longer I myself who do it. Wait. When Paul is talking about I myself, who is the I myself in this equation? Is it the sinful nature? No. No. So let me help you. Jesus came to introduce two forces. Before, there was only one force, which was the sinful nature. The death of Jesus introduced a new life to come and fight the sinful nature, but he did not take the sinful nature away. So you still have both. Wait, wait. <laughs> because the sinful nature is in your mind. Ah, oh. Okay. Ah, these are deep stops. I'm looking for the best way I can summarize this and explain it that you will understand. Oh. Ah. How many of us know spiritual and body? Spiritual and body that I've, I think I've explained it over and over again. When God said, if you eat this, you will die. Oh, we knew what died. What died was the spirit. That is, God received, it was as if the spirit died. God removed the spirit component of man. So man was left only with the soul and body. Do we get that? So after man gave his life to Christ, after Jesus came, man could not be born again, right? So when man is born again, the spirit component was introduced back to man. But proud to this time, the only thing that was governing man was the soul. And that is where the sinful nature dwells. And that's why the Bible says in the book of James that we should save the soul. So when you give your life to Christ, when you were saved, it was not your soul that was saved. It was your spirit that was regenerated. Do we get that? But the spirit is coming to meet a soul that has been with you since when you gave your life to Christ, since when you were born. So when you were born long, which was what Nicodemus was asking, that now that I'm old, am I going to go into my mother's womb again to be reborn? He said, no, no, not, not be eating and tell you with that too. Spirit give back to spirit and flesh give back to flesh, right? So he said, at that level, you are already born. But there's another burning that you are going to be born by death. 
Do we get it? So a sinful man does not have this new life. Are we on the same page? A sinful man does not have this new life. He only had the sinful nature, which according to Romans chapter 8 verse 7, he said that that sinful nature is, is hostile to God. So the death of Jesus came to introduce something else that can make us to subdue the sinful nature. So that is why there are not two forces fighting for a believer. For an unbeliever, he has just one nature, sinful nature. For a believer, there is something introduced that can always fight the desires of the sinful nature. And that is why in Galatians chapter 6, in Galatians chapter 6, Galatians chapter 6, give me verse, um, from verse 16. Galatians chapter 6, from verse 16, very quickly, Pastor Sammy. Galatians, sorry, sir, 5, 5, from verse 16. Galatians chapter 5, from verse 16, very quickly, sir. 5, 5, from verse 16. He says, so I say, live by the... Do you know before now, there was no spirit component. Man could not live by the spirit. The only thing that was governing man was the sinful nature. And yet, that sinful nature, the Bible said that it was hostile to, towards God. And it cannot submit to the law of God. Neither will it do so. But Jesus came and introduced something higher. Which was the spirit component. So that means that the only reason why you could sub subdue the desires of the sinful nature is because there is a spirit. Because the sinful nature, it could not. You know, it doesn't matter what the sinful nature did. The best of the sinful nature is still the sinful nature. It can't keep up the laws of God. The sinful nature will keep fighting against the laws of God. We keep fighting. And you as a man too, according to Paul, Paul in Romans chapter 7 verse 14, from verse 15, he said me, I want to do something, I couldn't do it. No matter how I try, I couldn't. So what Jesus was trying to introduce is, when you don't want to do something, when you don't want to do something, there's another spirit in, in place that can make sure you do, you do not do what you don't want to do. But before Jesus introduced a new life to us, no matter how you don't want to do what you don't want to do, you will still do it. Because there was no power to subdue the other sinful nature. So when Jesus came on board, and that is why as a Christian, who tell you that, eh? Who tell you that when I was single, I, I, I don't want to, want, to, want to sleep with sisters? You think you are the only one he's working for? They say, eh, eh, I can't control myself. Who can control himself? It's because there's another spirit inside of us. That is why you should not be angry with unbelievers. It's their nature. If they did not sin, you should be surprised. But you as a believer, when you don't want to do something, Jesus already introduced a power that will make sure you don't do it. That is one step to brokenness. Assuming God asks you to do what you can't do, we should go and question God in heaven. The reason why God has to kill his son to make sure you can do what is right is because he knew that in the sinful nature, there is no way you can please him. The sinful nature is hostile towards God. He said he can't please God. He cannot, no matter the attempt he makes, he can't please God. So God had to introduce something higher that present the spirit. And that's why I say, so I say, live by the spirit and you will not gratify. The word is KJV. KJV says, you will not fulfill the desires of the sinful nature. So God did not take the sinful nature away. He did not take the flesh away, but he introduced something higher that can subdue the flesh. If that thing is not being introduced, there is no way you could have said, everybody have desire, sinful desire or lay. Who a Carlo? That is what even make you a Christian. Your ability to be able to subdue the desires of the flesh. Assuming God took away the desires of the sinful nature, everybody will be a normal Christian. There is no need for brokenness. All of us will be broken. But the sinful nature is still there. Your ability to be able to tamp the sinful nature is what makes you a Christian. That you see sin and you did not sin. Yeah, the desire to sin is there, but there is something higher that is introduced into your system that can tamp the desires of the sinful nature. That is what makes you a Christian. Because after Paul evaluates his life in that, uh, in that Romans chapter 7 from verse 15, after he, he said, and you will not fulfill, thank you, sir, you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. So the flesh is there. 
The flesh is still intact. He said, but we have already introduced a spirit. That spirit is the one that will help you to subdue the desires of the sinful nature. He is the one that will help you to subdue. So if God says you should be broken or you can't be broken, there is going to be a problem. And the desires of our sinful nature are different. Your own can be ice cream. Every time you are fasting, even if you smell ice cream, you go and buy one. But there is, it's not a willpower. There is a power inside of you that can subdue the desires of the sinful nature. That no matter, come on, buy ice cream, you you know you will not take it. That was what Paul did in 1 Corinthians 9, 27. He said, I beat my body. I am saying all of this to say that it is not Jesus that will help you subdue the sinful nature. He will give you the power to subdue it. Your willingness and your acceptance to subdue it is what makes you a Christian. And there are consecration for every lifetime. For Samson, he is not supposed to cut his hair, no matter how he loved different hairstyles. He is not supposed to drink wine, no matter what. There are peculiarity to your assignments. There are peculiarity to your doings. Before, it used to be a single law, both for the prophet, the whatever, and everybody. But when Jesus came, the Bible says that it is no longer a law. It's a peculiar law now. The law is written in your heart. So when you are born, there are consecration that God read right on the tablet of your heart that you will not do no matter what. For me, I told us. I said, I told my wife when we wanted to marry. I said that, hey, if for any reason I mistakenly or accidentally or by mistake sleep with you before we marry, I will not marry you. Because God already told me that if I ever sleep with any woman before I marry, I'm going to die. That was one of the reasons why we didn't sleep with ourselves before we marry. If not, how will you see this kind of fine girl and you leave you later and go? Consecration. Who told you? If we assuming that there is no willingness to sleep with her, we won't buy a lion. All of us will be the only man in the house. You know, I just say sister is a brother. We don't be moving like this. But the consecration kept everybody at his post. So there is something I had about. Hey, you will die. You will die. It will be right here. You will die. 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 And for other people, they might have the, the, the direction of their own consecration might be that they have slept with so many people, and then that is why God won't even want to use them. So that I did take, for instance, Pastor Mewa, Apostle Mewa Areho, for example. He has said it several days. That's why I could share the story. He said he has slept with so many people that when he met Pastor Temi, he had to still say, stay without touching her. He lay. You know what I'm saying? You just, any sister, you just sleep. And then there is a consecration requirement that he could not touch her. Somebody that used to be a lord of sleeping with people, he could not touch the person. That is the consecration. If he had failed, there won't be any CSE here. But when he was sleeping with sisters up and down, the only law he had was the law of the sinful nature. The new life was not introduced to him. When the new life came on board, the new life gave him the ability to be able to tamp the desires of the sinful nature. To be able to subdue the desires of the sinful nature. My friend, I'm telling you, you are the one thinking that, why is it only you that God is tempting with this? There is nobody that is not me telling All of us. Who told you that we, nobody cannot sleep with anybody? Who told you that? Who, who doesn't want to smoke? Ah. Who told you that? Who doesn't want to do all these things that I'm saying? Ah. Who told you that it's easy to stay without, without touching a sister and grabbing her? Who told you you are the only one that has eyes to be seen if you go eight? Okay, you are the only one God did eyes for. Oh, congrats. But our ability to thumb, and that's why Job said, he said, I make a covenant with my eyes that I will not look at a woman lustfully. It's consecration, it's discipline. And also I'm bold to tell you that part of the concentration is that I will not sleep with any other person that is not my wife. I will die. Oh, you didn't get it. I am going to die. Mm. 
So you are going to guard jealously. Because this one, Jesus said before, if you look at it, no, he said before the law says that what? If you sleep with a woman, that uh, you commit fornication. He said we have changed it. He said we have changed it. This one now, if you do it in your heart, you have done it. Huh? The way they are looking at me, they didn't get it though. The former one was a peculiar law for every person. The new law is written in your heart. That is not about, is it good or wrong again? It's about the demand of your assignment. That you're not going to ask for someone, that is it good to touch a sister? Is it good to peck? If you ask that question, do you know you go out? That is it, is it good? Is it good for me and my wife? And me and my best I want to marry? Is it good for us to just do, to just put the mouth small? What are you saying? Some questions are not about, is it good or wrong again? It's about what is written in the tablet of your heart. Uh, have you looked at that place for me? He said, but I tell you that anyone who looks at a woman lustfully has already committed adultery with her in his heart. Go back to the previous one where they are saying that, and if, if you touch a sister. He said, if you have, you have heard that it was said, do not commit adultery. He said, that why is old. That do not commit adultery at your at upgrade. He said, why? He said, but I say unto you, yes, next verse, sir. Next verse, are we getting this thing? Next verse, Pastor Sammy, sir. He said, Next verse. This is not next verse, sir. He said, but I tell you that anyone who looks at a woman lustfully has already committed adultery with her in his heart. The previous one was a written code. The new one is on your heart. The new one is on your heart. That when God was configuring you to come to the head, there are some things that are touch not. Touch not. Touch not. Touch not. Touch not. As simple as those touch not may be, it may not be the peculiarity of my own consecration. So I can't answer yes or no for you. How many of you know that there are many things that people are doing that God is saying you should not do? If you miss the peculiarity of your assignment for popular people, that ah, this person is doing it, I can do it, a lemo, a lemo. You just lost a generation. So this brokenness has nothing to do with the law. Uh, uh, the Bible said that the Bible said that uh, this in the law, the law. This one is written on your heart. And as it's written on your heart, there's another law also available that can give you the ability to turn the desires of the sinful nature. Brokenness. We are seeing the mystery of death. Ah, team move. Don't allow this baby to be dead. Just laugh small. No, laugh. Mm, don't worry. Don't worry. The joy of the Lord is your strength. But you will get it. So the Bible says that walk in the spirit and you will not fulfill the loss of the sinful nature. Yes, next verse, sir. This is where I want you to see something. He said, for the flesh lusted against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are in contrast one to another so that you cannot do what you want to do. <laughs> there is constant war. So that means that before, the only thing you have was the sinful nature. There was no spirit component. And the Bible said that sinful nature cannot please God. No matter how you attempt, he can't even try it. He can't do it. No, until Jesus, the death of Jesus, now introduced something else that can fight the desires of the sinful nature. Before all these Abraham, all these people, they did not have the spirit component. He couldn't tell it. No matter what they do, no matter how they try, he will still look at a woman from the roof. No matter how, a man that goes on heart like David, he could not. He could not. But now there is a new law in town. This law can give you the ability to tamp the desires of the sinful nature. You can say, hey, don't touch. And you will have the power not to touch. But before, according to Paul, in Romans chapter 7, okay, let's read Romans 7, from verse 15 down. Romans 7, sir. Thank you, sir. He said, I do not understand what I do. For what I want to do, I do not do. But what I ate, I do. Can you see that? Next verse. He said, but if I do what I do not want to do, let's read together. I agree that the law is... So are you seeing that the law is not the problem? It was the sinful nature that was the problem. Because in Romans chapter 8 verse 7, he said the sinful nature is hostile towards God. He said he can't even obey the laws of God. No matter how he try, he can't do so. 
Are we seeing that? Okay, yeah. It cannot. Yes, let's, uh, let's go to the previous one. Yes, thank you, sir. He said, as it is, it is no longer I myself who do it, but it is sin living in. So what was doing the world? The sinful nature, right? So all those desires, all those grappa, all that, kissa, pecker, pe- beggar, all those whatever, he said it's the desires of the sinful nature. And at that level, he could not do anything. There was a time when we were also that helpless. No matter how we tried, we could not. Because there was no something I had introduced into our life. Are we getting it? There was no way we could not fulfill the desire of the sinful nature because the spirit was not there. And the Bible said, live by the spirit, Galatians chapter 5. He said, live by the spirit and you will not do what? Gratify the desires of the... Live by the spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the... Verse 17 now tells us that the, what, the spirit and the what? And the, the spirit, the flesh, losses against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh so that you will not be able to do what you want to do. Ah, there's a higher law. Can we thank God for a higher law? Can we thank God for a higher power? But are we getting this? Now, look at me. Are you getting this? It is simple enough. But this is not automatic. It's not as when you give a life to Christ and I say, don't you not say no. I will like sin. Can't sin. The higher of this evil. A lay. A lay. No, no, it doesn't work that way. Tell your neighbor it doesn't work that way. There is a part you will play. Tell him, tell him, tell him. There is a part you will play. That is why, that is the essence of this. That's why we are doing the importance of that. There's a part you will play, and we will see it together today. Oh, I pray God will help us. I'm trying to fly as much as I can. He said, I know that nothing good lives in me. Can you see that? That is in my sinful nature. Are we seeing that? The Lord was saying that when he was talking about him, he classified the several him. There is a sinful nature part of him. Then there is a spirit component of him. Because there is a him that wants to do good. But the Bible says the sinful nature cannot do good. So it can't be the him that is the sinful nature that I want to do good. Have we seen it? Because if he is saying that I know that nothing good lives in me, that is that he is not explaining the him part. That is my sinful nature. For I, I have the desire to do what is good. So can you see now? If the Bible says the, the sinful nature cannot do good, it cannot be still making reference to the sinful nature. Are we on the same page? If he's saying the sinful nature cannot, be, cannot do good, it can be still making reference to the sinful nature that I want to do good. He said, but I cannot carry it out. Yes, next verse. He said, for what I do is not the good I want to... No, no, the evil I do not want to do. This I keep on... Next verse, sir. He said, now if I do what I do not want to do, it is no longer I ah, will do it. No, what is this? Wait, wait. Ah. What are you saying? If I do what I don't want to do, it's not I that alone God will give you the embakasa. Kill the embakasa. What Paul is explaining to us is there are two persons. <laughs> there is a sinful nature and then there is a spirit component. And that's why even Jesus told his disciples, he said the spirit is, but the flesh is, ah, yeah, ah. So the essence of the, today's teaching is for you to strengthen the willingness of the spirit. Because constantly the flesh will be weak. Constantly. Grappa, grappa, your leg will just weak. You just grab. So Jesus said, there is a way, there is a mechanism that can help what the spirit wants to do. If constantly the spirit is willing. Constantly the flesh is weak. Constantly the spirit is willing. Constantly the flesh is weak. But there is a strength mechanism that you must give to the spirit that will enable you to do what the spirit desires as against the weakness of what the flesh wants. Can we celebrate, mommy? You're welcome, ma. All right, praise God. Are we on the same page now? Are we on the same page? Are we on the same page? All right, coming back to the scripture we are reading, sir. He said, but if I do what I do not want to do, it is no longer I will do it, but it is sin living in me that does it. Yes, next verse. He said, so I find this law at work. When I want to do good, evil is right with me. Next verse. He said, for in my inner being, I delight in. 
Are you seeing that he's introducing something and nothing? He said the sinful nature in me. Now he's not calling something else that in my inner being. He said, for in my inner being, I delight in the laws of God. So that means that there is something in him that still delights in the law of God. But there is something else that I don't want him to do the law of God. Are we getting this thing? <laughs> I want you to win the battle once and for all. That your spirit is fortified enough to say no every day, any day, any time to the desires of the sinful nature. That was what Jesus came to introduce. That is why death is important. That is why death is good. Next verse, sir. He said, but I see another law at work in the members of my body. Can you see this? Waging war against the law of my mind and making me a prisoner of the law of sin at work within my members. He said, what a wretch man I am. Who will rescue me from this body of death? Yes. He said, thanks to God. Ah, yeah. Lekeda, Avrekeno. Thanks to God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And that is what now introduces us to Romans chapter 8, verse 1. Because it's a continuation. Romans 8, verse 1. He said, There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, who work not after the flesh, but after the spirit. So that means there are two kinds of work. That means the sinful nature has something that you want to work on. The spirit also has something you want to work on. So Paul is saying that my deliverance came. I said this should be in KJV. 8 verse 1 should be in KJV. Pastor Sammy, uh, 8 verse 1 should be in KJV because KJV puts the other part of work not after the flesh but after the spirit. He said, there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in who work not after the but after the so what differentiates you from an unbeliever is that an unbeliever cannot work after the spirit. An unbeliever is constant. He works after the flesh. So your consecration, the measurement of your brokenness is how yielded you are to the spirit of God. <laughs> it's how yielded you are to the Spirit of God, and that's why we are introducing obedience. How yielded you are to the Spirit of God. That is true definition of brokenness. Because the testament is written in your heart. It's written in your heart. God can wake up any day, anytime, and knock on the door of your heart and say, Son, Pastor Sammy, bring that phone. And you won't be looking for scriptures that have phone. Say, mm, is that what we just mentioned? Phone. God does not use phone. You are, no, no, no. This is, no, no. And I said it. I said one of the keys to obedience is that you must know how you hear God. If you can't hear God, you can't obey Him. Before they wrote down the law, ne? 10. Later on, we want to increase it. But all the law now are written in your heart. If God wants to introduce any law, He writes it in your heart. All of a sudden, God just said, don't be using wig again. I'm not saying I'm God. Though. I'm just saying God is saying. So I'm next meeting now, we'll not see all our sisters on punk. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. But another person, your friend, in fact, your mom, can be using wig in the same house. And the consecration of that God, peculiarity, the peculiarity of God's dealing with you is written in your own heart that no wigs. That's what I'm And then do you know what? Do you know something about the consecration? Is that you will love weak. If you don't love weak, it is easy. You will love weak. Eh? If you can't love, if you don't see weak, you'll be weak. Ah, your love for weak, even weak is afraid. Of. And that's why Mike Murdoch says something I love. He said, God will not ask you what you want to give, He will ask you what you want to keep. So the things you want to keep, God keep asking. Because that is the demand of your consecration. Jesus said something I love. He said, I, he said, the reason my father loved me is because I gave my life. You know what I'm saying? There are things you will give. He said, it was not that for so. He said, I gave it willfully. He said, that is why God loved me. So most of the things you are giving willfully, not grudgingly, that is the demand of your consecration. That is the demand of your brokenness. If you yield to that brokenness, there is nothing God will not give you. There is no result you will not see. Carry me back to verse 5, sir. Uh, 25 of, of, 20, of, of 7. Because that is the last verse there. And it is a continuation. The last verse says, he said, thanks be to God. Can we say thanks be to God? He said, through Jesus Christ our Lord. 
so that I myself in my mind I am a slave to God's law, but in the sinful nature a slave to the law of sin. So if I'm in the sinful nature, I will yield to sin. But if I am in the law of God, I can't yield to sin. So that is why he now went further in 8 verse 1. He said, there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. That is who have been baptized into his death. When you are baptized into death, you die too. I said, when you are baptized into death, you die too. So a new life is being introduced. He said, a new life is introduced. That is 6 verse 4. 6 verse 4, sir. 6 verse 4. Because some is not following me. 6 verse 4. Romans 6 4. Ah, oh God. He said, We are therefore buried with him through baptism into what death? In order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. We may live a new life. Now, let's continue our Romans 8, 7 now. Romans 8, 7. Are we getting it? Don't worry. Go on, you will get it. Just don't worry. All right. He says, the sinful mind is hostile to what? It does not submit to God's law. It cannot obey God's law. He said, nor can it do so. So that was what Paul was saying. That me, now Richard Ma be. The thing I want to do, I know they do one. The thing I don't want to do now, as he said, they do. Jesus can't give answer, say, the spirit is willing, the flesh is weak. Every time, let me help you, there is no time that this, the flesh will be strong. The flesh will always be weak. But the spirit is willing, willing to do what? To do the bidding of God. The weakness of the flesh will not allow you, the desires of the flesh will give you a leg. You can't do it. You are just sick. You, you say, I won't lie again. Never. I will tell that boyfriend, never. I will not go sleep without seven. Never again. The guy just came and gave you the pet name he used to give you. You are the one that laid the bed and fly on the bed yourself and say, I'm all yours. Because you have not developed your spirit enough to be able to yield enough and say no. Titus 2.11 Titus 2.11. Titus 2.11. Are we getting this thing? Can we read this together? For the grace of God that brings what? As appear unto how many? Yes, next verse, sir. He teaches us to what? To what? And what? And to what? And what? And in this present age. So, there is a grace... There's a dimension that it teaches you. I love the word. It, it didn't say it forces you. Please go back. It didn't say there is the grace of God has appeared unto him to force you. <laughs> it did not force you. It teaches you. You are the one that will now, you will now take, take for instance, you hope you know that you can't, you can't teach somebody driving by driving yourself. I'm not teaching you driving. I say, see now, by the time I reach here, I will press on. By the time I reach here, I will turn the steering. Mm -mm -mm -mm. You teach people driving by them driving. <laughs> so, the grace of God that is teaching you, is teaching you to do. You know that it will be done on your behalf. And the peak of teaching is that you are able to practice. That is why there are technical schools, I hope you know. That is why there is uh, Quara Poly. Quara Polytechnic, Polytechnic is not supposed to be competing with university for anything. I don't even know what is wrong with this education system of Nigeria. A polytechnic is supposed to be a polytechnic. A university is supposed to be a university. You need to put technical things, go to polytechnic. You need to learn the theories and later on whatever, go to university. Hey, this is simple. Why are they fighting that this one is BSc, one is HAD, one is HOD? What did these things are not necessary? The people that created, they know what they were creating. But the disparity of there is no work, there is no work. Are you a BSC holder? You, you, you are not a BSC holder, you are a bench holder. We are go out. You, what can learn say? If you need a polytechnic man, employ a polytechnic man. If you need a BSC, employ a BSC person. Don't stop causing disparity. Are we getting this? So the Bible is saying no, it teaches us to say no. It is teaching us to say no. 
He is teaching us to say no. He's not saying no on our behalf. Who go say the no now you? He is teaching me to say no. So when the deeds of the flesh do chuku 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 and show up, there is a grace that have taught me. And let me help you. I said something some years back. I will say it again. I said you can only remember what you know. Oh. Hmm. Take for instance, you go to an exam hall. You do not read it. You do not read the thing. You not say you forgot. <laughs> ah. You did not read it. So it's the only thing the Holy Spirit will do is to remind you. So in time of temptation, it is the scripture you have fortified yourself with. That is what the Bible says in the book of John. John 16. John 16. John 16 from verse um, 12, if I'm not incorrect. He said the spirit of truth. He said when the spirit of truth is come. He said he will remind you. Aya, Ele, oh God. So in terms of... <laughs> it is your duty. It is when you have fortified yourself enough. When the trial comes, then you'll be reminded. So because the Bible says it teaches you to say no. So it is the teachings you have collected that you will now use to say no at the face of the trial. Are we getting this? He said, and when the spirit of truth is come, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on himself. He will speak what only what he, yes. Next verse, sir. There was a part where Jesus was saying, is it verse 12? But that is not our emphasis. Anyway. Hallelujah. Are we on the same page? So, the only thing that you can remember is what you have been taught. So that is where the place of Bible study, the place of prayer, the place of all this begin to contribute to your consecration. It begins to help you to tamp the flesh. It begins to help you to make sure that the flesh doesn't win always. For Jesus, do you know how Jesus tamp his own? For Jesus to say, carry me back to that scripture where Jesus said, yeah, the spirit is weak, the spirit is willing but the flesh is weak. I want to show you something. Jesus was telling his disciples that Pray and watch and pray. Mm -hmm. That is what Jesus was telling. Take note. Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. He said the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. But people you say the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. The reason why Paul, Peter, the reason why Peter betrayed Jesus was because Jesus warned him from this place. Jesus woke him up and said, pray. These guys, the Bible said, their eyes are so heavy. Jesus woke up and said, Master, their eyes were heavy. I said, we all believe it's so you. Their eyes were heavy throughout. But the Bible tells us that Jesus now said, hey, the reason why me ask people to pray, me mama, but no problem. Here comes my, the people that will come and carry me, my betrayers. He said, he said that watch and pray that you will not fall into temptation for the spirit is willing but the flesh is weak. Every time you fail in overcoming the deeds of the sinful nature, you failed in the advice Jesus gave you. There are two things constantly fighting. The spirit, the flesh. He says so you will not do what you don't want to do. So some of us are able to say no to the desires of the sinful nature is because we took this advice. We watch and we pray. So the text is to come late. I will show you something that all of us will confirm now. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 13. 1 Corinthians 10, 10 13. Are we getting it? Is it simple enough? 1 Corinthians 10 13, sir. 1 Corinthians 10 13. 4, 10 13. Jesus. Jesus. Now let's read this together. Is there no temptation as sees you except what is what? And God is what? He will not let you be beyond what you can. But when you are what? He will also do what? Provide a way out so you can stand up under heat. Wait. When God provides a way out, is the robustness of your spirit that will be able to follow the way. If you are a born, if you are a born again Christian. In fact, no. If you are a born again believer Christian. Let's use it that way. If you're a born again believer Christian, I have no, it's not, it's a lie for you to tell me that every time you are tempted, that, that the way out did not come out. You say, you are not a Christian. 
Every time you are tempted that you fall under the temptation, God always says you way out. I'll use an instance. Have you ever been to a meeting where people are abusing you and the Holy Spirit is saying, just keep quiet. Just keep quiet. You kept quiet a while. And then where you will now display your foolishness, you will now say that I'm not a fool. No, that's how I used to start. Now say, I have become quiet since I'm not a fool. Hey, wait, that would you bow The Holy Spirit that says you keep quiet, he knows what he's doing. It is the robustness of your spirit that will be able to yield to the advice the Holy Spirit is giving you there. Uh-uh. Am I the only one? How many of you have been tempted? When you are tempted, the Holy Spirit is saying, don't sorrow, don't sorrow, just keep quiet. The way out is always there. But if you have not taken to the advice of Jesus, there is no way you can say no. The flesh will still win. The flesh will still win you. All the Holy Spirit is saying, stand up now. Don't stand up now and go out. The flesh is saying, listen to the last part. Listen to the last part before you go. Just listen to the last part. Is that last part that you don't say your mother? Is it? Eh? He said, wait, Holy Spirit, you wait. I can accept anything, but not my mother. You see that my mother part, I have to defend my mother. How will I want to tell my mother at home that I, I, they say my mother, I did not say anything? <laughs> God will always provide a way out. God is not always, he will always. All those status you are going to want to check up and down that is causing you to be, have 18 people. The warning has been, for the next one week, don't go online. You wrote it down in your journal, big letter, and put it in bold. After two days, you will start checking tassels from beginning to the end. The one that caused you problem. You are the one that is saying you are in a retreat, or you jump out of the retreat. I came and watch. I pray for you. That you will always be yielded to the desires of the Spirit. In the name of Jesus. Give me Galatians. But are we getting this? Give me Galatians, sir. No, not this one. I think uh, verse 23. Yeah, 23 or 21. Uh, that one that says, if we keep in step with the Spirit. 23, sir. Let's see 21 first. 21. Pastor Sammy, give us now. Okay. Perfect. Oh, perfect. Yes, next verse. Next verse, sir. Next verse. Yes. He said, if we live in the Spirit, let us also walk do you know what this means? That means if the Spirit is giving you instruction, follow the instruction. Not just, ah, God told me, oh. ah, ah, God told me, oh. ah, God told me, ah, God told me, not you. So if you live in the Spirit, He said, let us walk in the Spirit. Can I just pray in the Holy Ghost just a few minutes? No, you can be seated, just pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray in the Holy Ghost. For in Jesus' mighty name I will pray. How many of us want to always obey God? You see, I made that decision early in life when it has helped me. For me, I pray. I don't want to force that prayer on people. But I prayed. I just want to show you the prayer I prayed. I prayed to God that, Father, don't allow me to find peace. He said, I'm outside your way. It has worked. It makes obeying God easy for me. Because 
may not find peace. Which I will do. Maybe you go do the thing. It has worked for me back to back. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's read Genesis 22, sir. And then after that, I'm going to seed. I'm going to speak on seed and we'll hand on that. Seed doing is quite easier. Obedience. Yes, sir. Genesis. All right, let's read it together. Yes, the, we said there are three seasons in a man's life, right? We said the season of isolation, which is the season where you get the promise. At that phase, it's just promise level. God is just telling you what you, you get. And then when I said the next season is the season of training, which is also called process. And we said the last season is the season of which is called the season of fulfillment of... And I said, of all this, your own part is where? The training. I said, the longevity of your training is dependent on you, not on God. That is how fast you can catch up with what God has told you. And then my wife said something during when we were taking... Um, there's one of this teaching. She said, always learn to prepare for what God promised you. Take, for instance, God promised you twins, my brother. If you are here and God promised you twins, go and do consecration for twins. It's very sisters. Hmm. Because only one baby, one, one baby, one of my friends, Dr. Abila, I think you will know him. They were trusting God for twins. They got it. Ah, he said that something about twins is they don't cry at the same time. One will be crying, and he will allow the other one. You are finished petting that one. The other one will now start. So, by the time that blessing comes, even you will cause God, that God, kill you, they Moshe. Pampas, pampas. That thing is good. Though. Ah, don't burn if you are not ready to burn. I'm telling you. Pampas, he said, 30, Kinekan thousand. The two of them, and it's two. And they thought then they, they, they will be shooting differently. <laughs> you know? So you are spending money on Pampas, spending money on different things. So most times we don't prepare for the blessing. So when the blessing comes, it's like it's a curse. So God, God has upgraded his curriculum. He makes sure you are ready before he releases it. So God can promise you, and we said the, the, the worst part is that some people just, they die in the process. They don't see the fulfillment of, the, of what God promised them. Ah, not you. Because God said you are going to live for 150 years. God gave you the promise when you were 30. You took process for 150 years. Ah! Look at Jesus, for example. From the age of 12, Jesus has woken up to his training. Jesus went to the temple. And immediately, for 18 years, they did not see Jesus. When Jesus would show up, three and a half years was okay for him. And the world is yet to recover from that three and a half years. Till now. So, you are the one that determined the longevity of the process. Now, let's look at this. And I said yesterday, that Isaac was, Abraham was not having a giving birth problem. It was having a training problem. God told Abraham that his offspring is going to be to the ends of the earth. It took Abraham 25 years. Because if it were to be a child problem, he won't give birth to his mind. So that means the guy could have given birth easily. But God said this is not a promise. This guy you gave birth to. This guy is not the one. So, under the training of Abraham, after Abraham was trained, the Bible said God still came back to test him. After he had given back to Isaac. So, that's what we want to read on obedience now. That's where we are. Now, let's go. He says, sometime later, God did what? He said to him, Abraham, here are my reply, yes. Let's read together. He said, then God said, take your son, your only... Wait, let me ask you. Was Isaac his only son? 
So that means it is the promise. And that's why I said most times. Because if God said, take your son, multi trust, bye bye. You say, look, bitch, man. To this world, fear. Yeah. God said, mm, you know, it's my one. So that is why I believe what Mike Mudder said. He said, most times, God will not ask you for what you want to give him. Mm-mm. He will ask you for the one you want to keep. That one you want to keep. That week, that week from uh, apples to A. He said, Bamu. <laughs> Bamu, so that I can pay you where? Bamu! Ah, bro, glory to God. You will obey God in Jesus' name. He said, that God, okay. Take your son, your only son, Isaac. Tell him more specific. Whom you love. Can you see that? So the one you want to keep, and go to the region of Moria, sacrifice him there as a bond offering. Uh-uh. <laughs> On one of the mountains I will tell you about, look at what he did. He said, early, he didn't waste time. Let me help you. Anytime God gives you instruction, the best way you can avoid not obeying it is do it immediately. When the energy is still high. Because if you give it breathing space, by the time you're calculating, instruction you will not Everything you will not start using your understanding as mm, God wants to test me like Abraham. Mm-mm. Your name is still Joseph. God, you know you are not Abraham. God wants to test me like Abraham. Ah, he didn't ask me to give it. No. Immediately. Don't waste time. But while you are still doing that, there's another thing I say you must learn. That when you are obeying God, your hearing must be sharp. I will show us. Your hearing must be sharp. So early in the next morning, he got up and sat in the dog table. He took it with him, two of his servants and his son Isaac. Then he had caught enough wood for the burnt offering. He set out for the place God has told him. Yes, next verse. He said, on the third day, Abra- look at how far Abraham was going just to obey God. And saw the place in the desert, in the distance, yes. He said, he said to his servants, stay here with the donkeys. Why I and the boy go over there? We worship and then we will come back to you. Worship. Obedience is an art of worship. He called it worship. So Abraham took the wood for the burnt offering and placed it on his son, and he and himself carried he and he himself carried the knife and the fire and the knife as the two of them went together. He said Isaac spoke up and said to his father Abraham, "Baba, you say we are going to sacrifice. I don't see the fire." I don't see the wood. Hey, Joe. <laughs> where is the sacrifice? I'm and then look at what he said. He said, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Yes, next verse, sir. He said, Abraham answered, God himself will provide the lamb for, for the burnt offering, my son. And the two of them went together. Yes. He said, and when he reached the place, God told him about Abraham built an altar there. I'm just imagining as he's looking at him. And I read the wood on it. <laughs> After the order was set, no, Papa Rabu, Isaac. Ah, Lua, the entire Isaac. Just, I can't, I'm just imagining when they get back home. The way, the way Isaac will be looking at him. Any call, like, let's go to the Monday, say, Emiko. I know they go any Monday again. Baba, just they go. So he took the child and bound him. But another thing is, he could have spoken to the son. Because I don't know what he would have said to the son that we are lying back. He was an old man. The guy is still young. He would have escaped home. And he bound Isaac and lay him on the altar on top of the wood. Next verse. Sir. Then he reached out his hand and took the knife to slay his son. Hmm. Hmm. There is something higher every time that can make you yield to what the Spirit desire. There is something higher. There is something higher. Look at this. But the angel of the Lord called out to him from heaven. Abraham, Abraham. Yeah, my reply. That is what I'm saying. In obedience, one key thing you must know, in obeying God, one thing you must sharpen is your hearing. Ah! You must sharpen your hearing. If it's God you want to obey, your hearing must be sharp. Because for every navigation you are trying to make, you will be hearing. And that's what the Bible says in Isaiah. It says, you shall hear a voice from behind saying this is the way working it. That is how to obey God. 
Do we get that? Do we get that? Another instance is John. John chapter 2. He said, whatever I tell you, do it. Jesus' mother told, his, told the people. He said, whatsoever I say unto you, do it. Praise God. Are we getting this? No. Are we getting it? So, but now, let me now move fast. Because that is the last part of the teaching. Which is seeds. Ah. Wait. Let's pray. Give me that, John. He said, his mother said to the servant, do whatever he tells you. Do whatever he tells you. And I love this song. Is it David Dam that sang it? But I, learned, I, I used to hear it from Apostle. He said, whatever you want to do, Lord, you can do through me. Whatever you want to say, Lord, you can say through me. Whoever you want to bless, Lord, you can bless through me. I need us to pray now. The Father, help me to always do whatever you say. I'm telling you, that is the key to abundance. That is the key to a life of change. Whatever you say, I should do. Lord, help me to always do it. Whatever, whatever, help me to always do it. You can pray this better for yourself, friends. Whatever, 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 you can pray better, friends. Whatever. You can do it better, French. You can do it better. For in Jesus mighty name have we pray. John chapter 12 verse 24. Ah, glory to God. This one I'm going to say this in passing because of our time. John 12. Give me this in KJV. Ah, glory to God. Yes, he said what? Hmm. There's something in Matthew. Ah, oh, Holy Spirit. Matthew 2, I think, if I'm not incorrect. Sorry, just give me some minutes. Matthew 3, Matthew 3, verse 10. But before we read that, please give me that, um, give me that, yes, please stay here. Just type that one, I will ask for this. Can we read this together again? Yes. But what? What is the emphasis here? Fruit. Fruit. What is our aim when we are talking about bro- broken? We said brokenness is what? Is the key to usefulness and abundance at marriage. Can we say it again? Brokenness is key to usefulness and abundance at marriage and at 
So the Bible here is saying that, and I told us that to be broken, the key to abundance in this kingdom is to be broken, right? Abundance and increase. All right. So, and I said that there can't be brokenness without debt, right? Which is why we took the mystery of debt, right? All right, now. Let's go back to, let, carry me to Matthew chapter 3, verse 10, now, sir. Matthew 3. Can, can we read this together? The axe is already where? And every tree that does not, we be. There is another story in Luke where the Bible says that there was a certain fruit that was not, there was a certain tree, fig tree that was not producing fruit. That the owner came and said, hey, Ejeka, cut it down. Let's cut this thing down. Why is it just occupying space and not bringing fruit? And then the, the gardener said, give me one more year. He said, I will dig around it and fertilize it. He said, and at the end, let's see at the end of one year, if he does not, let's cut it down. So there are some increase that God brings to you so that you can be fruitful. The man is saying, let's fertilize this thing. Let's make it more comfortable. Let's increase um, the space it has. Let's prune it. Let's do this. At one year, if it doesn't still produce fruit, we'll see what we'll do to it. So the essence of your debt and your brokenness is to an end that you produce results. It's to an end that you are fruitful. Praise God. That was where seed was battered from. The teaching seed. And I said in that teaching, because I study plants. I study seed, rather. I discovered that how many of us, I use this instance too, how many of us grew up in the village or somewhere close to the village or town? Okay, village, yeah. Have you seen any place, all this farmer, after corn, where they used to put the corn? Agbado. And when they have harvested it, that the one they want to preserve for the next planting season. No, your own village is an advanced village. Pastor Shekou, where do you put it, sir? Yeah. Uh -huh. Or in the kitchen. That one, okay, you have seen it too. Okay, she has remember. Okay, you can see that man. Do you know why they are putting that door post or in the kitchen? Or hanging it there. It's because water will nourish the, the place. And it will not fall to the ground. A corn needs a ground to die. And it's not only the ground it needs, it also needs water. Hope you know that all the ground you are seeing, it has already rained now. Hope you know that before it rained, there was seed already in the All the grasses you are seeing, they did not just come from heaven. They had their seed there. But there was no water to kill it so it can come to life. So that the seed falls to the ground and die does not mean that all the seed that are in the ground die. It means that water must be introduced to the equation for it to die. And the essence of the death is that it is water that activates the enzymes that help for the seed to die so that at its death, it can convert its death to two things, root and shoot. The root is for stability. The shoot is for fruitfulness. So for every Christian, once you don't have a root, you don't even have a hope. But the one people we see is the shoot, but the one doing the rework, rework is the shoot. So in Isaiah chapter 37, verse 31, the Bible says, and the remnant of Judah shall bear root downward. Please let me help you now. This is where process is still coming to place. Every time you are broken, there is more that the eyes do not see. There is more to you that the eyes can see. If all that we can see is all there is, there is a problem. So for a seed to really be fruitful, it must have taken root downward.
And I said in my writing, because of time, I might not be able to go through my writing. I said in my writing, I said the, the water here that is causing the seed to fall to the ground, the water signifies the Holy Spirit and the Word of God. The Holy Spirit is the, is the, is the environment that permits for your death and the Word of God. The another thing I said there is environment. You must take shoot that word. In fact, the Bible says something about the parable of the seed that Jesus gave. The Bible said there was one that fell among the rocks. He said it sprung off quickly because it does not have roots. So be careful when Oh, you are, you are not doing Bible study, you are not doing anything. People say, yes, Christian. You will soon, you will soon, you will soon wind out. Oh, there is, is the corporate one. By the time they start prayer, who, 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 I will come about it, but give me that Isaiah 37. Isaiah 37, 31. Isaiah 37, 31, sir. Very quickly, sir. He said, once more, a remnant of the house of Judah. Remnant is the one that is remaining, the one that has been ransomed. So God is saying, in a season like this, the people that will survive the time that are coming are those that have roots downward. He says that what? He said, they will take roots below. Ah, no, give me KJV. I love KJV downward. That downward part. He said they will take root downward and fruit upward. KJV, sir. He said, and the remnant that is escaped of the house of Judah shall again take roots downward and bear fruit upward. It is consecration that will allow you to build stamina downward. Do you know why the root is important? You are coming as a seed. But when you die, the first thing that you will do is take root downward. The Bible compares us to two things. The Bible compares us to plants and the Bible compares us to building. In Psalm 11 verse 3, the Bible says, if the foundation be faulty, what can the righteous do? And if the root is not strong enough, the Bible says that the guy will soon wind, wind away. So that means that there is no hope. He said, when the foundation are being destroyed, what can the righteous do? That means that your righteousness is really based on your foundation, and your foundation for a plant is the root. I say your foundation, your foundation for a plant is the root. And there is one root, there is one plant that God compares us with two. Cedar of Lebanon and palm tree. If you go and study the palm tree very well, and you study cedar very well, the first thing they do, they will take a year to take roots downward before they begin to take shoot upward. Because it is strange. Every other tree can be uprooted by the wind, but not the palm tree. Any wind that operate palm tree, they should send that wind to a fire. So in Psalm 92, in Psalm 92, from verse 12, the Bible said the righteous, he said he's like, a tr he's like the palm tree. He said the righteous will flourish like the palm tree. He said he shall grow like, he shall grow like, go and study the cedar of Lebanon, go and study the palm tree. These guys take roots downward. It takes a year before they start producing fruit. You can plant potato now and you reap it in three months, not palm tree. Even the agriculture palm tree take years. So at the face of the process of God building you, God breaking you, it will take a year for you to be broken. But if you are done broken, you will flourish. Because nothing, nothing will be able to bring you down. Nothing will be able to approach you easily. So as seeds, when you die, the most important thing in your life, there are two things that will happen after you die as a seed. 
The first one is root. The next one is shoot. The importance of the shoot is so that it can bear fruit. The fruit is to touch the world. But if you don't have sufficient root in the ground, there's problem. So you, now you can give me that Matthew 13 that you showed me the other time, sir. Matthew 13, so we can close. Matthew 13. He said in Matthew 3. Okay, perfect. Thank you, sir. No, is it? No. Give me Mark's account. I think I prefer what Mark said. Um, Mark 4. Praise God. Praise God. Are we on the same page? No, go to the root part now, Pastor. It's not Mark 4, 4. It's around 14. Around 14. This one is talking about the story of Ani. The one talking about the... Yes. Perfect. He said, and these are they by which, by the way, where the word is sown, but no, not by the way now. The one on the rock. Yes. He said, and have no root in them. And so endure it but for a time. Afterward, when affliction or persecution arise for the world's sake, immediately they are offended. So when you are broken and you are not completely broken with a root, it's just, <laughs> it's just a mirage. Your anger will soon wake up. You will soon become angry with every person. It's just a matter of time. The taking root downward is where the work begins. So when you die as a seed, there are two things that are important in your life, right? I said the number one is what? shoot the root right the number two is what and i said the root is for what stability stability durability the shoot is for what fruit so where the balance is now is that the bible says that if you are just taking shoot downward too and you are not fruitful there's problem that is where matthew 3 10 now says what he said the axe is already at the root he said, any fruit that does not, any tree that does not bring forth good tree, we say will be cut off. Not you. I need you to pray Isaiah 37 verse 31 now. That I am one of the remnants that remain. And I take root downward. I bear fruit upward in the name of Jesus. Can you pray in the name of Jesus? You can be upstanding now. This is the last thing we are going to do. Pray it better, friends. Pray it better, pray it better. I am one of the remnants that remain. I bear root downward. I take the time to bear root downward. Friends, you can pray it better, friends. You can pray this prayer better. I bear root downward. I bear fruit upward. I take my time to bear root downward. I take my time to bear root downward. I take my time to bear root downward. In the name of Jesus. You can pray better, friends. You can pray better, friends. You can pray better, friends. I take my time to bear fruit downward, to bear fruit, uh, to bear root downward, and bear fruit upward. Bear root downward, bear fruit upward. Nothing will distract me from taking the right process. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. For in Jesus' mighty name have we pray. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. That brings us to the end of today's teaching. This weekend's teaching rather on broken. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is our supply strength in Jesus' name. Can we take our confession? 
I have the spirit of wisdom and revelation. I have the spirit of wisdom and revelation. I know God better. I'm not kept in the dark in any of my life. For I've been delivered from the kingdom of darkness and translated by light into the kingdom of God's dear son. The eyes of my understanding has been enlightened. I'm reinforced and strengthened with might by the Holy Ghost in my inner man. My understanding can be darkened. My understanding can be darkened. I'm delivered from error. I'm delivered from terror. The sun can know me by day. The moon can know me by night. My coming in and my going out is blessed. My coming in and my going out is blessed. Now and forevermore. Therefore, my spirit, soul, and body is preserved, equipped, prepared, and empowered for revival. Unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Can you go up with a shout of joy? doing that for God is so small. I mean, if you are doing that for God, it's so small. Even you, you cannot hear the sound of your own clap. Let's talk of God. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a shout of praise. Glory to God. How many of us are excited to be here? You're not forced. You're not forced. Because I know if you are forced, there's a way you'll be reluctant. Like, Oh, if not, this lady, she no, she's just on my neck. Or maybe you are in a relationship here, and then your partner just say, "Come, come, that will drag you." Especially for our brothers, I know his brothers that may be reluctant to come. But if you're not forced to be here, can you give the Lord a shout of praise again? Glory, hallelujah! Just before we have our set, we're going to be celebrate. See, I'm not tired of celebrating myself. I don't have issue with low self-esteem. So if you celebrate me, say, Mama, your shoe looks good. Oh, thank you. Some people are like, really? Ah, I know. It's not really. It's not, it's not a discovery. It's not a discovery. I know. So if you know, when, I, when it gets to celebrate yourself, please do it well. Hmm? Do it well. You don't have issues with low self-esteem in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Okay, we want to celebrate uh, some married couples we have in our midst. Is it good to celebrate them? It takes a great deal to be married, though. I'm telling you, especially if you have survived the first six months of marriage. Ah, that first six months. Give the months ago. First two weeks. <laughs> first night. <laughs> okay, if you survive the first night, it's a, it's a great deal. Really great deal. So can we celebrate the married couples in our midst? Can we celebrate Mr. and Mrs. John Bailey? Can we celebrate them? Can we celebrate them? Thank you so much, sir and ma. Can we celebrate Apostle and Mrs. Ejigoe? Can we celebrate him? We love you. We celebrate you. Is Mr. Ejigoe around? Can we celebrate him in absentia? I know we. It will so come. Can we celebrate Engineer and Mrs. Ejigoe? Then, can you celebrate yourself? I'm looking at you. Celebrate yourself. Do you know something, especially for ladies, do you know that we are the one that define how to be treated, even to our men? Sure you know. If you don't love yourself, how will somebody love you right? If I say this is how I want to be loved, I always celebrate myself, I'm always happy when I wear something, I check myself like, how many minutes before the mirror? So I mean when I dress up, sir, what I'm telling you is that, venerate me, eh? Assess me. That's why I mean. So can you celebrate yourself? I mean, you don't want to be celebrated. 
Hey, you will do it plenty times in marriage. Eh? You will not go and do air. Eh? I say you should celebrate yourself now. You not go and do air. Eh? Six hours, you sit down. You now come. Now say, what is this on your head, safe? What is this on your head? What is this on your head? Please celebrate yourself. <laughs> Glory! Hallelujah. Sir, see me, see me, see me. Hallelujah. Can we have our seat? Glory to God. We are so excited to have you here. Really, we are so excited to have you here. Thank you so, so, so much. I know it's such a sacrifice. It's such a sacrifice. The Lord is our multiplied strength in Jesus' name. If we are not so busy, people standing, it's good we sit. Thank you so, so much so that we avoid distraction. Can we give us proverbs? Before we eat the ground running, I just want to do a brief introduction. You will be so blessed. Hi. I'm the one telling you. It's not we teaching. We have, we get back in. Hallelujah. So the Holy Ghost is here. In fact, the ultimate teacher himself, the counsel and the wisdom of God is here, the person of the Holy Ghost. The reason why I'm saying you will be so blessed is because of what the Holy Spirit told me while I was here. He said there will be so many things that will be coming to you. All the fears, especially the people that are, that are afraid that, okay, this, my marriage is like, you, you've, you've had so many negative experience growing up. Maybe your parents have, they didn't do marriage right and you are scared. He said, today we are kicking fear out of the door because your marriage will be good. It will not just be good, it will be best. Hallelujah. Amen, amen. Proverbs 24 and verse 3. Before we eat the ground run and ah, don't give me amplified, I beg in the name of God. <laughs> give me NIV. <laughs> give me NIV. Except you want us to expound on this very verse. Well, I'm not expounding, we just want to read it. By wisdom houses built, and through understanding it is established. Verse 4. Verse 4, through knowledge, its room are filled with rare and beautiful treasure. Why do I bring this? See, you're doing yourself so much good by you finding yourself here. you giving yourself to learning. In fact, what you're adding to your life is beauty. I'm not going, I'm not going to explain more than this. Giving yourself to wisdom, giving yourself to knowledge, giving yourself to understanding is you adding beauty to your life. How much more where the, in the matters where relationship is concerned? You are adding beauty to your relationship, even if you are not in one yet. At least you are learning. Hallelujah. And please, if you are in a courtship and you are not shy, you are not shy to identify with people that may be in courtship, can you just signify? And you are here with the person. You are not here with the person. Why now? Why now? Oh, glory. Somebody is here with the person. Glory to God. <laughs> Don't worry. They're not sitting together. So I know. I know how people will do permutation and combination. They will like, okay, which brother is sitting next to his sister? It's not this brother that rose up his hand. So don't worry. Don't think it to this brother. And don't think it to that brother. <laughs> glory to God. We celebrate you. It's good that you're on the same pedestal of learning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So what you, will you be learning? Hmm. This... This, um, this, um, what edition? April edition is a series. Hallelujah. Are we excited? It's a chain. It's a chain. Because if we still want to deal with Christian courtship just in a, uh, in a meeting, you know, my pay, go on, go join. Hallelujah. So it's a chain. We, we, the reason why I'm saying this is so you will not miss it. You are learning so many things. You are learning courtship. You are learning objectives of courtship. You are learning meeting your in-laws. You are learning courtship conversation. Ah. You are learning finance. You are learning wisdom for your wedding. <laughs> you are learning how to plan a marriage. I mean, I mean, among many other things. Please don't miss it. We are just, we're just like trying to set the foundation today. Don't miss it, though. I mean, don't miss it. <laughs> the reason why, especially me for one, or no, both of us, I'm so intentional, especially when I see ladies, is because, see, who you join yourself together with has a great deal in your life. Eh? Whosoever you carry like this, I say, come and join me in the journey of destiny. Ah, oh, serious, though. So the reason why you cannot afford 
afford to choose wrongly. And why are we so particular about ladies? It's because the right to choose lies in your hand. It's the brother, okay, for people that were here last month, we did propose that, right? It is the brother that does the asking. So if you ask, you can say no. So the right to choose, the right to decline lies in your hand. That's why we are so intentional about ladies. And till Jesus come, we will always see more ladies in relationship program than men. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Please celebrate yourself one more time. So let's just proceed. And before we proceed, can we see this clip? Can we see this clip before we proceed? I'll just take the introduction to courtship, then we will fly from there. Let's see this clip. Does something to you the next time? There won't be. Oh, no, don't, no, don't, don't say there won't be a next time. That man is throwing out all kinds of red flags. And now you want to just go and marry him? I can't, and I will not stand for this. If you go and you go and do that, I won't be there. I won't. June, this is a mistake. Mm -hmm. And yet, there I was walking down the aisle with more questions in my head than petals in my bouquet. I couldn't help but look over at the empty seats where my sister should have been sitting. I couldn't believe they didn't come, but I should have understood seeing as how I wasn't even sure why I was there. There was Sarah at the altar, my maid of honor cheering us on. She loved the thought of us, I guess I did too. But the thought of us was better than the reality of us. And there was Robert, standing at the altar, smiling. As I walked, moth to a flame. I now pronounce you husband and wife. You may kiss the bride. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. So short, but then so many sorry, wisdom. Sorry. Okay. Please, me the airport work at this sandal. I don't yeah. know why. I, I, I didn't hear know. anything actually. That's true. Did you hear? Oh. The sandal is already booster. Please, airport fix it against the the next video thank you okay. hallelujah praise the name of the lord i said this clip although so short but then a lot of wisdom to actually glean from this a lot of wisdom to glean a lot of wisdom to glean this is the story um something wrapped up from the period of proposal Although they didn't show us courtship, but we believe maybe they were even not, even not two years of courtship, at least few seconds of courtship. <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> so from the period of proposal to what we saw, down to when she was walking down the hall. Glory to God. We'll be referring to the clip, but I hope we have seen it. So when we are referring to it, we will understand. Let's just eat the ground running. Hope we are here with our writing materials. Hallelujah. There is Iga Wayo. There are some things you have to go back to. It's not everything you can actually put in this your brain. There are some things you have to just, okay, let me get to, let me get to my book. What did they say? Yeah, 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 yeah. Sure you understand. So that is why we're right. And it may not necessarily be, even if you're not here with um, pen and a paper, you can type on your phone. Let's eat the ground running. What is courtship? I thank God because we are getting to do courtship after we did proposal last month. Hello. Hey. So that the day that the brother will now come, you will assume that you're already caught in. And then you'll be hoping that, okay, one day the brother will print card. And then you just find, ah, if that one, a baptism man named Mita Mary. Ah, my baptism man name is Deborah. You will have to look where I say, ah, I'll be what am I saying? <laughs> Hello. Courtship is not assumption. Courtship is not assumption. Until she has said yes, she has not said yes. Hello, brothers. So you it won't be uh uh with all everything I did. I even paid school fees. I even did this. I bought things for her mom. Until she has said yes, that thing is not binding. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And until the brother ask you out, ask. There must be an asking. You know, we said it last uh, last month. Proposal. 
making a request until the brother requests. Don't just think, okay, we are close in church. Ah, uh-uh, brother John, how are you now? Hey, brother Israel, our service today, and you think something is going on? Hey, don't get it twisted. <laughs> Don't get it twisted at all. It will shock you. Until there is an asking, there is no, there is no asking. Or until you are married, you are not yet married. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. So now, what is courtship? What is courtship? Okay, I have about how many definitions here? Okay, let's just go. One, the period of courtship starts upon the approval of a proposal. The period of courtship starts upon the approval of a proposal. The period of courtship starts upon the approval of a proposal. It's just the start of the beginning. It's not the end. Ah, you just start. You just start. And like I always say, you don't wait to get to marry. You don't wait to get into marriage before you start. It's a foundation. How your marriage will look like is already determined in the period of your courtship. I tell you, there is no shocker anyway. There is no shocker that you are waiting to happen to in marriage. There is no shocker anyway. Whatsoever the marriage will look like, begin to set the foundation for it, and that is the period of courtship. Although it is not marriage yet. It is not, you, you won't get to see another definition. It is not marriage yet, so that you will not begin to... Now, okay. In Kotei, in your banal so for people that don't understand your is what you fail to say. That's what people are wrong with. When I say it's like a preamble to your marriage, now I'm not saying sex and kissing. You know. She, she, she understand. I'm not saying all those ones. We will get there. I say it's a series. So don't let me jump ahead of my time. Number two definition. It is the period where you verify your choice, <laughs> whether you got it or missed it. It is the period where you verify your choice, whether you got it or missed it, and examine compatibility on all levels. It is it's deep. I, w- I want you to actually get the definition. It is the period where you verify your choice. Whether Mungwa Boyani at that point, <laughs> say, say, God told me. God told me. And do you know, they may, it, may be, it may be that you actually heard wrongly, and it may be that you heard rightly, but the person that you heard for is not aligning. So if the person is not aligning, you cannot say you are binded. Ah, all on the soft me, all on the soft me. Go back backslide in the process, all on the soft me, all on the soft me. Go back my drink in the process, or carrying uh, different babes, or don't let me just face the, God help me to balance both genders. Go back my shay. Patterns in the course of courtship. That's why I say is, is this uh, definition is like you are checking. It's a period where you check. This thing I had though, Ejeka will go. Are we understanding? Because some people will like, ah, God has told me. God has told me. It's the will of God. It's the will of God. I tell you, people can be outside the will. They can misalign. Are we understanding? Do we get this um, definition? I should run it again. It is the period where you verify your choice, whether you got it or missed it. And don't be a, a lord of all, like, ah, I can never make a mistake. When I put my hand like this, <laughs> ah, koimis, <laughs> koimis, eh, what's that, volita, uh, uh, this remote, surely, eh, legit, ne? Uh, Hey, there is no. Sometimes it may be that you didn't hear clearly. Oh. Don't be like her. I don't miss it. When it comes to hearing God, me, once I do like this. In fact, when it comes to my left ear, legit. It's not legit. Legit. Hallelujah. Third definition. Are we getting blessed already? It's good we set this foundation. It is not the time to start marking attendance in all the restaurants. Or be blinded my intimacy. <laughs> Courtship is not the time. I will give a balance to this, though. 
before you guys come and hold me. <laughs> it is not the time to start marking attendance in all the restaurants or be blinded by intimacy. Now that even the latest restaurant, Kilimanjaro Abi, is it the latest? Even me, I don't know. Because even when I was in courtship, I did not go to uh, I'd not see it. <laughs> why, 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 why are you, no, why are you looking at that side? <laughs> they didn't take me anyway. But this is the balance. I'm not saying it is wrong. But that is not the time to start visiting at the expense of what re, uh, courtship is really intended for. Do we understand it? You may go once in a while. Because let me say also, Tobat in the Lemo Lemo. And see, you are not a saver. If you are the one influencing it, brother, if you are the one, uh -uh, you are a financial wrecker. Every time, every time she comes visiting, or oh, you just have to meet, let's meet at Sydney. This one, let's meet at Kilimanjaro. That's the one I know. I've not been there. Moka money, I've not been there. I've not been in any. It's, it's good, but not so much that you go, but not at the expense of what you ought to do in courtship giving attention to what courtship is actually intended to, to, um, to actually work out for you before marriage. So that's why you need to ask questions. You may not like, write it down. I'm just, I just want to stick to my note because if not, I will just be going here and there. Going here and there. So that's when you need to ask questions based on their core values spiritually. What are their beliefs about biblical doctrine? Don't I said it in person? Maybe we don't we didn't get to um, we didn't get to emphasize it last month that you are in the same church or that they are Christian does not mean that you are on the same spiritual wavelength. Do you know? I'm t is Catholic not a Christian? Is um, sorry, I mentioned denomination. There is nothing wrong with it. So, I what I mean is, if you believe this particular doctrine in the Bible, then your partner must also believe same, because that is where conflict actually stem from. Yeah. Ah, <laughs> I believe in tithing. Now, no, I let's say giving. I believe in giving, and this is my husband, Jesus. Can we celebrate this, my man of God? He's a crazy giver. He will just tell you, maybe we have a need, self. <laughs> 2020, glory to God. 2018, lockdown. That's when my husband would just say, I just feel. Uh, no, it's not feel. It doesn't say feel. He said, the Holy Spirit leads me to give this person 200,000. <laughs> okay. I don't carry my leg like this. No, it's just. Because that is where conflict actually stem from. Ah, <laughs> I believe in tithing. Now, no, I, let's say giving. I believe in giving. And this is my husband, Jesus. Can we celebrate this, my man of God? He's a crazy giver. He will just tell you, maybe we have a need, self. <laughs> 2020, glory to God. 2018, lockdown. That's when my husband would just say, I just feel. Uh, no, it's not feel. It doesn't say feel. It said, the Holy Spirit leads me to give this person 200,000. <laughs> okay. I don't carry my leg like this, no. It's just because of teaching. I can be so dramatic. I don't do like that. So I'm like, wow, glory to God. And that's why, Abi, sir, if I'm lying, say, okay. <laughs> I say, oh, wow, glory to God. But he gives crazily. And then, you on the underhand, I'm talking about being on the same spiritual wavelength. So this is the time that you both sit down in the period of worship. Then you sit down, you agree. And you, you actually... Um, how would I say it? You weigh your viewpoints when it comes to all these biblical doctrines. Imagine the person is not a giver, and the person is like, I don't understand. What do we have in this house? Why do you have to give the person? Hey, I know that gave me lost soul. You will let her sow me for people that don't understand you. You will let her sow me at the end. You will let her give me when you don't have anything to give. Just ah, what can I give you? Because you're a crazy giver. Ah, I sow my wife. Some people can be like that. But in the period of court, that is when there's something I don't know if I still remember. I just want us to know we are on the same um we are on the same level of agreement when it comes to this issue. And I brought it, that was when the issue of uh, Pastor Chris Oyakilome and the wife, blah, 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 blah. If you don't know it, forget about it. Forget, actually, forget about it. <laughs> I will not say don't forget about it. So I was asking him that, okay, what is your um, viewpoint about uh, men of God that just go, that just, they can stay, they can declare 40 days without their wife? And then what is your viewpoint about uh, having... 
an opposite sex as your PA, as your secretary, blah, blah. I was not serious. Because if I was serious, he was like, why? There are some questions. Ah, I'm jumping. Cut your conversation. I can just say it in person. It's not the deep one. There are some questions you just ask. Not that you now say, oh, here, sit down. Sitting down, they're already putting their guards up. Like, what does she want to say? But there are some that is just in course of, I can't say I'm sorry, you're just just saying, hey, babe, what do you think about this particular? And I say, eh, ah, it's all just as you ask casual. I wonder if my answer casual. But do you know that out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speak it? Uh -huh. So at the point that he's answering, you're like, okay. Then you observe mannerism. Don't just observe what people are telling you. Observe mannerism with which they speak. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, this is his viewpoint about this. And, oh, wah, wah, wah. and that's how I got my answer. We never talked about it. The reason why I was asking the question is so that I can know that we are on the same level. We are on the same page. We will never have issues as regards this. And it will never be a point of discussion when we get married. But some people, it's not courtship some people do. It's touchship. Um, hey, get. It's not courtship, touchship, touch, 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 uh, touch, touch, but that's get, Abby. T O U C H. That's what some people do. But when we get there, this introduction is getting longer, Abby. Let me quickly round up. <laughs> but we are getting blessed, right? So that's when you talk about his core values, his moral values, his social values. What kind of friend does he keep? You may be surprised that the, the fact that you meet them in church <laughs> doesn't mean that it's automatically validated them to be good. Ah, like my one of my uh, mentor will say, he say church is like an hospital. Uh, I want to respond to the treatment. I want to respond, man. <laughs> I want to respond. I want to respond. Don't get it twisted. When you go to hospital, you see an um, aunt. Um, this person should be, should be discharged tomorrow. And you see another person, ah, why should be the new fresh? This person we have to, that's how church is. That you meet them in church doesn't automatic, automatically validate them to be good. You test them. The period of courtship is testing. I always love to say this, although jokingly, that is the period you play FBI role on yourself. You are the student, you are the teacher as well. Ah, you are learning, you are teaching. Are we understanding? So you know the kind of friend they keep? That's when you talk about financial, uh, financial value. What are their values financially? Are they giving? Okay, I've, I think I've said that in person. So courtship is not where you choose who to marry. It is when you test your choice. Write that down. Courtship is not where you choose who to marry. You already ask. Choosing is like, okay, I want to lay no going back. It's the period when you test your choice, choice is in your maker, eh? let's test it. And do you know that dating, let me quickly say this in person, dating has no routine in the Bible. If you check the patterns of the scripture, you will know that people ask, will you, it's like for marriage. People don't ask that, okay, can we just check ourselves out? There is no checking out in the Bible. If you're a Bible student, let's quickly run it from Genesis down to if you're a Bible student, people don't check themselves out. Too. They go ask. So you will know that courtship as is written in the Bible, not dating. And I'm not saying uh, friendship, or, or, of course. Uh, mm. I'm not saying being friends. But courtship itself, it as is written in the Bible, not dating. Dating, you are examining yourself. Imagine after you have examined one, examined two, examined three, examined four, then the person you now get to marry, you now say that, ah, ah, come, oh, okay, she has number four. That fourth lady, uh, like she gets more. Ah, number two, she doesn't have this here. So it's not actually nice that you get to test, 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 test. And can I also say in person, if you are 30, you are not available for dating. Why am I even saying 30? If you are 25, you are not available for dating. You are not available for year wo. I mean, you don't understand year wo. If you don't understand what I just said, you don't understand it, right? Ask somebody beside you. Yeah, the only one. <laughs> if you don't understand, they were here. Yeah, if you are 25, you are not available for that. Oh. You are available for serious something, serious business. So if anybody is coming, I say, okay, let's just let's just see how it goes. If you are friends, friends, not that okay, we are exchanging relationship values. You know, it's relationship you are doing. But the guy said, okay, we are just friends. But you, you know that this thing is like relationship. 
have you seen something like that before? You are not available for that. Hello, it may shock you. Some people can be in that zone, sir. Some people can be in that zone for 10 years. At least if I've not seen, I've heard. PK said it. He said up till now. The person has done 10 years with first, first person, done 10 years with second person, that up till now is still not married. So if that is what your relationship is looking like, the guy just said, ah, let's just, but you, you know that this thing is looking like relationship. It's not like normal friends. If you are, okay, for example, if I'm relating with my husband in a way that is different from the way I relate to other brothers, I'm not saying it's my husband, like we are in a setting that I'm giving special attention, special treatment. His cooler is different. I say, ah, don't let us go there. I love shaking tables. Don't let me go to cooler ministry. All of you doing that. Oh, here is your case. Or to, or where? God may, uh, God, Holy Spirit may push me in your direction. But if I'm doing that to a particular person, you yourself, you know, you're already in something, not defined. You're already in situationship. So if somebody keep you in that zone for long, and the person now later say, ah, I've checked you out, and, eh, where ma? They will not say it like that. Though. I've checked you out, but if I say, you know, fit, can we just part with for how many years? For many years, and like PK, we always say, he say, as ladies, oh God, I'm dragging this so much. God help me. I want to round up. This introduction is getting too long. If you're a lady doing like that, doing a situation, they are checking you, they are dropping you, they are checking you, they are dropping you, your availability for consideration from other men is reducing. Why? You are 30, you have option to marry 31 and above. Or let's just say 30 and above, marry your... Because in this side of the world, our Africans, we don't believe that ladies should marry somebody younger than. We don't believe both. They are both, both, both. You can ask the question. You may want to write that down. I don't want to go deep. You may write it down. We answer later, later in question and answer. But if you are a guy, even if you're 50, your option increase. You have to mar you can marry 49 and below. Because if you're a lady and you are doing situation up and down, I'm saying this because of the statement I made that if you're 25 and above, you are not available for dating. You are available for serious thing, courtship. That's what you are available for. She is serious, sir. Be serious. Don't let somebody come and say, let's just, cause let's just. Amen. 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 If you're 30 and above, you have. I want Baba like 40, 60. Is that if you come and carry some notice like 60 years old for me? You know, I will counsel you. I will not counsel you. <laughs> That's a joke. But if it's a guy, the options are plenty. Plenty. So you cannot be available for dating, but courtship. Serious business. Mm, glory to God. Oh, good, good. Thank God. Thank God I'm done with the introduction. So the next thing, I, I don't know if you, if you got that. I will say it again. Courtship is not where you choose who to marry. It is when you test your choice. It's good that you test your choice. The reason why you are testing is because you, may, you might have made a mistake. You, I'm telling you, don't, don't say you are your assistant Holy Spirit. Ah, we don't make me an Holy Spirit, eh? You will hear something and say, ah, it be like sitting in my mind, they tell me that time. It be like sitting in my emotion, they tell me that time. Ah, that is the reason why there is need for courtship. You be always hear, a broken courtship is better than a... Even if your introduction is tomorrow. Uh -uh, I'm an example now. We were supposed to do introduction when the guy came around. I think maybe in two weeks' time. It's not the elaborate introduction, but family introduction. And uh, we said we are not doing it again. Seven years. Imagine. I put myself. They did not put me. I put myself in a situation. No, it was not easy. I was in a relationship, actually. This one was defined. But I put myself in a fix for seven years. And I was... No, don't let, don't let me say I was, I, was, I was wise enough. No. God helped me to actually break up. You think it's easy? What parents will say? What friends will say? Especially friends. They will so much laugh at you. What big sisters will say, especially for people that have known you together, and God in his mercy helped me to break a relationship of seven years. So no matter how long you've gone, if you are, if you are in the period of testing, I mean the period of caution where you test your choice, and it's not working, you drop it. You drop it. You drop it. <laughs> it is what God is saying, not what God said. Hallelujah. 
it is what God is saying now, not what God said. The reason is because I will use Abraham as an example. If Abraham had run with what God said, he will kill Isaac. Bible students, the way you are making me look at it, we, 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 we will just be opening scripture. If Abraham ran with what God said, he will kill Isaac. If you know here, I will look up, there is a ram there. <laughs> but Isaac, yeah, what did you run by? Hallelujah. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Glory to God. Can we celebrate my man of God? <laughs> Hallelujah. I am a woman under authority because the reason why you are celebrating him is because I'm handing over the mic to him. I've talked too much. Abby, I've talked too much. Can we celebrate my man of God? My man of God, Pastor Jeremiah James. Glory to God. Right now, we're going to be going to objectives of courtship. Why? Please sit down. God bless you. Why courtship? Because when we all say, uh -uh, when we already say you are the one now, uh, yeah, can we just not? walk down the high already there is a reason there is something that courtship is supposed to achieve that's where we want to go now objectives of courtship i celebrate you sir god bless you all right praise god hallelujah um i would love us to celebrate ourselves again Woo! Can we celebrate ourselves? Glory. sincerely if 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 i had my way see as i am here like this I'm tired. That is the truth. I'm very tired. I've been see. I've been quite. I was just coming back from one long meeting. <laughs> so I quickly drive home, carry my family, and I'm coming here. So just pardon me. Naturally, I, I joke, but today's one I'll be more serious. I'm telling you. The only thing in my mind now is, in Jesus' name, I will pray. We don't go in. I'm tired, sincerely. But God is my strength. Hallelujah. So don't mind if it came last month and you laugh and then you're not like, ah, who will offend him today? Nobody. It's tiredness. <laughs> I'm being tired. Hallelujah. And um, you see, when, when, when you know a lot, there will be a lot to say. So when my wife was taking the introduction, I said, she has finished this thing. Yeah, I'm a lowly. Because she's vast. She knows a lot. Now, let me help you. Let me quickly help you now. I'm not ashamed to say my wife is certified. And me, I'm a pastor. You see, wait, I'm not helping you. One of the most difficult advice, one of the most strangest advice I've seen that are giving people that spoil their relationship and courtship came from pastors that are not trained. So let me help you. That his preaching is in fire. It's just like saying that, hope you know that a medical doctor is not a surgeon. That somebody is a medical doctor, you not, you not say that he should come and operate on you. You will die, you. I'm the one telling you. So the fact that the man is a pastor does not make him a counselor. So that's why I'm always helping you people. So that when you have relationship matter, me, the only thing I'll go, I'll go to God, I'll go and start reading books. Somebody's already trained. Why should we waste our time? That she received the training to see, she has three certifications. Is it three? Oh, yes. Three international certifications. Uh -huh. What about your hand? <laughs> so, when she's talking, and that's why when they were talking, when they were introducing the, this in the real time, they make mention of scriptural, scientific, and what? And statistics. I am here, you see, that's why my own tab is big. I'm here for the scriptural. That is going to be me, no. So, so when is when the scripture when they say where is it in Bible? Okay, John two. <laughs> where is eleven five? Another thing that happens is see when you choose right. See one of the reasons why you have to choose right is so you can divide yourself. Like these few weeks, what me and my wife are able to achieve together, especially with the introduction of um, Princess Elion, ah, it's plenty. Why me I'm here, she can be there. Why she's here, me I can be here. So we are doing different things to achieve the same goal. That is one of the essence of marriage. So when you marry right, it's easier. So I'm saying all of this story to say that all the things is not most, except for scriptures. All the things I'm going to tell you now. They, you see, I've been trying to stay on track. I've been reading it. So 
All these things, I'm going to tell you now. My wife prepared it. Uh -uh. So you should celebrate her. See, the essence of always making reference, especially if you want to sound deep, you go there and say, I have studied it. When there is issue about the thing, you are still the one that will go and defend it yourself. So as a stand up, we have gone through this together, I think like twice. We have gone through it together, and I think I'm okay with everything that I see here. But she prepared it. So, it's, you, you are in a safe hand, I'm telling you. We don't, you see, if it's, if it's for, if it's about opinions, it will be my against yours. So our only stance now is scriptures. So anything you want to say now, don't worry, ask your questions. If you say I should give you seven scriptures, seven. Because anything we want to say is not as if we just wake up and say statistics. We are, uh, do you know the statistics? You see, anytime someone is telling you that you can't find it, the person is lying. Anything that you are saying should be found. You say, check the scripture, check the scripture, check the scripture, check the scriptures, seven scripture, eight. Those are the people I can remember for now. But can we just do something? Can you hold somebody close to you and pray in the Holy Ghost? The essence of our praying in the Holy Ghost is so that our understanding can be heightened. Our understanding can be heightened. You can pray it for yourself that, Father, let my understanding be heightened. In the name of Jesus. I didn't say whisper. I said pray. Pray in the Holy Ghost, friends. There's something it does to your spirit. It puts you in a position where you can learn. It puts you in a position where you can, you can comprehend. Pray, pray, friends. Now, can you take it higher? Can you just take it higher a bit? Take it higher. Prakesefai, paria naimondes, mika fele para minando fela. Oh, shabara kete balafiraha. Pandele ko sekele braka tembolo sufenis. Ribolobo shapara bagida hafera. Thank you, Jesus. For in Jesus' mighty name, I will pray. I need to, I need you to make sure your mind is here. There are people and there are authorities. Don't get me wrong. Go. You can have opinion, but you might not be an authority in that field. As far as me, I know my authority. You see, inside mission, if you want prophetic healing, teaching, um, it's default. You don't understand? That one is default setting. But another area where you have to... Why should I even go and be doing... Somebody is... Authority in that feed. I don't need that authority ship in that feed. In fact, somebody said something I love. He said, for married people, any person that is knowledgeable in a certain area should lead. In fact, that is how you are. How you, know you are a leader. It's not the one that you, you are the one carrying the. You don't know anything. You just carry your head and there. So, when you know you are a leader, is to give ways more capable in that. Let the person lead. At the end, they will still say, uh -huh. if you leave here and say you came for inside mission, you didn't say you came to Lois James. It's still inside mission. So, can we celebrate my wife again? <laughs> She's, she is a relationship authority. No, you can't celebrate my wife like this. <laughs> Visit us, see how we do it. You can do it better. <laughs> All right, praise God. Now, like she said earlier, please, let's all be seated. Every other person that is standing, please sit down. For now, let's all be seated so that we can, we can enjoy this together. All right, I read and I study a lot, a lot. So when I discover that family life is one of the pillars upon which insights we stand, I started reading in that area. I started listening to messages in that area, but I did not do any course in that area. My wife did, praise God. That being said, Objective of courtship. Let's write. We have a number of objectives we are going to mention between ourselves. Objective of courtship, that is what courtship is meant to achieve. Now, 
It is at the altar of yes I do that there is a point of no return, not courtship. You are, especially for the sisters, you have two yeses to give. If you miss the second yes, don't miss the second one. If you miss the first yes, don't miss the second one. The proposal he came to propose, he didn't say that you are married. He just said, will you marry me? You said yes. So it is at the stage of marriage, that is, you give the second yes and you are married. That they, and you, I take you thereby, whichever one they gave you in your church, yes and you said yes that is the second yes that one they married that one is sealed are we getting it so the first yes you give for proposal it, you can be no and the only phase where you get to change it to no or maintain your yes is that courtship and you can't last month we said you can't say yes to a stranger a stranger cannot just kneel down and give you all the ambience in a and uh, maybe you are, your dream has been that somebody will give you ambience in, sh in short right. All of a sudden, you just saw this huge brother, a stranger. You just knelt down and said, will you marry me? He said, I'm shocked. I'm shocked. You can die of that shock. I'm the one telling you. I'm shocked. Ah, how do you know this is my dream? Hey. There is also nightmare in dreams. Though. I'm telling you. So, your yes, I do is the only point of no return, not courtship. So, at courtship, you can always say no if you check against these objectives are we getting it no are we getting it now yes, so until you are married you are not married until you are married you are not yet married now i'm going to take the first objective the first objective of courtship that is why do you court is to consolidate your conviction please write it that's the first one that is why are you giving why did you give courtship why did you give that yes i yes will you marry me yes he gave you the ring in your been holding the diamond ring up and down stops and then so one of the things courtship will help you to do is to consolidate your conviction maybe what you saw is still valid that is the essence that is one of the the i will need the second video soon so please let's get set i didn't say you play it yet but i will need it all right now you can also write this down courtship should lead should please take note should lead to marriage only if it turns out to confirm that it wasn't a mistake now some people that miss the proposal part you may not understand all these things we are saying actually that should your shot that we did because there we already create structure we gave how you can make a mistake god said it's not the final destination and for the brothers we said it now that the father god said does not mean that in fact god said is just one out of the five steps uh brothers god said it's just one step out of the five steps you need to marry we said the first one is what is need which is where God will say. It was when God saw that there is a need in a man. That I say it's not good for a man to be alone, right? So it is when you need a wife that that one that is when God can now say that, hey, go and marry um, Juliet, go and marry uh, Yetunde, go and marry Mary. That is a need, right? When I say after that need, there are all that four things before you are even married. Four, four other things. After the need, the next thing you do is read. So after you have, that's when you now begin to consult, you begin to check the person out before you even go and ask. Read. Then after read, what is the next one, brothers? Eh? Feed. That is, after you have consulted your spiritual parents, you have consulted your mentors, you have consulted your Bible, you have consulted the Holy over and over again, you, you have seen the need, you have read about the need, now go and feed the need. If the need that you went, which is the wife you said you found, if she said no, what did I say you should do? Eat. At that point, eat. The no is no. Just move on. Then you go and start the process again. Go back to need. Then if she say yes, eat to the yes. Don't go and tell 100 sisters. Eat to the yes. 
and then you begin to, to lead. You begin to lead that relationship. You begin to lead that courtship. So that God told you, can you see the journey you have? God told you, and you think it's strong enough to go and marry? God told you, are, are you joking? Like God said you are my wife, and she said, if God said that I am your wife, why am I to say no? Ah, you are somebody, sir. Ma, rather. Who are you? You are you to say no. <laughs> so are we getting it? So it's only at this point, it's only at the point of um, courtship should lead to marriage only if it turns out that you confirm that what you what you what you said is isn't a isn't a mistake do we get that it gives you a chance to reconsider your conviction at the courtship level now courtship must not end in marriage please say it to somebody close to you we already said should and then we are now coming with must Please take note of all those words. They are, if you, you can go and check your Bible, or I say Bible, your dictionary later, for should and must. Courtship, it doesn't matter who, courtship must not, must not end the marriage. Now, let's see this clip now. The second one. I'm so sorry. You look great. Mama. You must have been very hungry. What do you like to eat? The usual. The usual. You see, actually, the Lord was dealing with me this morning about all our visions and ministry. Yes, yes, and that was why I, I was late. You know, the Lord showed me something, and, and it's like, uh, no, it's so amazing, so great. I, I really love it. The Lord was speaking to me in the book of Genesis 13, and no, it was about the story of Abraham and Lot. And you know, Abraham and Lot, they could not stay together in the land because the land was too small to accommodate both of them. And you know, because Lot was actually a distraction to Abraham. And Abraham saw Lot as somebody who is not allowing him to receive the best from God because they have constant rifts and uh, a lot of disagreements. So Abraham decided to move the motion by, by leaving Lot. And then it was then there was a renewal of covenant. And then the Lord renewed the covenant for Abraham. The Lord now told me that it's time for me to leave my lot before he can open doors unto divine upliftment and ministerial breakthroughs. Okay, so who does this lot represent? She's the church. The church? Yeah, my church. The Lord is leading me to leave the church because the church has become a distraction just as Lord was to Abraham. Hey, and the Lord is leading me to go to full-time ministry. Okay, I can understand you wanting to leave the church. I have no issue with that, actually. But God telling you to go into full-time, what does that mean exactly? Debbie, you should understand as in going to serve the Lord full-time in ministry. What's going to happen to your job? Especially the 150,000 naira salary we're pursuing. Debbie, I, I resigned. You did what? I, I, I resigned. Like, they called me and I told him I was not interested. Even the 150,000 naira job, I told him I was not interested. They called you? Yes, they did. They offered you the job? They offered me the job. And you said that? Yes. We need money to run a home. We need growth to run a home. The law will sustain us. Plus, she'll be working and doing some other things while I face the ministry full time. Oh, so you plan on banking on my income? Debbie, you need to 
chance. And then, if, if, I go to back and go that try, if God miss your income, then so be it. John! Debbie, what is it? Can two work together except they agree? No, they can't. Then we can't work together. How do you mean? We are done! Don't, don't, don't do it with what actually. Done with us! I don't, I don't understand. We're on a different frequency. We can't work. Tell me. I have an introduction this next week. A broken introduction is better than a broken marriage. Ha! Baby! My, my, my mom has been calling. She calls every night. She can't wait to see you. Debbie, she calls you a daughter. I have a mother. So she's definitely not my mother. So tell her that I'm sorry, but my is made up. It's over. Baby, that's too harsh. Sorry, sir. For some time now, I've been observing you. You've not touched your food. What's the problem? My fiancé broke up. Oh. Oh, sorry, sir. I'm sorry. That must, that must be very painful thing, sir. Sorry. No, no. That's not you. That's not you. It's not beyond what you can handle. I think there are other things to deal with. To dan 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 to waste my tear oh. on the sister, my redeemer lives. God does not forsake me. He still loves me. God loves me. I know, I know. I know. But I know. I, I will not waste a single tear. A single tear on the sister. No, I won't. Something he said. That's why he asked us to stop. We say courtship must not end in what? Now, I, I want to ask us a question actually. He said we had dreams, we had visions, we had commitments. My question is, where did they miss it? So that means visions, dreams, commitments is not enough to jump into a marriage. See, 
that we both sang in the choir, you are seeing, oh, the James, one person is on the keyboard, another person is on guitar. You are not modeling your mood. That is not, it's just once a month we do that now. Do you know how many months are in a year? Do you know, okay, that is 12 days in a year. It's never up to 12, because December we're always free. So, you say, hey, 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 we have the same vision, my brother. If the vision is valid, at Yetikba, the dreams is valid, at Yetikba, the commitment is valid, at Yetikba, is that all you, you Are you really serious? That that is all? Hope you know that he's born again and born again, he's not even also enough. That God said to the two of us, we don't make our marriage work. So what exactly are you supposed to be looking at when you, you are saying that you are going to go and get married? We had dreams, we had visions, we had commitments. She threw everything in the trash because the compatibility level did not work. They were obviously not compatible. If you have seen Bemi, the actually this is an excerpt from Bemi. She was watching um, Roberto and what is his name of? And the brother was always sharing revelation. Always sharing visions, always sharing revelation. When the person that he had visions, he had dreams, he had vision, he had commitment and compatibility came on board, it was easy. So you can't just, if you score three over 10, you are, you are a F student, sir. F. So there are plenty things you really need. And that's why, thank, see, just thank God that you're not married yet. Especially if you're not married yet. For those of us that are married yet, we are married though. There's another one for married people. You don't understand? That one, your job is helping them correct the one that, <laughs> that they didn't pick right. But of course, there are touchables and untouchable compromises too. There are some things that a person cannot just change overnight. You have to give him the, you will see him that, okay, this guy has a witness, but he's willing to change over time. And that is why you check your visions. If it complements with yours, fine. You check the weaknesses, can you undo them? That is another one. If you check the, the strength, ah, this strength complements mine. What of the weaknesses? Can you undo the weaknesses? Do they piss you up? Do you people always do WWE at the end of your argument? By the time you finish argue, see, let me help you. As couples, where you will know the true state of your partner. No, not a couple safe. As people in courtship or as people in relationship, how you know the true state of your partner is when you have disagreement. If he have sent you home, he have sent you to your village, he have sent you everywhere, he said, sorry, I was joking, I, I didn't know. My brother, I'm sorry, my sister, by the time you, you, he will turn you to punch him back at home, he still don't know, because, you know, he has anemia, his brain, he doesn't do you notice. Know things. So, he will not know. So, when you are checking that, okay, you have checked this, you have checked this, you have checked this, if the guy still did not pass, you don't go ahead. At this level, that a broken courtship is hundred. In fact, you are not a divorcee. In fact, that's why there is no courtship or something like that, if there's anything. There are these people that couldn't control their, that couldn't continue their courtship. They now say, okay, these are courtship. You know what I'm Nothing like that. You just move to that. But there's something very important my wife said. Which is why you have to get it right. The fact, because we need to stress this, the fact that we say that every courtship should not lead to marriage does not mean it should be in hundred courtship. Yes, that ah, uh, saw the James. They said that courtship should not lead to marriage. Yeah. You spend seven years here, yeah, you spend two years here. Yeah. See, your chances, especially if you're a lady, yeah. your chances begin to reduce. Yes, your chances begin to reduce. Your chances begin to reduce. Then you begin to attend wedding of the the girl that shit in your hand. And I say, ah, what you marry here? He say, ah, if you move here, but he say, ah, auntie, I'm not binuma. Say, but me tie gele. Ah, not you. Not you. Not you, Jesus. So that is why you, you see, don't just be jumping, don't just enter and say, I have the time. Now, let me tell you under the seat of the devil. The devil will present you with you have time. Yes, sir. Hmm. You don't. This time you don't have time. Yes, sir. Thank you. You don't have time, oh. They see hmm. you don't have time. Let me just end like you are. You don't have time. Whether you are, if you finish school early, or you anything you did early, just do everything early. You do. It, why? Do, why, uh, why are you doing MBBS in your relationship? You finish MBBS, you move to PhD. Only you. It's not correct. 
It's not good. That is why you should get it. Only you are almost an emeritus in courtship. No. But we pray in the name of Jesus. Now listen. There are spiritual, see, there are spiritual reasons for delay. There are cultural reasons for delay. And there are natural reasons for delay. Which side do you belong? If it's spiritual, you are here, it will end. Amen. If it's cultural, what is cultural? Cultural means that you are not cultured. I'm not talking about your culture. That is, you are not cultured. There is a difference between your culture and being cultured. For those that did that are science students, you know when they are caught, when they culture something, like this microbiology, when you culture a thing, it's like you are cultivating that thing. Do we get it? Are we on the same page? So if it is if it is it is it is a cultural evil issue. That is one of the reasons why this meeting is also existing. So that it can also be dealt with early, so that you won't be doing practical with your life here and there. But do we get it? Do we get it? Okay. Is it simple enough? Yes, sir. Is it simple enough? Yes, sir. I thought it was this one that we're having issue before. Okay, you face it. Okay. All right. Thank you, sir. All right. Do we get it? So, the number one of the objective is what? What? Consolidate your conviction. So courtship must not end in marriage. If you, are, if you realize the choice was a mistake, or the choice is corrupted, run back to God. Like my wife said, she already gave that in 4 Samuel, 4 Samuel 15, 1, and then 17, and then 23. God anointed um, Saul, and God rejected Saul. So the fact that the person God asks you that you marry, the fact that God told you is even, that one is just one out of five things. After God has told you, your, your understanding, like your hearing must be heightened. And it's God, once the man is not in line with God's plan again, you need to say, ah, but God said before, my brother, God can say no, now nah, I move to uh, somebody else. You only just will obey. Do we get it? I pray in the name of Jesus that your hearing is heightened. Amen. Hearing you will perceive. Here you will understand in the name of Jesus. God can endorse you a partner and because of their personal choices, reject them before marriage. That you have been going out for many years is not enough to marry a person. You suddenly realize it's out of God's order. Do we get it? That they are valuable does not mean they are irreplaceable. Please write that down. That they are valuable does not mean does not mean that they are irreplaceable. Marriage should be in workings, not in persons. Are we getting it? It should be in workings and not in persons. Thank you. God bless us. Glory to God. Can we celebrate Papa? Hallelujah. I hope we got that. Okay, let's proceed. Number two. Objectives of courtship. It is a time of understanding and understanding one another. It is a time of understanding and understanding one another. Like I said in person, have we gotten that? Okay, I don't want to rush. Maybe I don't. It is a time of understanding and understanding one another. I said him personally, I said, is it time to play FBI and CIA role or on head? It's, it's so serious because I think we did a teaching one time on FID. I said, if you get to know the good only about your, your partner, no spouse, about your partner in the period of courtship, it means they are secretive. Very secretive. Kai. Is a dangerous place to be. The only thing you can say is, oh, it's just good. Ah, it's just nice. Okay, what is his weakness? Eh, you're not trying to. Eh. Ah, they are secretive. Very, very. Or you, you are not observant. Or you, you are not observant. Eh, I can so observe. And thank God I'm training another human that is like me. She's so observant, she will look you straight in the eye. You will do like this, she will not blink. This is my daughter. She will not blink, she will look, she will look you in the eye. Observe everything. 
She knows when she's not at home. She knows when she's not in her room. She knows when she's not in her parents' room, as young as she is, as little as she is. So the prayer of courtship is where you seek to understand. Now, I love this so much because aside gathering people, she said, this is for me a life class. It's so important for me because it's one of the things we also dear to see people do marriage rights. In the world where everything is going bas bus, you are reading a lot of things, uh, marriage is like this. Can I tell you, can I bring you a good news that there are still people doing marriage rights? And the reason why this gathering is here, we are doing this, we are organizing this, and we are privileged to be pioneering this is because we know that God is still, God is still in, the, in the process of making, making people come together and then kingdom marriage is being enhanced. Amen? Amen. I'm, saying, I'm trying to emphasize on understanding because I've seen so many courtships. Sam, I'm looking at uh, my brother and sister here. I've seen so many people in courtship that they are not patient enough. Now, I'm not saying, you see that, Papa said something about change. Don't just give up on people so fast because you want them to change. Can you be patient enough? I always say something, if you can see that over time they are willing is progressive. It may not be fast as you want it, but it's progressive. They are worth sailing with. Hey. I'm saying this because I don't want to mention names. We've had a lot of people come to us, seek counsel, and we know, even by the spirit, that we know this is a relationship that can no ah, if these people can just give themselves to knowledge and can be patient. Sincerely, this marriage, this relationship will work. And then ah, He's, he's not just, he, he's not treating me well. He's not treating me well. She is just treating. All of that is, is good for her. You don't want to throw this 80%, this person has away. Over, uh, let's say 90, over 10%. Who told you that the person you are going to meet has 90? The person you are going to meet 20, you only call you 90. You will be shocked that people have baggages. They have baggages. I'm telling you, they're shocked. Maybe I'm, I'm touching somebody. You are about to leave that person. It's just a patience away. You know the balance we are given so that you will not carry one thing to the extreme. And if you also see that this person is not changing over time. In fact, the change, now this is the concept of change. Change must be on the part of the, no, the, on the part of the person that you want the change to happen. It must be willing. Change should not be enforced. Change should not be enforced if... There's something I see of my spouse. Okay, let's say um, Papa doesn't call me or he shouts at me. And then I say, see, the way you shout at me, I don't like it. I think you need to change. <laughs> and he said, I will change for you. Please write it down. I will change for you, Naskan. Right, just be writing it as I'm saying. I will change for you, Naskan. The reason why it's a scam is because it is not self-initiated. And whatsoever that is not self-initiated, I tell you, it is just a matter of time. It is just a matter of time. The change will not be long-lasting because it is not self They do not see the reason. And that's why I always say, see, transformation begins with awareness. I'm going to, I'm going to fast, bar. It's just the way the thing is. <laughs> oh, pound. Transformation begins with awareness. If you say, ah. I want to transform my life. It's because you know that this level you are is not it. You want a better life. That is number one. That is number one step to transformation. Awareness. So if they now come to awareness that, ah, who do I pay the way this lady does, uh, don't know, the way this lady took um, uh, our last conversation, maybe the way I, I talked to her and the way she reacted, she doesn't like it. Then the person now say, okay, ah, I think I should. I should do better. You, you know, it's, especially men. Men cannot change. Men cannot change for you. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not joking. Men change when they want to. Abi Mokaron. Men change when they want to. So it's better that they are even seeing the reason why they should. I'm saying understanding, I'm bringing the concept of patience so that you will not outrightly reject somebody that God is bringing your way, that God even has brought the two of you and saying, no, these two people, I'm working out a destiny for them. 
um, as somebody is pulling me, don't, don't, don't just reject that person. Can you be patient? What their parents could not change in two, two decades, in, let's say they are 30, three decades, you, you want it to happen in, in two weeks. Kilo Shie, Afa, Abana, Abana. Abia, there are nothing, the Holy Spirit is even telling you to walk upon. Oh, yeah, you that you want people to change. The Holy Spirit is not telling you that you talk too much. Have you changed? So, why can't you allow some people ample time to change? Somebody is dragging me in that direction. Sorry, I've not even started hitting number two. Number two. So, you don't just say, ah, I don't know. And most times, brothers, let me really help you. Most times, when ladies see that, it's because there's another alternative. I'm more parrot. Ladies, they lie. Lie. When a lady is telling you, that, I just uh, leave me. You are this. Uh, oh, it's because there is another person at the side that is doing what you're not doing, and that is just one percent. It's feeling just one that the guy over hundred things that the guy is doing. You not carry one. Just, okay, let's say call. I, I'm looking for one example to give that is peculiar to us. Calling is coming. If uh, if Holy Spirit bring another example, I will use. Let's say the person doesn't know how to call. You know there are people like that. Uh, oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. I know Holy Spirit will help me. Papa doesn't like to pick calls. If you call, if you are calling and he's like, why is this person calling me? Especially when he knows that. Why now? Now why? If you text a message to him, oh, you will get response. If you send me a message, you will get response. I can assure you. But call the person. He will like, and it's not as if he's expecting the call. And it's not as if, especially when you are a kind of person that pesters him so much. Why is this person calling me now? Why is this person calling me? So let's say your spouse or your partner, we are talking about courtship. Your partner is somebody like that, that doesn't like calling. And you're like, ah. see, I don't understand though. It's like you, 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 you don't like me. It's like you're not giving me attention. We are quick to say so, ladies. You're not giving me attention. It's like you're not committed to this thing. And you know that it's not as if... Because there is a way we can know. It's not as if he's not into you. Only that there is kokomononi. He's trying to lame me. Could you understand? And most especially people like that that don't like calling the love texting, the love chatting. I'm saying uh, on this um, point, understand, understanding matters. Ah, understanding matters. Understanding matters. The the way our marriage is. I know it's not the way uh, my brother and sister's marriage. So, if I now say understand your man, you yeah, say, ah, you've not been compared with him. This is not how this person, especially when, uh, except, no, it's not especially, except when it has to be with um, biblical patterns or okay, kinetic, that one, you know that you cannot. But when it comes to personality, you're not starting to start to compare. In this not how this person does, this not how this person does, I don't know why. And it happens when you compare, it's because you have sampled different men. Eh, no pardon. Eh? Because compared to what? I can't compare if I don't know something. Eh? Compared to what? You say, ah, this is not how my brother. One of the sense I gave myself was going into this relationship with uh, Papa. I will not bring what my relationship was then. Although it has, I won't lie. It has effect. It has effect. But I was so conscious at the same time. I don't know if it happened. Maybe I said it unconsciously to mind. Like I had to compare my former relationship with that of her. I don't know. I don't know. I, if I say it never happened, I may be wrong. No. Okay. Thank you, sir. He said I did not. Because I was so conscious that this person is different. In fact, they don't have the same personality. So you, the way I understood that person, this is another relationship. I will not bring... That was how Jide was treating you. Can it be they used to come you? Can it be used to come you? I'm telling you, that relationship will not last. When you start comparing, 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 you seek to understand. The period of courtship is when you sit down, you seek. It's, it's a quest. You seek to understand the person. May I shock you? We cannot have the same personality. Are you the same? In fact, the beautiful thing is that opposite attracts. I always say something, <laughs> if, you're an, if you're an organizer and you marry a scatterer, please, how will your organizing skill find expression if somebody is not scattering? If you get it, clap for Jesus. <laughs> Thank you. If you are a saver, 
You marry a spender. Please, how will your savings key find expression if there is nobody to spend? I said, no, it's not like that. You cut it. But if spender marry spender, now ditch them. <laughs> if saver marry saver, I can go. Oh, hey, that's it. The way marriage work is opposite. Like, there's something this person is doing where the person is weak. My strength is finding expression because marriage is for compliment. It's not for competition. You compliment yourself. And complimenting means where the other person is lacking, I'm helping to build. Hallelujah. So you seek to understand. Please, I'm saying this though. Cause you seek to understand. I'm saving you. I'm saving you serious headache. I'm telling you. That's what the Holy Spirit told me just now. I'm saying, saving you serious headache because when it's, when it's something that you really want to do, sincerely, you will, you will, you will find ease. You will find ease. You will find ease in doing it. And understanding, hey, Jesus, you don't mind me. If I'm not, if I'm not restricted to this thing, it will be going, 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 and going. The Lord is our strength in Jesus' name. Okay, we are in uh, Tuba. It's a time of understanding and understanding one another, understanding one another. It's a time for you to count the cost. Hmm. See, the period of Koshiba is the foundation is the foundation no scripture says if the foundation be faulty the righteous can do nothing i'm telling you the righteous can know is this time for you to sit down it's not the time for you to be going up and down and be you are you're just carried away by how you love yourself what are you buying for me today our anniversary even for god's bad day all it's a serious something though except you don't want to do serious, serious something and i love it thank god that's why we call it christian courtship we didn't just say courtship if you really want to do it the kingdom way, you can as well imbibe kingdom principles. Amen? So you seek to understand one another. Courtship must show, two, must show you two sides of your spouse, of your partner, I think, preferably partner. Courtship must show you two sides of your partner, good and bad. I didn't say good or bad. Good and bad. Hey, if you do not know the their weakness they are hiding you or you you are you're not observant you are carried away you are carried away you are blinded by intimacy you are blinded by the euphoria of uh yes even me i'm in court shape oh, thank god out of all the five sisters in our church ah oh, thank god <laughs> yeah, you, you know that people do that in church ah thank god out of our clique me i can I'm not ashamed to say I was the last person in our setting. You know, people have setting in church now. We have class in church. We have uh, people that don't know. We have class in church. I mean, I was the last person to go, to get married. So, if somebody is not doing that, you're not getting to see the bad, especially, because it's possible for you to see good. It's because you are not observant. You may be blinded by the feeling of, oh, yes, I'm out, I'm off the market. You bring me front, yo. <laughs> You flaunt your ring. The Lord is our strength in Jesus' name. Let's run, let's run, let's run. Whoosh. So then you ask if you can marry not just his strength, but also his weakness. The reason why you are understanding, you're seeking to understand and study him is because you will know the good. And then you will also see the weakness. You will now weigh the weakness. Is this, is this something that I can put up with? Is this the weakness that can match me? As a, can I match up with this weakness? Can I cope with this weakness? Hello. That is, that is uh, where negotiable and non-negotiable. You know what you can compromise and what you can put up with. If you see the weakness, let me use anger for, for example. The person is so angry to the point that when he's angry like this, he will be, he will be shaking, literally. I know people that are, people that always that always get angry. Oh my, oh my stomach! I, I, I don't like what you did. Just in you. he cannot express himself. But when you get married, ah, uh -uh, my daughter she bother. He will express himself. That you cannot. The fist will just go like this. Go for it. So you will not wear it. I'm just saying you. It's a test now. You are in the period of costume. You will not wear that. This weakness. So can I? cope with it can i manage it 
Can I consider it, overlook it, and just marry the person? That's just an example, anger. Or the person slap you, and I say, it's baby, it's just slap. If you're not slapping, you know that. Like, mama said, uh, auntie said, ha. Exactly, even when they're in church. I've had it before. Say, if you not slap me, how do I know that he loves me? He in church, sir. In church, in church, sir. Most serious, in church, sir. If you not slap me, how would I know that he loves me? And that's something that she, she can put up with. She has checked the good, she has checked the bad, and she knows that this bad is what I can. <laughs> she will understand. So that is the reason. If you're not seeing, I'm not saying people don't have weakness, but you know the weakness. For example, now, let me, let me use the one that you can put up with. Let's say the person scatters a lot. Anytime you go visit the person, you just see that everything is just out of place. The place is always scattered. In fact, once if I bought, Ataro, the plate is like two days. Huh? Why are you dirty like this? <sighs> and you, you are the neat type. They call for now. Uh, oh, 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 thank you. Ah, that was the reaction I was looking for. She said, <clears throat> she cannot put up with dirtiness. Do you understand what I'm saying? Like you have seen the weakness. You know that this one, I know, ah, I mean, if you but that's it. But there are some things that, ah, should I go there? Let me just say it in person. There are some things that you know, you know yourself that this dirtiness compared to what? This dirtiness, Larson, compared to all the good things the guy has. Eh, eh, eh. And you see another guy that is very neat, but then, <laughs> lion of the tribe of Judas, not Judah, lion of the tribe of Judas, you will not leave just the. Because I call you pick or hang you. I because I call daddy. I always do it. Hey, sir, son, sir, carry this thing. If not, I was, I'm beside you. I will use the hand, carry it, or I drop it on the shoulder. So you understand this thing? What's what? That's in law. Oh, it's in law. Compared to somebody that is fierce. Oh, my God. <laughs> I don't like it. Don't talk to me. They walk out on you. They don't call you for four days. They now call you after and they say, you know, I don't like what you did. The same person, if you, I am telling you, because <clears throat> issue don't repeat itself. It's patterns. Patterns. Issue does not. It's patterns that does. Patterns that does. You not get to marry that kind of person. Four days, no filler. Time say by four. Sixteen. <laughs> Sixteen. Because anything you are in courtship gets magnified in marriage. People don't change. People don't change. That's why you see people do now get amplified in marriage. It's God, it's the Holy Spirit that changes people. And that's why well, I already told you the concept of change. So that's the time somebody dies fierce. Oh my God. I don't like it. Don't talk to me. They walk out on you. They don't call you for four days. They now call you after and they say, you know, I don't like what you did.